Home, the complete Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction series, written and narrated by Mira Rose, with artwork for the opening and thumbnail image by XAA on Tumblr. I will have the Tumblr linked in the description box. Please enjoy Home. Chapter 1 Cat? Cat Noir looked up to see Marinette standing in front of him. It was the middle of the night after an Akuma fight, and he was sitting on a park bench, not wanting to go home quite yet. Princess, what are you doing out so late alone? he asked. I was trying to catch some footage of the Akuma fight as a present for Alia, she said, somewhat flustered. That's not safe. He patted the space beside him, an open invitation to her company. I guess you could call me a rebel. A pretty cute one, he winked. You never stop flirting, do you, kitty? It's impossible. (laughs) You're starting to make me feel bad for Ladybug, she joked sitting down next to him. Why do you say that? He asked. How would she feel if she knew you were flirting with other girls? Oh, but Marinette, he said, leaning in towards her. You aren't just some other girl. She was a bit taken aback by his words. What's that supposed to mean? She looked away as she laughed off his comment. I'm sorry, did I fluster you? Cat grinned, pulling away. I'm only teasing, after all. Are you hungry? She asked, changing the subject. A little. Why? I guess I'm the kind of person who likes to feed stray cats. Cat couldn't help but let his grin grow wider. A home-cooked meal is everything he wanted at that moment. What's on the menu? He asked. How about we stop at the store first, and you can pick out your favorites? Really? You'll make me lumpia? Lumpia? Marinette turned around with a question on her face. What's that? Filipino egg rolls. That's your favorite food? I just want to eat it. Cat? Marinette glanced over at him. Did you see this in an anime? What? No! Really? Skepticism bled from her voice. Yes. Okay, I'll look up the recipe online, she said, pulling out her phone. Let's see, we'll need meat, green onions, carrots, egg roll wrappers. She quickly typed up what ingredients her parents didn't have at home and started walking forward. Wait for me, princess, he called after her. Several phones were out by the time they reached the store, recording Paris's favorite superhero racing shopping carts with a random girl at two in the morning. Don't you think we're a little old for this? Marinette asked, balancing herself on the railing of her cart as her feet hovered above the floor. Never. Coming from a guy wearing a mask. Touché. He smiled, grabbing a package of ground turkey. Would you prefer this or pork? Ground turkey will be easier to cook, she said, comparing prices. Anything else you'd like before we check out? Some chocolate, perhaps? Chocolate? Cat's ears popped up at the suggestion. I can have some? Yes? He didn't try to explain why he was excited. What kind? Like a chocolate bar or truffles? Or or maybe something dipped in chocolate? Or because it's almost Christmas, orange-flavored chocolate that you can, like, peel the slices off of? She bit back a laugh at the sight of so much excitement in his stature. Yeah, okay. We'll get two orange-flavored breakaway chocolate balls. 
His face lit up and he sprinted to the candy aisle, leaving Marinette to follow him like a mother with her five-year-old son. Milk or dark chocolate? He asked, his arms filled with the seasonal chocolate. Whichever you'd like, she said. But you can only get two, and one of them is for me. Cat stood up after a few minutes, proudly holding out his selection. One dark chocolate and one milk chocolate. Are these two okay? He asked. Perfect choice. Shall we go check out? Yeah. He returned to his place at her side and waved at a passing child looking at him in awe. I bet you just made that kid's day, Marinette said, patting him on the back. You think? If you go ask to take a picture with him, he'll be the most popular boy in school for a week. I... I guess. I mean, I never really thought of myself that way. Come on, Cat. All of Paris looks up to you, Marinette said, unloading the cart onto the checkout. Do you really think so? He asked. What makes you question it? I mean... Do you think Ladybug views me in that light? Marinette froze with her hands on the onions. What do you mean? Do you think Ladybug looks up to me? He unloaded the chocolate onto the conveyor belt. Yes. Cat looked up at her in surprise of her stern answer and didn't know how to respond. The cashier checked them out and they made their way back to her place in silence. He was on edge the whole time, unable to tell if the quiet between them was uncomfortable or not. Here's a spatula. If you start the meat, I'll start dicing onions, Marinette said, handing him the utensil and the package of ground turkey. Medium heat? he asked. Sure, sounds good. Throw some oil in there with it, Marinette said, turning to dice up the vegetables. A few minutes later, she heard an unusual noise and turned to see Cat on the brink of tears. What's wrong? she asked, worry in her voice. Nothing, I'm just really happy right now. Sorry, I, uh, I guess I'm a bit of a crybaby, Cat said, trying to sniffle his tears back inside him. No, really, what's going on? She reached up to touch his face in support. Nah, it's it's stupid. I don't care. Tell me. It's just shopping for food together, cooking together. It feels nice. What do you mean? I guess I'm just not used to this feeling. And what feeling is that? home. Marinette froze at his bold choice of words. Home? She repeated. It came out more like a question than a statement. I would imagine that this is what shopping with your family feels like, he sighed, mixing the meat into the bowl and giving her a weak smile. I think it's time to start rolling them up. We need to add the soy sauce first, Marinette said, unsure how to respond to his remark. Do you plan on having a family, princess? He asked. As opposed to what? Being a career woman, Kat said, pulling out a wrapper and spooning the filling on it. I think family would come first. Marinette said, sealing the wrappers he filled with a beaten egg. It would be a nice life, wouldn't it? Cooking with your family each day? Yeah. I think so too, Marinette said, throwing the rolls into a pot of oil. But, Kat, you already have a home whenever you need it. It doesn't feel like home. He sighed. 
I'm not talking about where you sleep at night, silly kitty. Marinette laughed. Then where are you talking about? He asked, furrowing his brows. Here! She pointed to herself. Friends can be family too, you know. We're friends? Cat said in astonishment, his eyes growing wide. Of course we are. I don't make lumpia with just anyone, you know. Friends, Cat whispered, staring at his classmate. A warm fire flickered in his heart that brought a smile to his face. Perhaps this feeling of home wasn't going to be temporary. Until then, they had lumpia to make. Chapter 2 I'm just saying, you could have saved some for me. Adrian sighed as Plague whined about not getting any lumpia. Apparently, a previous cat noir was Filipino and made them all the time. I didn't think you'd want any because it wasn't cheese, he said, pinching the Kwame behind his neck and guiding him to his desk drawer. He always kept apology cheese on hand, and today it happened to be at his workstation. You need to go back there and make some more, Plague demanded, clearly upset. It's not my house, Plague. Father would ground me if I tried to use the kitchen in case I got a scar out of it. Then go to Marinette's. No way! I can't! Your friends, Adrian. Of course you can. He sighed and shook his head. Cat Noir and Marinette aren't. We're just... <sighs> he searched for the right word. Friends. She confirmed it last night. Her dad even wanted you to date her. Now hurry up and go get my lumpia. He wanted to protest, but the look Plague gave him spoke volumes. Okay, fine. Claws out. After picking up ingredients from the Asian Taste grocery store, he made his way to the Dupang Chang Bakery with weak knees and a butterfly gnawing at his insides. Was this weird? Was it okay for him to be here? Should he be here? What if he misinterpreted their relationship? What if Marinette found him a nuance? He'd been there just nine hours before. Sure, it was one in the afternoon on a Sunday, but he didn't leave until four in the morning. Did she go to bed right after? What if she stayed up later? Was he disturbing her sleep schedule? The answer to all of his questions lay behind Tom Dupang, standing in front of him with his arms crossed. Hello, uh... <clears throat> Hello, Cat cleared his throat. Hello, sir. Cat Noir, Tom said, his body language exploding into welcoming gestures. Come in, what brings you here? Cat held up the bag of ingredients with a tense smile. Marinette? Cooking? Meal? Food? Sure. Marinette! This young man is here to see you. Cat heard tumbling from above them as he stepped into the living room, followed by a short scream squeak before Marinette scooted herself into the kitchen. Yes? She asked, still dressed in pajamas. Her shoulders slumped when she saw him, and he almost swore he heard her sigh in disappointment, not relief. Great. This was a mistake. He never should have let himself get persuaded by Plague's cravings. Hey, uh... Now what? What could he say? Why was he like this? Can we... make some more? Cat asked, holding out the bag. Marinette blinked twice then instructed him to set up in the kitchen while she went upstairs to fix a cowlick from sleeping with her hair in braids and losing a hair tie halfway through the REM cycle. He set the ingredients out and, 
although it had been less than a day, realized he didn't know what to do next. He picked up a knife and stared, eyes moving from it to the onion and back. How do you cut an onion? It's a vegetable, so he had to wash it first, right? Yeah, that sounded right. Cat grabbed the yellow onion, he couldn't find sweet onions for some reason, and ran the spout. How hard should he scrub? He'd never washed an onion, so he didn't know. May as well start with light pressure. To his horror, the onion layer split off as he touched it, splintering into thin, brown, crunchy specks in the sink. Was that supposed to happen? Or was he ruining the onion by, like, washing it in the wrong temperature? Should he have used cold water instead? Cat? What are you doing? His face could only be described as terror as Marinette spoke up. He hadn't heard her come back, fully dressed with fresh breath. Uh... Are you washing the onion? Yes. She blinked twice, then cracked a laugh. I take it you don't cook too much, huh? Sorry I ruined it. Cat reached in the bottom of the sink, collecting the scraps of the outermost layer and presenting it to her with both hands and remorse. Sighing with a smile, Marinette picked a fleck of onion peel from his palm. Cat. Yeah? You don't wash onions. His eyebrows shot up. Oh. <laughs> yep. So I've really ruined it then. <laughs> no, no. She laughed, tossing the peel in the garbage. It's fine. Some people actually rinse onions before cutting them so they don't cry as much. Do onions actually make people cry? I've heard of it before, but... Yes, they're the meanest of the vegetables, if you don't count mixing wasabi powder. And we don't eat this outer layer. Oh, good. His shoulders slumped in relief. You don't spend a lot of time in the kitchen, do you? He shook his head. I wasn't allowed to. Why is that? Marinette knit her eyebrows together. Of course she'd be confused. For Marinette, being in the kitchen was as natural as waking up. She was raised in a bakery, after all. Piano. Piano? Yeah, my parents were adamant nothing happened to my fingers. Do you still play? Uh... How much could he tell her? Marinette had her own rules, but he didn't know if they applied to other people as well. Not much as my father would like. That's a safe answer, right? I can understand that. Well, maybe not understand, understand, but I can imagine. She sliced into the onion the wrong way before slicing it the right way, dicing it like magic. How? Being able to play is nice, but, well, I'd also like to know how to cook, you know? Instead of embarrassing myself in front of pretty girls. Take a good look at this onion. Marinette said, brushing off his compliment and tapping the cutting board with her knife. At how you cut it? Get closer. Cat leaned in and stared, wondering what she wanted before it hit him. Oh, how it hit him. Onion. He withdrew sharply, covering his nose as his eyes stung. Even a mask couldn't protect from the betraying nature of a cut onion, huh? I see, he coughed out. 
and it would be worse if you hadn't washed it. Really? Yeah. I don't know how the science behind it works, though. Huh. Anyway, if you could please wash the carrots... On it! He said, racing to the sink to get away from the treacherous onion that brought him nothing but trouble. The carrots were going to be his best friend now. Surely there'd be no trouble, right? Right? Oh, dear. What if he tried scrubbing it and it just broke apart? Would that happen? Can that happen? What if he cracks it in a way that Marinette can't use it? What if she gets so mad she kicks him out and he's not allowed back? That would be horrible. He liked it here. It felt too much like... Home. It felt too much like home to stick it all on a single carrot. I just... Scrub this, right? He asked, hoping his cheeks weren't pink. Yes, she said. A gentle scrub. Got it. I'm in charge of cooking dinner tomorrow. If you'd like to come over, we can make something else, too. He dropped the now-washed carrot in the sink. Oops. Really? Yeah, I mean... We've got to get those cooking skills up a level or two, right? You do that for me? Marinette smiled like a cooking goddess beaming at an ignorant onion washer. I told you, Cat, you can come home when you need to. There it was again. That warmth flickering in his chest. Why was she doing this? They weren't even that close. Sure, they'd spent some time together in the past, but she didn't know he was Adrian. She liked Cat Noir that much? He must be doing something right. Okay, he said, cracking his trademark Cat Noir grin the media fell for. I'll leave tomorrow in your hands then. Hey now, she smacked his stomach with a spatula. Don't miss this moment, dude. We've got lumpia to make. Oh, yeah, right. Now let me show you what I did with the onion. Sunlight warmed his back as he tried and failed to properly cut the devil's vegetable. Cats and onions just don't mix, huh? Whatever. He knew Plag would be happy with the end result, even if the onion wasn't perfectly diced. And like that... Time flew by, relaxing Cat in a way he hadn't been able to in a long time. He wasn't sure how long it'd been since he felt like this. Today, Cat felt like he was at home, relaxing like a cat in an afternoon sunbeam. Chapter 3 Wait, you can make meatballs? You don't just buy them pre-made? Cat Noir shook his head in disbelief as he watched Marinette add the last bit of flour to the ground meat mixture before grabbing a clump and rolling it between her palms. Like this, she said, holding up the now ball of meat for him to see. Huh. Spaghetti and meatballs taught him a lot. Like, what percentage lean-to-fat ground meat he should get, and Marinette's father's distaste for pre-made meatballs. How on earth do we cook them without snapping them in half? Cat asked as Marinette put the noodles in the pot. They'll wilt, I promise. Won't one half be more cooked than the other? They'll be fine. If we used a cat... If you tell me we should use a bigger pot one more time, so help me, I will spray paint your tail pink. Well, do you think Ladybug would like me with a pink tail? He turned around and wiggled his hips in her direction. She tossed a limp noodle at him, sticking perfectly to his butt. There, now you have a backup tail, she joked turning her attention back to the pot and gently pressing on the noodles inside. He wiped it off before leaning on the kitchen island, 
curious as to what came next. They'd already made the sauce, and she'd just put the meatballs in the skillet. It felt like they were missing something. Dessert! They didn't have dessert! I'll be right back, he exclaimed launching himself out the window and onto the sidewalk below before Marinette could so much as open her mouth for a reply. He knew what he needed to get. She'd love it. Banana cream pie. He knew for a fact that Dupang Chang Bakery didn't have any, because Marinette would always gorge herself on it as a child to the point that no amount of reprimand would stop a tiny human handprint in the whipped topping on the bakery's shelf when they opened. All right. He was a banana grest without reason. He cracked his neck, then his knuckles, and sprinted to the nearest coffee shop. Time to spend a ridiculous amount of money on an entire pie by purchasing it slice by slice. He returned to a home-cooked dinner and a marinette standing with her arms crossed. Cat! Oh, right. He left her with all of the work, didn't he? That was quite rude of him. She had every right to be mad. Cat! She barked, and even his ears drooped at the call. I, uh, can explain. You can't just run off like that. We were worried. Worried? Yes, you potato! Worried! Now come on and eat with us. He looked at Marinette with surprise before tearing his eyes away to see Tom and Sabine sitting at the table, steam coming off their plates, and smiling at him. What did you pick up? Sabine asked. Oh, uh... <clears throat> he cleared his throat. Banana cream pie. Their eyes flicked to Marinette in unison met by her nervous giggle. Well, uh, I guess we'd better hurry and eat, Marinette said, eyes fixed on his to-go bag. Come on, cat, wash your hands. I'm literally wearing a magic suit. The face of disgust she made couldn't be beaten, even by Chloe Bourgeois herself. Disgust! Disgusting! Absolutely disgusting! She said, sticking her tongue out. Don't worry, I washed before we cooked together. Each time? She crossed her arms. E yeah. Are you lying? No. Why does that sound like a question? Because I'm intimidated by you? His answer came out more squeaky than masculine, accompanied by a barrel of laughter from Tom. Cat, Marinette said, arms crossed and biting back her own laughter. I'm like 15 centimeters shorter than you are. So is Ladybug, but she could kick my butt any day of the week. She tensed up for a moment before succumbing to laughter. <laughs> Whatever, silly kitty. Wash your paws. He grinned and did as instructed. The sun filtered through the kitchen windows, and he had to wonder if it had always been such a beautiful day, or if he was just now noticing it. Cat turned around to find a towel and caught a glimpse of the set dinner table small and what would be cramped once he joined in. It awoke that fire in his heart that made him smile softly, a temperature that matched his now clean hands. Oh, he might be in trouble. In only three days, this place and these people became his home. Cat wasn't sure if he could handle what that meant again. Chapter 4 Adrian stared at himself in his school's bathroom mirror, trying to calm himself down. He'd gotten to class early, and when Marinette walked in, 
His heart did a little flutter thing. His heart wasn't supposed to do a little flutter thing when she walked in. Why are we here? Plag asked, still snuggled in the school bag. Are we here for a cheese break? Adrian didn't give an answer, sighing at his reflection before splashing water on his face. It's because she's Dupang Chang and slowly becoming his family. Yeah, she's family, but also just a friend. Yeah, he had to act like friends, and that's why his heart fluttered. It was because he wanted to talk to her like they were at home, but she didn't have the same relationship with him as she did with Cat Noir. Adrian! Nino called out when he slid into his seat. Yes? Adrian turned to see his best friend sitting on the tabletop behind him, chatting away with the girls. Marinette's having a friend make dinner with her tonight, Alia piped up, and she's invited us to join. You coming? She'd mentioned inviting some friends yesterday and asked Kat to be there as well. For once, he was glad for his father's strictness. Trying to be both Kat and Adrian at an intimate dinner party would prove to be tough. Sorry. He made a what-can-you-do shrug at the group. I have plans with father. Hmm. Alia narrowed her eyes. A shame. Some of us were looking forward to seeing you there. Have fun with whatever you're... Marinette began, cut off when the teacher walked in the room. The rest of the day progressed smoothly, and Adrian was grateful for the girls' chatter behind him. They were making homemade egg noodle pasta with some kind of coconut milk lemon sauce and spinach. He tried looking up the recipe on his own and couldn't find it, but at least he'd be able to brush up on how to make egg noodles with YouTube before showing up with a mask. Okay, Byron Talbot, don't fail your faithful subscriber now. Well, okay, he wasn't a faithful subscriber. In fact, Adrian subscribed to over 20 cooking channels over the last 24 hours, so his faith was easily bought at this point. He decided to make his entrance at the Dupang Chang residence the same way he'd left to get pie the previous evening. Through the window. The window that Marinette happened to cross in front of as he barreled through. Crack! She exclaimed, his body pinning hers as they tumbled to the floor. Sorry! Cat apologized trying to sit up and get off her in a way that wouldn't make this any more awkward. Nino ended up grabbing his shoulder and guiding him upright. That was quite an entrance, dude, he said. Thanks for the assist. Cat turned to Marinette. To you as well. At least this incident isn't because I'm the klutz in the room this time, Marinette joked, using the chair beside her to stand up. Oh, no. Did she get hurt? Kat sighed in relief when he saw she could put all of her weight on both legs. God, he hadn't messed up after all. He didn't want to know how his heart would react if he wasn't allowed back here. Next time, he'd enter using the door. Lesson learned. I wouldn't say there isn't a klutz in this room, though. Alia said, nodding her chin at the floor with a grin. Kat's heart dropped when he saw what she meant. The eggs. Marinette must have been carrying them when he launched in and dropped them during impact, because now they may as well be a Picasso painting, a mix of abstract shapes and colors. Oh no, Alia. Looks like somebody's going to need more eggs. Nino said, slinging his arm around her shoulder. Yes, I agree, Alia said, nodding her head as she brought her hands to her face like she was witnessing a catastrophe. I say we send these two rascals out to get them together. 
Yes, yes. A wonderful idea. This is why I date you. You're too smart for me, Bay. Marinette's hands held up her face as she groaned. Is going shopping with me truly such a bad sentence? Cat asked, ears drooping as he anticipated an answer he wouldn't like. He's the one who caused the trouble, after all. He wouldn't blame Marinette for not wanting to shop with him. It looked like she had eggshells in her hair as well. Oops. Alia wants to think of herself as sneaky, but it's not happening. Marinette sighed. Come on, let's go. Sneaky? What was sneaky about her proposition? Was he missing something? Ugh, whatever. Cat followed her down and out, relieved Marinette didn't seem to be angry or upset. If that happened with father? Yeah, he wouldn't have left the house for a month if that were to happen. So, uh, what's the difference between white and brown eggs? He asked, trying to break the silence. Nutritionally? None, Marinette said, checking her phone. But... Brown are more expensive because of multiple urban myths. Such as? The organic movement, false claims that they're healthier, or cook more evenly. Things like that. Huh. But it's not true? Yes, as long as you aren't reading an article that's organic propaganda. I thought you were going to say vegan for a moment. Why would a vegan be eating eggs? That's why I didn't actually say it as a question. Ah. Oh. They were at the corner market now, with curious eyes and cameras filming their every move. It felt surreal, despite it being a normal occurrence when he didn't have a mask on. White eggs, princess? He asked chucking the prices between the white and the brown. The white ones will do just fine. She threw in some gouda slices and camembert into the basket as well. For your little one, she winked, noticing the crease between his eyebrows from her actions. He smiled, happy she was thinking of Plague. That was nice of her. It was nice of her to think of his Kwame. Wait. How did she know his Kwame liked camembert? The realization froze him, and he felt a cold sweat prickling at his skin inside the leather. Oh, wait. Marinette was multi-mouse. Yeah, multi-mouse. That's why she knew about his Kwame and cheese. He tried to calm his heartbeat. Was he relieved or disappointed? Which one did he want to be? Oh, whatever. Don't think about it, Cat Noir. You finally have a place to go home when you need it. Don't squander that by overthinking. Yeah, don't overthink. Just buy the eggs and go home. They checked out with casual conversations, as though he wasn't having a critical internal debate. He knew he'd get some teasing when he got back to Nino and Alia, but it somehow felt natural. Was it because they fought by his side in the past? Ugh, whatever. He'd go back, endure the teasing while secretly enjoying it, and hopefully make some stellar pasta together. Okay, yeah. Time to go home. Chapter 5 Cat listened to Nino flirt with Alia as he rolled the scraps flat, making sure each discarded piece could be made into a new noodle with a smile on his face. He wanted something like they had, and if he were honest, he was a little jealous of his friend. But he shouldn't get greedy, right? Someone like him shouldn't be able to get both a home and a relationship overnight. Surely this green feeling in his stomach came from the multiple rejections Ladybug gave him, not because his friend had something he wanted. Yeah, jealousy was unbecoming, 
He was happy for his friend. Is that the last of it? Marin had asked as Cat smashed the dough flat with the heel of his hand. It should be, Cat said, lifting it up to feed into the rolling machine. To his surprise, Marinette began to hum to herself as she finished the last of their future meal. He smiled at first, finding it cute, before that chest-wrenching feeling from the grocery store seized his chest again, as though his heart were trying to send him a message. Wait, no. This wasn't the grocery store feeling. It was lighter than that. It was a flutter. His heart fluttered, watching her hum to herself. Strange. Where did he feel this flutter before? It must have been recently, because it was oddly familiar. Cat! Hmm? He lifted his head to meet Marinette's gaze. Yes? Are you off in Meow Meow Land? Come on, the water's boiling. Aren't we supposed to let the noodles hang for 15 minutes? Marinette made a mockery of checking an invisible watch on her wrist. Close enough, she joked, taking the ribbons of pasta they made and throwing them in the now boiling pot of water. Now count to 200. What? Why? Just do it. She pinched his cheek and gave a playful tug before sauntering off, leaving Cat red-faced for some reason. Why was he so worked up over her today? Cat couldn't figure it out. Oh, yeah, two hundred. One, two, three. Marinette? Cat called out a few minutes later, not leaving his assigned post at the stove. Marinette! No response. Hmm. He looked over at the pot, wondering if the noodles were done, before waddling away to find her in a pretty serious match with Nino, battling away on the controller as her character lost health. There it was again. The flutter. Cat sucked in a breath. Two hundred! He yelled, scaring Nino just enough to give Marinette an advantage. She took it, pummeling his game character to the ground and using a finishing combo. Nice. Thanks for the assist, Marinette said, tossing him a wink. It's time to drain that pasta water. He held the colander for her and watched in fascination as the noodles drained out. They were certainly different than the box noodles they had the night prior. The sauce is done, Alia called out from across the kitchen. Be right there, Marinette called back. Will you butter and salt this for me, Cat? I'm going to add lemon zest to the sauce. She left before he could answer and he found himself, once again, unsure what to do. How much butter? Cat asked aloud to no one. And how much salt? This was going to be another onion all over again, wasn't it? Cat grabbed the tub of butter and his phone, googling what a serving of butter was because tubs don't come with little tick marks like his few cooking classes in school did. One tablespoon is a serving, so he should add one tablespoon for as many servings of noodles they had. How many servings of noodles did they have? Also, what's a tablespoon? Okay, if they made enough for everyone to have two plates and there were four of them, then that's eight servings, right? Yeah. Eight servings in the big pot seemed reasonable enough. Now then, he needed to find a tablespoon. Inferring the name, Cat opened the utensil drawer and saw the smaller spoons they normally ate with, and then the bigger ones used for things like soup. Huh. The smaller spoons must be teaspoons, right? Right. Cat grabbed a big spoon and stuck it into the tub of butter. This wasn't toast, so he should scoop it like ice cream. 
Makes perfect sense. Okay, one scoop, two scoops. Oh, Ladybug. Ladybug also hummed to herself at times. That must be why he got the little flutter earlier. Oh, that totally makes sense. Good. Glad that's cleared up. Wait. How many scoops had he done? Cat stared at the noodles in the pot, butter running over them as the clumps melted. Somehow, half the butter bucket was gone and in the pot, and he was none the wiser. Hmm. It looked like a little much, but butter is part of the sauce, right? So it should look saucy. Okay, butter is done. Now, where did they keep the salt? He looked around until he saw a canister marked salt with the metal pour spout that flicked up. Okay, cool. He just flip it up and shake it like a normal salt shaker, right? Cat grabbed the canister, opened it, and turned it upside down over the pot, which proved to be a mistake. Small, white grains slid out before he realized the damage he'd done. By the time he'd yelped and surprised and turned the canister upright, there was a small mountain of salt atop the buttered noodles, and calling it small was generous. Cat? His cry caught her attention and she came running over, her footsteps patting the floor like a drumbeat. Knowing he messed up, he did what any reasonable person would do. He threw the pot out the window. At least, he tried to, but forgot he was still holding the salt canister and ended up tossing that out the window, spout open, and flinging grains of salt everywhere like it was some new chic beauty regimen a YouTube or Instagram guru made up as clickbait. A car horn beeped violently a few seconds after the canister went out the open window, and both Cat and Marinette winced in unison. He dared not look at her, but his eyes flicked to hers without his permission, as though it were all too natural. With that one look, she burst out laughing, slapping him on the back before curling herself into a ball, trying to keep herself together as she used a week's worth of laughs. He didn't know if he should relax in relief or flee for the rooftops and trade miraculouses when Ladybug wasn't looking so he could start a new life. What on earth? Marinette began, attempting to compose herself as Nino and Alia followed her in. Alia took one look at the pot, raised an eyebrow, and dumped its contents back into the colander. Nino took a look as well, chuckled, and ran the faucet, rinsing the noodles multiple times. I should have taken a picture, Alia said, filming Marinette's collapse of laughter on the ground and shaking her head with a smirk. I'm not good at adding salt, I guess. Cat said sheepishly. Bro, my dude, Nino piped in. You know the Yellow River? Like, in China? Well, it took a vacation in this pot and is now oozing into the sink. Wait, did I add too much butter, too? His question was met by surround sound laughter, a clap on the back, and three matching nods. Marinette even wiped a tear away. Okay, so that was a solid yes. I'm sorry for laughing at you, Marinette said, offering her hand so he could help her up. His heart did that little flutter thing again at the gesture, but it wasn't time to think about that. Come on, cat, pay attention. I'll show you how to add butter. Sorry for feeling. Both salt and putter are trial and error measurements. Don't sweat it. Oh, he searched for some kind of response. Clean this up. The floor and tabletop were covered in grains of salt. It was the least he could do. I'll grab the broom. Relief kicked in like a drug as they cleaned the kitchen together. 
And oh, what a drug it was. Truthfully, he was terrified that was it. He'd lose his home and the respect of his friends, although they wouldn't know it. Well, it would make it harder to fight Akumas together, at least, if they held this against him. Okay. Breathe. Kat smiled to himself as he made eye contact with Marinette as she scooped butter into the freshly rinsed noodles. You're okay, Kat. You're okay. You're home. Chapter 6 Kat stared at the machine in front of him, heart pounding, and gave himself a pep talk. Okay, Kat. You can do this. A few weeks passed since the noodle incident, and he'd come over half a dozen times or so to cook with Marinette. Now, on a Sunday morning, he was going to attempt his favorite food. Waffles. But this time, he wanted to make it with a twist. Red food dye to make them pink, and blueberries for spots. They'd be superhero waffles, served with strawberry syrup. He should be a chef, because it was an ingenious idea. Well, actually, a pop-up cafe did a cat noir slash ladybug-themed brunch a few months back, and ladybug waffles was one of the options. It was delicious, and he'd been craving them ever since. Sure, he didn't have the same whipped topping they used, but a canister of the store-bought stuff would serve them just fine. He made his mixture with no hiccups, and now he had to overcome his final obstacle. The waffle maker. So, when do I turn it? He asked, hoping for wisdom before the storm. When the light goes blink blink, Marinette said, twisting the device with ease. Kat tried to imitate her, but it didn't turn the way he wanted it to. Oof. Well, as long as he didn't burn them, it'd be fine. Right? Right. As if by a miracle, or the grace of the miraculous, he didn't burn, or otherwise maim, a single waffle. Phew. Words could not express the relief that flooded through him when they plopped the last waffle on the serving plate, admiring the blueberry-spotted red breakfast. It'd be perfect if it wasn't almost noon, Marinette said, her hand lingering on Kat's shoulder blade after giving him a pat on the back. The physical intimacy was nice, and added to the home aesthetic. Homemade breakfast with someone who was physically close to him? paradise. I've heard brunch is perfect at any time if you pair it with a mimosa, he said, grabbing the stemware he'd picked up at the corner store for four euros before coming here. But a virgin screwdriver will have to do for now. She laughed, teasing him about how pretentious calling orange juice a virgin screwdriver was, and followed him to the living room with their plates already topped with syrup and whipped topping. It was a Saturday morning, and they had a firm date scheduled to watch cartoons together. Well, not like a date date. (laughs) Just date as in the expression. As in, like, an appointment, but not. I mean, surely Marinette didn't think these little cooking outings were mere appointments, right? Yeah, totally. This not date, wasn't an appointment, but it wasn't a date date. They were hanging out as friends. That's the plan they made. Ah, yes, that's the term. Making plans. Phew. All of that emotional turmoil to define what was happening led him here. Good. No little heart flutters here. Not here, not today. Those were because he was getting used to a new environment, but now he was all but adopted by the Dupang Changs, so there was no reason to feel that flutter. Well, it wasn't much of a flutter anymore. 
The last time it happened, his chest all but seized and he had to turn around and count to ten. Did he have feelings for Marinette? This was nothing like what he felt for Ladybug, and he wasn't sure how to label it. Marinette wasn't just a friend, but it wasn't like he was crushing on her. But you don't feel this way for a best friend, do you? It just didn't seem right to label it as such. Arrgh, whatever. He was an avid Marinette supporter. Yeah, friendship that doubled as an avid fan of who she was as a person. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Total sense. And she was part of his home, which is why she felt like home. So there was no need to confuse himself with their relationship further. She didn't make him feel like Ladybug did, so he definitely wasn't falling for her. The latter truth was a relief, because there's no way he'd be able to win over her affection in the first place. That, and if he didn't end up with Ladybug in the endgame, what was all his past suffering for? Marinette's laughter brought him back to the living room, like a bell voiced by a fairy. What are you thinking about? She asked, leaning in closer like she was challenging him. You didn't even notice I stole the whipped topping. He looked down, his cheeks flushed from his thoughts, not her teasing, to see that she had, indeed, stolen his whipped topping. Cat sighed happily, letting out a small grunt as he stood up with his plate to replace the theft in the kitchen. Marinette followed him in, still giggling. Cat picked up the can of whipped cream looked at his plate, then glanced at Marinette's plate. All right, if that's how you want to play it, then game on. He shook the can and sprayed it, his shot landing squarely on target. Her waffles. Except, well, he didn't stop. He kept his finger pressed as she squeaked and then laughed in surprise. When her laughter turned to protests, she tried to move the plate away. Her mistake. The cream kept going, hitting her forearm first before causing a mess as she dodged. Cat, stop! Are you serious right now? He met her question with a laugh, taking a strawberry and chucking it at her as a garnish. She caught it with lightning reflexes and charged him pinning him against the fridge as she tried to crush the berry into his forehead. He had her by the wrists, but she had the position of advantage for this battle. Except, well, her face was close to his. Like, super close to his, and apparently he was the only one hyper-aware of this fact. Oh, Camembert. He could smell her shampoo and had to tear his eyes away from her freckles. He stopped resisting, letting her smash red onto his forehead. He may have imagined it, purposeful or not, but it felt like she lingered there. Was she making fun of how his cheeks matched the berry? I win, she said softly, stepping back. He hadn't realized she was on the tops of her toes when she pinned him. Oh, Camembert, she was cute. No. No, 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 no! I'll... I'll clean up, he said, voice hoarse as he turned his attention to the plate. I'll help. No! His response came up louder and more desperate than he wanted. Go, uh, start the show. I want to reheat my plate, so I'll clean while the microwave's running. She paused a moment, but didn't press. I'll see you in there, cat. He exhaled slowly after she left, making sure it wasn't too loud. Okay. 
That was unexpected. He'd never had a heartbeat physically hurt him the same way one did when Marinette had him pinned to the fridge. Oh, this was trouble. Trouble Cat Noir couldn't afford. He closed his eyes, pulling out the same boards and nails he used for his mother, and started porting up an artery running into his heart. Cat wasn't going to lose his home again. Not if he could help it. Chapter 7 Adrian sat on his bed, pictures of Ladybug and Marinette laid out in front of him. Crush, he muttered to himself, holding up a picture of Ladybug to the ceiling. Friend, he said, tossing a picture of Marinette to the side. Crush, he said again, moving a picture of Ladybug to the discard pile. Friend. Kid, it's been an hour. When can we move on to the pictures of cheese? Plague groaned. I have a few choice words to show my affection for each one. Adrian sighed, flopping onto his back. It was hopeless. He liked two girls, and every single piece of advice he'd received through movies told him chasing after two hairs was a bad idea. Ugh. He had the worst luck, didn't he? And if liking two girls weren't enough of a kerfuffle for the heart, one of them made him feel at home at work, and the other one provided him a place to call home when he wasn't working. What's a cat to do? Then again, there's no way either of them would date him. Besides, he wanted to date Ladybug. Not Marinette. Yeah, he liked her, but he wasn't sure if these feelings could be labeled as a crush. Nope. He needed to keep adding boards to the walls in his heart, making sure none of his feelings bled into a chamber where they didn't belong. Sighing, Adrian closed his eyes, blocking out whatever it was Plague was trying to tell him. The promise of sleep felt good to him right now, genuine and as tangible as such a thing could be, unlike this internal battle of emotions for girls he'd never date anyway. But when he fell asleep, he didn't fall gently. Oh, no. The dream that came was something out of a nightmare with twists and turns and tricky words that could make even a grown man panic and want to hide under the same covers that trapped him under a sandman's power. Doors and girls and choices he wanted to run away from. But when he awoke, he awoke with anxiety, not quite sure what it was he dreamt about. But, for once, breakfast smelled good. Adrian brushed his teeth and tumbled downstairs, taking the chair opposite his father for their weekly morning meal. Little was said between them past his current activities and Adrian congratulating Gabriel for his recent launch. I think it's about time you got a girlfriend, Gabriel said, his words freezing Adrian's fork in midair. Wait, really? Adrian looked up, eyes wide, as his father checked a message on his phone. You're allowing me to date? Don't get ahead of yourself, Adrian. You're not responsible enough to handle a relationship yet. I mean a girlfriend for business. Natalie appeared, as if on cue, and handed him three manila folders. Choose one and we'll get a photo op arranged. Don't worry about actually getting to know her. You'll be briefed on her likes and dislikes, so there's no need to lose time spending it with a stranger, she said, her voice its usual cool tone. Something twisted in his belly. 
cold and dark and bitter. Another day, another move as a pawn. Was anything genuine to his father anymore? Even this breakfast was for show. Adrian stood up, not foolish enough to leave the folders behind, and excused himself to his bedroom. Ugh. He wanted to kick or scream or do something rebellious, but knew he couldn't. He was stuck at home and... No. He wasn't stuck at home. He wanted to go home, and that realization was almost scary. But Marinette said she was going to Alia's today, and it wasn't his place to intrude. And if Marinette wasn't home, he didn't have a reason to go to the Dupain Changs, did he? Oh wait, yes he did. They owned a bakery, and he had a stomach. He could stop in for a bite. After promising Plague they'd visit Leon's cheese store, Adrian transformed, his heart pounding in anticipation. He shouldn't be so nervous, but it was still a little daunting. Sure, Mama Chang would smile and give him a big hug when he walked in, but there was always the what-if reel of events playing in the back of his mind. Hello, my boy! Tom bellowed when Cat walked into the bakery, turning heads. Cat found himself swept into a hug that nearly melted him, and he nearly forgot to return the gesture. He wasn't used to such touching anymore, and even though he was touch-hungry, he didn't know how to feed the desire. Cat? He turned around to see Marinette walk in with a bag that was larger than her torso. Hey, he said, timid. Okay, heart, now isn't the time to flutter. This was certainly a nervous flutter, not a crush flutter. Yeah, nervous flutter. A nervous flutter that somehow relaxed his whole body as it passed through him. Oh, hey, fancy seeing you here, he said, just barely getting away with not clearing his throat. What are you up to? I got some of this. She held up some yarn. Or thick thread? He couldn't tell. Sewing? Cross stitch. Cross stitch? Like embroidery? Yeah! Oh, Camembert. The way she lit up was priceless. What are you going to make? he asked, clearing his throat as an excuse to look away. I got a Pusheen cross stitch set. Want to make one with me? The invitation took him off guard. With these paws? My claws would get in the way, princess. Please, you aren't some beast. What, are you scared of a little embroidery? The light banter warmed his heart. That's right. Warmed. Not fluttered. Warmed his heart. It's because Marinette was here now. Yeah. That's right. Home is where Marinette is. He followed her upstairs where she set up shop in the living room, turning on the TV for some casual background noise before unpacking what she bought. You got two? he asked, thumbing the Pusheen boxes. Yeah, one for you. Cat nearly dropped the box in surprise. For him? For me? Yeah, and reminded me of you. Really? Something tells me you'd like Pusheen the cat, and what's the harm in learning how to cross-stitch even if it's less than a hundred stitches? His heart glowed as he found his usual grin replaced with a soft smile. Wow, did he like this girl. She was nice, if not polite, to everyone. But to him? She was kind to him. The kind of kindness that comes with genuine intimacy. 
Less than a hundred stitches? He echoed. Cat sliced open the transparent sticker sealing the box. Show me how it's done. The contents spilled onto the coffee table, and Marinette picked up a pink circle and a white piece of fabric. He did the same, a flutter of excitement in his chest. As simple as it was, he was already having fun. Place the fabric over the back of the hoop, Marinette said. Yeah, just like that. Now open up the screw of the top piece and yeah, you've got it. She clapped her hands together. Great job, Cat. He laughed, fighting the urge to roll his eyes. This was the easy part. He shouldn't be praised for something like this. All right, talk me through this, Cat said picking up a needle. Marinette talked him through threading the tapestry needle and tying a knot, although she ended up tying his for him. As expected, it was a little hard to do with claws on, despite his best efforts. Did he poke himself making the little X's on the coarse fabric? Yes. Yes, he did. But at least it got some giggles from Marinette. There was something about sharing the intimate silence, dulled by the background noise from the television, that came while stitching together that Cat found himself enjoying unexpectedly. Webtoons that took place in early Victorian Europe settings taught him that this was something a noble-class woman was expected to learn, and he could see how ladies could be fast friends while sharing needlework. It was easy to pass the time while both chatting and keeping their hands busy. Then again, if they were in the Victorian era, it would be unbecoming of him to stitch together with her. She'd be trapped inside while he was outside sword fighting or riding horses or some other stereotypical man activity. That didn't take long at all, Kat said, admiring the handiwork they did together. He'd done the Pusheen eating a donut design, and she'd stitched the classic Pusheen design. They hadn't even finished an episode of the drama. He half wished there were more patterns, larger patterns, to do. Sitting with Marinette like this was exactly what he needed after this morning. Her parents were nice, but today taught him that home wasn't the bakery. Home is where Marinette is. He felt sleep tug at his eyes after lunch, and although he wanted nothing more than to curl up for a catnap on the couch, Cat knew he'd best be going. Father would want an answer to whom he'd be dating in namesake. If only he could date Marinette instead. Cat glanced at her, sitting peacefully beside him on the couch, and sighed. Yeah, right. As if father would ever approve. He might have an eye for fashion, but he'd miss this gem of a girl from his own greed. But was it his greed? Cat didn't know. He could never tell if his father's actions were to help himself or to help Adrian as his son. Whatever. Marinette was asleep beside him, tuckered out from her morning, no doubt and there couldn't be a better time to excuse himself. With a soft sigh, Cat leaned over, touched his lips to her hair, and stood up. It was time to go back to his bedroom. Chapter 8 Adrian stared at the list of facts for his so-called girlfriend, dreading the next two hours of photos. She was a Brazilian, model-turning actress with warm beige skin that complemented cool undertones, and green eyes that were mesmerizing when photographed. He could see why she gained popularity as a model, especially with toned abs and a healthy eleven, instead of being just another skinny girl. She had two cats and was supporting herself independently despite only being sixteen, and even her bailage was perfect. But... Adrian didn't care. He didn't want to date her. His heart belonged to Ladybug, always, 
and if he was going to date someone by choice, he'd rather have Marinette. He hadn't dared to suggest her to his father, so perhaps he was the fool in the end. Whatever. She probably didn't want to do this either, so he'd be his usual courteous self to at least make this a not-horrible experience. Three hours later, Adrian found himself as Cat Noir, curled up on the Dupang Chang's living room couch and waiting for Marinette to get home. He couldn't allow himself to be entitled to her presence, but oh, how he craved her like a toddler craves a blanket from the dryer at bedtime. But alas, she wasn't here. So he opened his spoils from the last-minute shopping trip without her, choosing to stitch away silence instead of wallowing in self-pity. What you up to? Marinette came home about halfway into him trying to figure out how to stitch a curse of G without much success. I'm trying to make something for Ladybug, he confessed, embarrassed of his stitching. His ladybug print was less than pleasing to look at. She blinked in surprise and sat down beside him. That's awfully nice of you. Or maybe just plain awful, he sighed. What's the opposite of admiring? Because he certainly wasn't admiring his handiwork. Chin up, cat. You've pursued ladybug as long as Paris has known you. Surely you aren't going to give up now. He looked up at her, ready to make a retort, when he noticed her eyes, pink like a bunny's. Was she... had she been crying? What's wrong? Cat leaned forward, dropping his embroidery to cup her face. What happened? She made a not-crying face. Her cheeks tightened, her lashes twitched, and she smiled from ear to ear, but it wasn't a grin. Oh, nothing, Marinette said, her voice tight and choked. She brushed his hand away as she redirected her gaze to the television. Not nothing. His voice was rough. Tell me what happened. It's Tom. Tell me. Cat realized he was gripping her wrist now, and tight at that. When he relaxed his grip, she spoke. Turns out one of my friends is dating someone, she exhaled. And I found out through a gossip blog. He was stunned for a moment. That Adrian kid? He asked, choosing his words carefully. Why would that hurt her? Yeah. And that upset you? She sniffed, giving him her answer. I just thought that, well, I mean, I'm not egotistical enough to think that Adrian Crest supermodel needs to give me a heads up, but... <sighs> she sighed, tucking a hair that strayed from her braid behind her ear. I thought maybe Adrian, my friend, would. A wrench twisted in his chest, tightening his ribcage. He wanted to beat up this Adrian guy for making her cry, but, well, there was the obvious. Could he fix this? Maybe, if he acted quickly. But for now, his role wasn't to fix. It was to listen. Cat wrapped his arms around her shoulders and pulled her to his chest. The gesture sparked her tears, and they stayed there like that, curled together, until she stopped. Instead of going about their day when she was done, Cat reached out, grabbed the remote, and put the hunchback of Notre Dame on. They stayed together, her weight on his chest, long after she fell asleep. 
He had to take care to not laugh at certain bits of the movie in fear of waking her, but he also had a much riskier gamble to play. Claws in, he whispered, feeling Marinette stir as his mask came off. Adrian, I... Plagg began, stretching as he popped out. Adrian immediately tossed a piece of cheese from his pocket into the air, and he caught it, giggling to himself as he floated away to enjoy it. Ever so carefully, he slipped his phone out, opened up the texting app, and scrolled until he found her. Sorry you have to hear it from me like this, he typed but I'm dating someone in namesake. I wanted to tell you first, but the day got away from me. I could only hope you didn't hear it on the news or a blog first. Of course, he already knew she knew, but she didn't need to know that. Her phone buzzed after he sent the text, and she stirred with just enough warning for him to mutter a claws out. Cat? She lifted her head from his chest, eyes full of sleep. Were you... did you just transform? He smiled, ruffling her hair before pressing her head back to his chest and stretching his legs. Don't worry about it. Hmm. It seemed like she was too sleepy to protest. I think that Adrian guy texted. She popped up, hitting his chin with her head, and dived for the phone. Really? Pain for a text? Was Adrian really that important to her? He felt himself blush. Huh. He was important to her. His fingers hid his smile as he felt her warmth leave his chest but somehow his insides were still toasty. He watched her visibly relax as she read his message, and somehow it made him relax as well. But his body wasn't prepped to tense again, because she started crying again and he didn't know how to respond. He tried to reach for her shoulder, but his entire lower half and part of his torso were asleep from an hour of being laid on without adjustments. Pins and needles greeted his muscles as he hit the floor, not yet grasping the fact that he fell off the couch. Cat! Marinette shouted, too surprised to keep crying. Are you all right? He answered her question with a grunt, unable to stand up without suffering kisses from Satan himself as his legs buzzed like a thousand angry bees. You know when your legs fall asleep and all of a sudden your extremities feel like the TV static screen? Oh, she winced for him. I offer to help you up, but you're better off down there. Yep. Silence passed between them until, without warning, they burst into laughter. Thanks for being here, Marinette said wiping her face dry. If having my tail in the air in an undignified manner as my body fights off the bees makes you happy, then I shall oblige, princess. I'll make sure to pass along my recommendations to Ladybug, she teased, putting her hand on his thigh as what was most likely intended to be a friendly gesture, but instead, the bees intensified turning the pins and needles feeling into something that could akumatize a sane man. Her action was met with him curling involuntarily, which resulted in him bashing his head on the coffee table. Wow. Ouch. What a mess. The mistake only fueled their laughter, although Marinette now apologized profusely. Guess Cat got to beat up Adrian a little bit after all, huh? Although, Marinette would never know. Oh. That's a lonely thought. Marinette would never know he was Adrian. Well, 
that's a Debbie Downer to leave off on. I'd best be going, he said, still clinging to a shred of dignity even though his limbs weren't fully recovered. Thanks, Cat. If only she knew he caused her tears. Cat leaned over, kissed Baronet's forehead, and stood up. See you around. Tomorrow? She asked, her hand covering where his lips touched her skin. Cat smiled at the invitation. Sure, he said. Tomorrow. He'd come back tomorrow. He just had to spend a night at his father's house first. Chapter 9 Adrian knew better than to slam his door, but oh, how he wished he could. Nothing made his blood boil quite like a belligerent father could. He flopped on his bed, wishing he could call Marinette hear her voice, and sleep away his anger. But no, it wasn't his place to disturb her like that. Instead, he rolled over, read an article about him and his new girlfriend, and closed his eyes. He didn't want to exist today. Not here, at least, and certainly not alone. Perhaps he deserved the ring on his finger. How many generations of bad luck did he wear? A day alone. What a vacation! Plague exclaimed, retreating to his corner. Whosoever is delighted in solitude is either a wild beast or a god, Adrian muttered, knowing Plague didn't care enough to retort. But Marinette would. Marinette would ask about the quote, and they'd talk about his hyperfixation over Plato for hours. Moping around here wasn't going to change anything, was it? Carpe diem. Time to level up. Adrian didn't like the hand he'd been dealt, but his experiences and resources meant he could do something about it, even if it was pushing his trajectory by a millimeter. Close out! Cat Noir walked the boulevard, stopping for photo ops with every person who looked like they hadn't hit puberty yet, going as far as asking the kids for a photo with them instead of the other way around, knowing it would make their day. It was a good thing he was already out and about, because the cobblestone beneath him rumbled as he wore a Cheshire grin, his ears upticked on instinct, knowing what it meant. Akuma time. He dashed toward the heart of downtown, swimming opposite the sea of people rushing past. From what he could tell, this was an Earth-type Akuma. He'd recently started sorting victims into categories, although he'd never tell Ladybug. He could already hear her calling him a dork before going into a long-winded spiel about how much a mental trap sorting them would be and that it's rude. Sigh. The mental roleplay did nothing to affect how much he loved her, however. She came into view when he passed the craft store Marinette frequented, and he realized that she and Marinette were the same type of pretty. Huh. Perhaps he had a type after all. Not that it mattered. He already had a girlfriend, no matter the circumstances, and he wasn't going to be a rotten man. There was no need to earn any more negative karma in his life. Hello, bugaboo, he sang, meeting her on a rooftop. He couldn't see the victim, but Ladybug was actively scanning. They've gone underground again, she answered. And hello. Aw, how cute. She made sure to greet him despite the circumstances. Tell me we aren't going into the crypts. We've been over this cat. I'll do my best to not end up in the catacombs of Paris. Thank you, my love. It is truly my nightmare. You have the power to control where your feet lead you while you're awake, Tomcat. It's strange, isn't it? 
that I dream of you even when I'm awake. You never stop flirting, do you, cat? Is it working? What do you mean, is it working? She shot him a glare while wearing a smile. Are you trying to bug me into a date as a promise you'll stop? Oh? You'll go on a date with me? She rolled her eyes, turning her attention back to surveying. So, fun fact. We've never gone on a date before? Yes, yes, I know, but I wouldn't call it fun. She sighed, smirking. The guy I like is dating someone. Cat, who had perched himself precariously on the rooftop, slipped a few shingles before composing himself. Is it that aggressed guy? Ladybug turned away, the tips of her ears matching the color of her mask. What, do you think I'm like the rest of Paris, heartbroken over a model? Then why are you crossing your arms? He teased, not expecting this to go anywhere. She sighed, meeting his eyes before answering his question. How would you know? Know what? About Adrian. Was I that obvious? What? Cat Noir cleared his throat. Is, uh, <clears throat> is that why you gave him a miraculous? Her blush intensified, as if you haven't ever done something stupid for a crush. Really? She'd liked him that long? He was flattered, but for some reason, not over the moon ecstatic like he should be. So if Adrian Agrest asked you out right now, you'd say yes? Ladybug mulled it over for a moment. No. No. But why? You like him. There's someone I... She trailed off, trying to find the right words. Value more. Someone you value more? Yeah. First of all, I'm not about to risk my superhero status over a guy. But also, she tucked a loose hair behind her ear, there's someone I'd probably see a lot less of if I dated Adrian. And even though I have a very different kind of love for him, I'd want to lose him for anything. Huh. I can kind of relate he said, looking away. It was the reason why he wasn't doing a victory dance right now. He had a person like that, too. That grabbed her attention. Ladybug's eyebrows shot up, her back straightened, and her shoulders went rigid. Girl? Boy? <laughs> Girl, he chuckled. Would you date her? Huh? If she asked? He mulled it over, leaning back and pressing himself to the rooftop, hands cradling his head as his elbows pointed skyward. That would be... well... he began. I don't know. I don't think she'd ever ask, so there's that. But if you struck her fancy? Cat laughed. I don't. I'm the embodiment of bad luck, remember? You underestimate yourself, Cat. I'd give a strong recommendation to any girl you have your eyes on. Except yourself. She blew out a laugh. I suppose, yes. Except myself. I get it, though. I'll always love you, but I'll also always view you as my partner. She gave him a soft smile. If only we could be friends without our masks. Well, we could, he began, already knowing her answer. His suggestion was met with a light shove before she turned her attention to another rumble. Are you ready, Kitty? Ladybug asked. 
born for it, he said, grabbing his baton. Time to fight an Akuma. Chapter 10 Cat Noir stared at Marinette, willing the universe to help him. Come on, Marinette, notice! Right here, in this craft shop. Look this way! Clearly, his Cat Noir abilities didn't come with telepathic abilities. What are you staring at so intensely? Madame Louis asked, resting a hand on his arm. He'd joined a knitting club a few weeks back, and the band of grandmothers were more than delighted to teach young blood with a face easy on the eyes. Do you know her? Another grandmother cooed. Oh, Missy! Madame Louis called out. Oh, great. Marinette turned her gaze to the knitting club, with Cat Noir sitting smack dab in the middle of it. If she was surprised, she didn't show it. Because, well, Cat Noir surrounded by white hair and powder was a normal thing to see, right? Ladies, Cat began, hoping for a less than awkward segue. Allow me the pleasure of introducing my friend. Miss Marinette Dupang Chang. She laughed and did a small curtsy as the band of grandmothers cooed, inspecting what she picked out. It's been lovely to meet you all, Marinette said, but I must be going. I'll escort you, Kat said, standing up and taking a step forward while forgetting about the yarn strewn in front of him. He fell, chest first, into a web of colored yarn. His romp pointed skyward as he groaned in embarrassment rather than pain, and he could hear the ladies making cat and yarn jokes behind him. It's a good thing he'd never date Marinette, because there's no way he'd be able to seduce her now. She's seen too much, knows too much. She helped delace him from the tangle, and he gave her a sheepish grin, unable to come up with an appropriate pun. Any chance you'd home this helpless cat for a day? He asked, straightening himself and his dignity. No. No? His ears drooped. Because I'd rather take him to a cafe. Marinette flicked his bell and walked to the checkout. That is, if he'd like to go. I think he very much would, he said, following her. They went and got iced lemonade, and she laughed at the twisted face he made when he tried it. Have you never had American lemonade before? She laughed. Nope, he said, still feeling the bite at the back of his throat. Never. <clears throat> and here I thought you were well-traveled. I'm on a strict diet, even when I travel. You diet? Her eyebrows shot up. He grinned, hoping to keep a light mood. I can't keep a perfect figure with only catnip. Marinette rolled her eyes and answered his banter with a long slurp. So, she said, setting her tumbler down. You know about me, but what about you? What about me? Who are you, Cat? I trust you already, but I don't even know how old you are. What? Are you trying to figure out my secret identity? He leaned in to rest his elbows on the table, but his hand landed naturally next to Marinette's. Great. Now he was self-conscious and battling a rush of heat flushing his neck. Would it look awkward if he pulled it away? What if he pretended to adjust his suit? Then again, she didn't pull her hand away either. And although it was subtle, she glanced at the distance between his and her hands before continuing the conversation. Your personality doesn't match your anonymity. 
but I'd like to know if we should be friends in the first place. Oof. Her words stung, although they shouldn't. He should be happy she called him a friend. And she was right. He often imagined Ladybug to be some university girl, but that was also part fantasy. Doesn't matter. We're the same age. We are? She tilted her head to the side. Oh, Camembert, that's cute. Well, I'm actually older than you by just over a year if I'm doing my math right. Oh? So that's why I see you running on rooftops so often. Marinette leaned in, looking up with a smirk. You can't drive. His jaw dropped as a laugh tumbled out. <laughs> Excuse you? You can't either! I never said I could. I'll have you know I've already made plans for a motorcycle. Really? Your family is down with their reckless son on a bike. She crossed her arms and leaned back, knowing she already won the conversation. You got me there, he said, shooting a finger gun in her direction. He had to do something with his hand now that she took hers away. In other news, despite it hitting the wrong part of my throat first sip, I like this. He held up the lemonade. Oh, wait until you try hibiscus lemonade. Wait, what? Or lavender lemonade. That's good, too. I'm actually allergic to lavender, he sighed, giving her an apologetic look and an American-style shrug. Really? That's a shame. So, every time I wash my hair... I get a headache. Yep. Sorry, cat. I'll change it. What? No. He straightened his back. No, don't. Don't accommodate me. I don't want to intrude on you any more than I already have. Her eyes softened to the point that he almost wondered if they were sad. No. Pity? Cat, if it's hurting you, then of course I'll change my shampoo. It costs less to change my shampoo than it did to buy this drink. The ice rattled in the tumbler as she shook it for good measure. He slumped in his chair, feeling sheepish. Thanks, princess. Anything for my mysterious boy in black, she winked, grabbing her purse and standing up. Shall we go? Back home? To the market. I figure it's a beautiful day to make lemonade, don't you? His heart fluttered. Call it a date and I'm all yours. Kat didn't know how he expected her to answer, but the words that came out of Marinette's mouth swept him off his feet. Oh, Camembert. It was a good thing he still had a little lemonade left in his cup because all of a sudden he was parched. Who knew getting a little lemonade would change the course of their relationship forever? Chapter 11 Call it a date and I'm all yours. Cat Noir meant the sentence to be more of a joke than a suggestion, but Marinette turned around pressed a finger to her lips, and winked. So long as we don't end up on the lady blog, she said, keeping her eyes on him. He immediately felt a flush wash over him like a waterfall. Cat was hot, but it wasn't because he was wearing a black suit in sunny Parisian weather. Oh, no. It's because he knew, for the first time, without a doubt that Marinette owned his heart in a way Ladybug never did. Oh, this is trouble. What, are you going to hold my paw? He croaked, trying to straighten the conversation. There's no way she meant it, right? 
But then how will you hold the bags? She teased. He wasn't sure how to answer her. It was like trying to keep up with Ladybug's wit, and all he could do was take a sip of his lemonade because he was suddenly parched. Unfortunately for Cat Noir, the lemonade hit the wrong part of the back of his throat, sending him into a coughing spree that would make a grown man cry. It gathered quite a few pairs of eyes, and Marinette quickly seized the situation by grabbing his elbow and leading him down the boulevard and into an alley until he composed himself. You okay? Marinette asked, standing closer than just friends. What, would you like a taste? <coughs> I'm afraid the only bit of lemonade left is on my lips, Cat said, clearing his throat and attempting to wink. Don't look at her freckles, Cat. Keep a straight face. Her eyes narrowed and she smacked his chest with the back of her hand. He shrugged with his trademark smirk and followed her out of the alley, heart still pounding from the distance. Or lack thereof, between them he witnessed. Back there, in the alley, he wanted to kiss her. It wasn't like what he had with Ladybug. In the past, he'd always wanted to kiss Ladybug. Yearned for it. Craved it. But... It was always an idea, or a thought in the back of his head playing, I could lean in and kiss her right now, in a loop. But back there, he felt his lips tingle and chest cave when he looked down at Marinette, and all she was trying to do was make sure he was okay. Cat knew what he needed to do, but he wasn't sure how to do it. While he should be enjoying this outing with Marinette, he spent it with a pit in his stomach. Here she was, looking so cute as she sniffed each lemon individually, and he couldn't even enjoy it. She hadn't taken him up on the hand-holding offer after all, although their fingers brushed a few times. It felt more like electricity than fire. Kind of. It felt almost like the time he got accidentally tased by a civilian who thought he was an Akuma victim. But he liked it. He wanted it. Oh, Camembert, he was going crazy! This wasn't healthy! They stopped by Leon's cheese store before heading home, grabbing some soft cheese for a recipe Marinette's mother wanted to make for dinner. Cat wondered if he'd be helping them make it. Huh. Cooking dinner with the family. That's a nice thought. Okay, one last spot, Marinette said, pointing down the road. Yeah? What's that? Cat asked, adjusting the bags. Who knew a few dozen lemons would be so heavy? The hibiscus! As if on cue... The bag he held tore open, leaving lemon after lemon to roll down the sidewalk. The duo sighed in unison before exchanging glances. Yes, hibiscus. That's what's most important right now, Kat said, straight-faced. It made her laugh, of course, and they scooped the lemons into the cheese bag instead. All right, all right, Marinette sighed. I guess we'll juice them first. It would be a shame if they bruise before we get to it. Do they bruise that quickly? Honestly? No idea. Better safe than sorry. They exchanged laughs for some reason, then made their way back to the bakery, delighting Sabine with the cheese. Kat grabbed the manual citrus juicer from the top shelf, acutely conscious of Marinette standing beside him. She hadn't noticed his glances and lingering gaze, right? She was treating him normally so far, but he didn't want to find out what would happen if he made their relationship awkward because he couldn't control his mind-numbing infatuation with her. Making the lemonade was a pretty seamless process, besides Marinette getting a little lemon juice in one of her cuticles. Oof. 
If it were Cat, he would have yelped like his tail was stepped on. But Marinette kept her composure. She's so cool. She reminded him of Ladybug at times. Cat's nose curled as Marinette scooped out the hibiscus petals. As it turns out, her mother had a canister. Some people said it tasted fruity when brewed, but he was getting a rose-like palate in the back of his throat as he smelled it. Curse this feline nose. What's wrong? Marinette asked, noticing the face he made. Nothing. Just not feline this choice of tea. She laughed, surprisingly, and somehow that laugh seemed to be the biggest accomplishment of the day. Wow, how perspective can change everything, huh? He'd taken that laugh for granted as Adrian a little less than a month ago. Or had it been over a month? He glanced at her again, unsure of just how long she'd provided him with the home away from home. There was guilt laced in his gut when he looked around him. Guilt that he was deceiving his friend. Guilt that he was a liar. Why couldn't he have made this happen as Adrian? Why did he put himself in the painful position of being Cat Noir? Why? No matter how many times he asked the question to himself, he couldn't find an answer. Is everything okay? Cat didn't realize he'd constricted his face. Marinette's eyes were clouded with worry, but the way she leaned in to check on him only made it worse. Cat wasn't sure if he could keep his feelings to himself anymore. This was dangerous. This was terribly dangerous. I uh, need to poop, Cat said, bolting off his seat at the kitchen island and standing rigid. Her face twisted from concern to surprise before settling on a playful grin. Don't let me stop you, she sighed. Really? Poop? That's what his brain autocorrected to? <laughs> nice going, Cat Noir. At least she took it in stride. He excused himself to the bathroom and detransformed, quickly stuffing Plague with a piece of cheese swiped from the Dupang Chang fridge before taking out his phone. Oh, Camembert. He didn't want to do this, but he had to. He wasn't here to poop. If only it were something as simple as that. Oh no, he was here to set the record straight. It wasn't right to have feelings for Marinette before addressing the problem at hand. Adrian had to call his girlfriend. Chapter 12 It had been a long time since a feeling like this ransacked Adrian's gut. He'd only met his girlfriend face to face one time, but that was cold comfort as the phone rang. He wasn't sure if he should be relieved or not when she didn't answer, as it gave him an excuse to text her, despite how rude it was. Adrian was acutely aware of his heartbeat as he typed out his message with a tone that was not apologetic, but not cold. In context, he asked if she wanted to break up. She responded immediately, asking him what was going on because she hadn't heard from management. As their conversation developed, Adrian found she didn't care if he dated someone else, so long as the media didn't find out about it. His girlfriend told him that even if he was found quote-unquote cheating on him, as the media would see it, it would be in her favor because she'd get a lot of attention for being the righteous girlfriend and so strong for overcoming such betrayal. Wow. Celebrities are something else, huh? It was a burden off his chest, but now he actually had to poop, so he may as well relieve himself. When Adrian donned his Cat Noir transformation and walked out, Marinette came over, a worried yet somehow perplexed expression on her face. What's wrong? He asked, grabbing the liquid measuring cup they needed. 
Are you... Mm. Marinette trailed off, as though she were choosing a better set of words. Are you okay? Yes. What was she so concerned about? You were in there for, like, twenty minutes. Are you sure? Ah, he understood. Blushing, Cat cleared his throat and made his way to the stink. Sink! He made his way to the sink. I wouldn't go in there for a while if I were you, he joked, cursing his autocorrecting brain from almost half an hour earlier. She laughed at his expense, but so be it. The cost of his time in the bathroom was well worth it, because now he could like her without regrets. Just not as Adrian. While his girlfriend didn't view or even care, him dating another girl as cheating, Adrian was still in a relationship, so he couldn't approach Marinette with the idea as, well, himself. Would she be open to dating Cat Noir, superhero, and part-time dork without knowing who he is? And what happens when she finds out? Oh, Camembert. He didn't want to imagine, but he wanted her more than his teenage brain was capable of rationalizing. The water's boiling now, he choked out, drawing the attention away from what was sure to be a poop joke on the tip of her tongue. Now what? So, tisans can be brewed longer than four to five minutes, but some people find a bitter taste if the leaves or petals are brewed too long, she asked, standing a little too close to his arm. So, no more than five minutes. Got it. Cat grabbed the canister of hibiscus petals and began to shake the contents into the pot. Wait! Cat, no! Cat froze realizing he hadn't measured the petals. Sorry, he said, reaching in to scoop the hibiscus out. His action was met with Marinette tackling him, and on their trip to the floor, he had a flashback of a glomp reaction image from 2007 internet culture. Huh. Cat's huh was replaced with ow as his head hit the floor. Thankfully, Marinette didn't have a bad impact as his body was a shield between her and the vinyl. Whoa! He exclaimed, not sure how else to respond to the situation. But, oh, she was close. Okay, autogenic breathing. Keep your mind clear, cat. Ugh, how could he keep his mind clear when the strands of hair framing her face tickled his cheeks? Camembert! He wanted to kiss her, but it wouldn't be right. He pushed her shoulders away from him, sitting her up, before bumping his leg up as a gesture to get her off. She got the message, ears pink. Well, at least that was comforting. Unlike Ladybug, Marinette viewed Cat as a man. Well, as a boy. As a member of the opposite sex? No, that's not the way to phrase it as a potential to date. Wait. Yeah. She wouldn't be flushed like that if he didn't have a chance, right? Unless, oh, she could just be embarrassed for glomping him. Well, tackling. She'd probably smack his tummy if he called it a glomp. So, um, Marinette began. She took a moment to compose herself, eyebrows furrowed as she cleared her throat before continuing. So, first of all, don't stick your hand in boiling water! Oh, yeah, right. Good idea. Cat nodded, understanding why she took him to the floor. The floor that he still, in fact, was spread out on. What, you don't want to paint me like a French girl? He asked, putting a hand to his forehead like a damsel in distress. Marinette extended a hand, and he took it to help himself up. 
Second of all, remove the water from the heat when you put the leaves in. She turned off the burner and moved the pot to a cool, unused one. And third, this is a tisan. So even if you add too much in, we can just brew it for less time. A tisan? Cat tried to think. Weren't they brewing tea? So there's no quote-unquote tea leaves in here, meaning the Camiasinesis plant isn't part of the mix, so it's not technically tea. It's also not herbal because there's no herbs. It's just hibiscus petals, so we call it a tisane. Tisans are drinks that you brew that aren't technically tea. Huh. You look confused. It's taking a moment. Actually, he was trying not to concentrate on her hand still wrapped around his. Did she not realize she was holding it? Don't get me started on Roybus, Marinette laughed. She still hadn't dropped his hand. So how long do we let the petals... She'd said so earlier, but that was before he nearly touched her freckles with his nose. Four or five minutes once the water hits 99 degrees. Boiling is at 100 degrees, so really throw the hibiscus in when it boils and remove from the heat. Because this is a tisane, you can't really burn the leaves from being in too long. The flavor will just get stronger, although some people think that if you leave a tisane in too long, it can taste bitter. Huh. So, four minutes? By now? Let's give it another three. Even if it's a little long, it'll be okay because, again, there's no camilla senesis in it. Because there's no true tea in it. Got it, Cat recalled. Good! She gave his hand a little squeeze. Then we add the sugar, let it dissolve, and then more water. If it's cool enough to add the lemon juice, we'll do that, but we might need to wait a bit. Why can't we add it while it's hot? So, we add sugar to the hot brew right away to help it dissolve the sugar, but citrus can curdle if you add it to a hot drink, so it's best to let it cool first. Ah, uh, Makes sense. He was just happy they were talking. Right now, he was so self-conscious that he didn't think he could lead a conversation. Her hand didn't help. She looked down not as subtle as she probably meant the gesture to be, before sneezing, bringing both hands up to her face to cover it. Cat wasn't entirely convinced if it was a real sneeze, but it wasn't his place to say otherwise. You okay? he asked. Yeah, probably just, you know, seasonal allergies. Her cheeks were a bit pink. Did she... Was she also... Was Marinette also conscious of him? Like, the same way he was of her? Yeah, right. Don't get ahead of yourself, Cat Noir. Black cats don't have that kind of luck. He held out the strainer as Marinette poured the hibiscus brew through a funnel to get the leaves out. Whisking in the sugar, Cat realized he really liked the smell of this not-tea tea. What was it called again? Tea saying? Tisan. I could drink it like this, he said, trying the spoon Marinette held to his lips. You want to oversweeten it before you add the lemonade, because the lemons will most certainly take away some sweetness. Overdo it so you don't underdo it. Got it. She laughed at his simplification and nodded. You've got it. You're certainly improving in the kitchen, Cat Noir. It's nice to come home and cook. Cat didn't think about his words until they were out of his mouth. He wanted to redact them, eyes wide, but Marinette gave a chuckle in response. Yes, well, she began, as long as I don't lose any more salt containers, we can keep it up. He ran a hand through the hair at the back of his neck. Don't remind me. They exchanged laughter their conversation falling back into its usual pace as they finished the lemonade.
Kat used extra cold water to mix into the brew after the sugar dissolved, so they were able to add their fresh-pressed lemon juice in right away. This? Kat searched for words after taking a sip. He expected more of a berry flavoring, but this wasn't that. It was good. Like, he liked it, but couldn't pin the taste palette. Good, right? Yeah, like something from a cafe. She giggled and took a sip of her own, the red drink slipping up through her straw. Huh. For a moment, Kat wondered if his dad would like it. Nah, better not. He could see it somehow leading to a bad day for both of them. Mind if I hang here for a few more hours? He asked, the words slipping out more casually than they felt. Yeah, dummy. Marinette flicked his bell. Just don't attract any akumas, okay? He smiled. Yeah. An akuma couldn't beat this feeling. Pouring their mixture into a pitcher, Cat Noir took a deep breath that felt like sunshine. It was nice to spend an afternoon at home. Chapter 13 Adrian nearly tore a ligament when he doubled back to get a closer look in the magazine rack he passed by. A cross-stitch magazine? That was a thing? His manager gave him a strange look and made a hurry-up gesture with her neck, but Adrian handed the magazine to the cashier and paid as quickly as he possibly could instead, not bothering to wait for the change. Tearing open the plastic, he scrounged through the pages, fascinated by what he saw. This? This was an art form. He didn't realize cross-stitch could look like this. He felt his cheeks burned as he realized he was standing on Rue d'Arcole with his face buried in a crafting magazine as girls and paparazzi looked on. He quickly put it away, already imagining what Gossip Girl Alia might say when the pictures hit the public. He didn't care much, but he didn't want to grab Marinette's attention. Not like that, at least. Of course he wanted Marinette's attention, but as Cat Noir. Well, also as Adrian. Wow. Having a relationship with a civilian that you know both as a superhero and as a classmate is kind of confusing, isn't it? Sigh. He caught up to his manager, a cold, annoyed expression on her face that softened when she saw what he bought. He didn't want to explain it to her choosing instead to hustle himself into the car before she could press. Yikes. He needed to be a little more discreet about this kind of thing, didn't he? After hours of a shoot that took him out of school, Adrian turned himself into Cat Noir and made his way to the Dupang Chang household, curling up on the couch to read The Beginning After the End on tapas waiting for Marinette to come home. To his surprise, Sabine asked for help in the kitchen, mostly because he could reach high places, and ended up making dinner with her. Huh. He couldn't place this feeling, but it was nice. Marinette was home, but her home was also home, kind of. He didn't know how to explain it. Swaddled in warm emotions, Kat enjoyed dinner despite Marinette not joining him. Her parents didn't know where she was, but didn't seem to bother that he was there without her presence. Did he want to risk this? This warmth? This tenderness of relationship between himself and people who didn't care if he was their son or not, just so he could change a title of his relationship with Marinette? Shouldn't this be enough? He was happier than he'd been in a long time, so why was it nearly antagonizing instead? I'll go pick Marinette up, Kat said, hanging the dish towel to dry after cleaning up their meal. Thank you, love, Sabine said, her back turned to him, like it was natural for him to do so. Oh, no. He hadn't been sun-zoned, had he? 
worse yet, what if Marinette thought of him as a brother? Cat hadn't considered that. Ugh. Shaking his head to clear his doubts, he made his way downstairs, suddenly bumping into Marinette coming up from the bakery. They both landed on their bums, more surprised than injured. Thankfully, the bag she carried didn't break open, so there wasn't a mess to clean up. Oof, she said, dusting herself off as she stood up. Extending her hand to help him up, Marinette flashed a smile that left him more lightheaded than the tumble did. What are our plans for the day? Kat asked. Beating you in a round of Mario Kart. Her smirk made him chuckle. You wish. Where were you today? A friend of mine is convinced she's sister's own, and I had to tell her there's no such thing. Sister's owned? The guy she likes treats her like a little sister. She's horrified, but really, there's no such thing. Rather, it's the same as being a friend you view as being close to, but wouldn't develop romantic feelings for. I don't know. I feel the brother zone exists, Kat said, choosing his words carefully. Marinette rolled her eyes. Intimacy isn't always physical. Someone treating you like a brother or sister is a form of intimacy. Wouldn't you agree? But if it feels like a sibling, then there just isn't a spark. I wouldn't call that sister-zoned. Ah. Oh. So he wasn't brother-zoned. She just didn't feel a spark. Somehow that knowledge made him feel worse than believing in a term that was probably coined on Reddit. So it's safe to assume I'm not brother-zoned? Kat stepped in front of her, his arm resting on the wall above her to stop their ascent upstairs. He managed to deliver the line in a joking manner, but his heart beat like crazy as he waited for an answer. If he was wearing a Fitbit, it would surely tell him he's in the fat-burning zone. She stared at him, unblinking, two steps below before sighing. You're the one who calls this place home. Uh-huh. Cat felt a blush spreading out from under his mask and above his collar. Don't think I haven't seen your cross stitch. Oh, Camembert. Dread crept into his heart. Forget the fat-burning zone. His BPM may as well be zero because her sentence left him deceased. She saw it? How? He'd only ever worked on his ladybug handkerchief when she was around. Numb to what she was saying, Kat thought about the cross-stitch in question. Home is where Marinette is. He wanted to practice lettering, so he picked up a home is where your cat is cross-stitch set. But as it got later in the evening, he'd had the sleep-deprived idea of stitching Marinette instead. It was Probably the best stitching he'd done so far, but he'd never planned on showing it to anyone. How had she found it? Rather, how did she see it? She'd passed out after a Mario Party session between herself, him, and Tom when he was working on it. Ugh! Cat felt even more humiliated by the mock Capadon pose he held over her. Thankfully, she chuckled and chose to walk past him leaving him posing with his arm on the wall and unable to uncross his leaning leg pose as he felt sweat prickle a now uncomfortable magic spandex suit. He needed a word stronger than camembert to use as he peeled himself off the wall and trudged upstairs. Actually, no. Cat wasn't going to go back upstairs. He was too embarrassed for that. He'd neglected his Adrian duties for too long, and it was time to catch up. Sighing to himself, because he knew it was an excuse to avoid a potentially awkward scenario, Cat went back to his bedroom at the manor, de-transforming to study and get a little piano practice in. Adrian's cheeks were still burning by bedtime, and all he wanted to do was text Marinette goodnight, but he couldn't. That would be weird, right? Getting a goodnight text randomly from a classmate? 
and a guy that had a girlfriend, no less. Ugh. He needed to find an excuse to explain the cross-stitch she'd seen, and quickly... Shutting his eyes, Adrian begged sleep to come. Not because he was sad or lonely, because he wasn't feeling either of those things in the moment. Oh, no. Adrian wanted a date with Mr. Sandman because he couldn't stand his own embarrassment. But, oh, if only he knew how embarrassed he would be in the morning. Chapter 14 For some reason, Cat wasn't able to convince himself to go inside the Dupang Chang Bakery today. No, instead he paced outside its doors from across the street, worrying he looked like a madman. Hopefully Ladybug wasn't on patrol, else he'd get an earful for sure. But, observing the bakery from a distance... Cat Noir saw trouble. A group of schoolchildren, no older than 10 or 11, were arguing outside as they crossed the street and passed the bakery. One kid stopped in his tracks, nearly in tears, as one of them continued to yell, only pausing to smirk at the end of each sentence. Cat clenched his fists, ready to find out what was going on. He scurried across the street to where the potential bully stood and grabbed his shoulder. The kid jerked back, taking a few steps away from him when, without warning, Cat felt a waterfall rain down on him. A waterfall in Paris? He'd been splashed with water from the sky, but science didn't work that way. An Akuma, perhaps? He looked up too distracted to worry about the kids, to see Marinette covering her mouth in surprise as she held a watering can. She mouthed an apology, grimacing at her own actions, before tossing down a towel. Cat's mouth twisted upward, knowing he could tease her about this. He debated yelling at her from below, but he was a superhero, so he may as well take advantage of it. Bounding up to the balcony, Cat landed in front of Marinette, pausing his hello until after he shook the water off of himself like a dog. Hey! Marinette threw her hands up in front of her as the droplets forced her back. I thought cats were more refined than that. I'm not the princess sloshing plant water on the passers-by below, Cat teased still shaking his head violently in an attempt to land the last few flecks of water on her. It wasn't meant for you, she confessed. Oh? Cat leaned in closer, balancing his weight on the baton that brought him to the patio. He didn't mean to draw so near, but they were already close to begin with, and if he didn't redirect his attention, he'd be hyper-aware of her breath on his cheeks. Those kids were harassing that boy, so I meant to, well, accidentally slosh them with water. Until this black knight appeared? Until an alley cat got in the way? Her response came with a smirk, arms crossed with her weight on her back leg as she looked up at him. Sighing. Cat admitted defeat and took a step back, knowing it wouldn't be natural to keep his face near hers. If this were a storybook, that would be a great way for the romantic lead to meet their partner, he said, eyebrows wiggling. You never stop, do you, kitty? He smiled in response, but it was more of a self-smoothing smile. There were times she reminded him of Ladybug, but he couldn't quite pin it. Huh. Must be his type. Regardless, the comment was made of marmalade, bittersweet and nostalgic. Come on, let's dry you off inside, Marinette said, opening the doorway for him. They tumbled inside, Cat's foot slipping on the bottom step and crashing both of them into her desk. Besides the obvious ouch that ensued, a box had flipped over and out came pictures of him. 
well, pictures of Adrian. He felt his face reddening for some reason as Marinette scrambled over his fallen body in an attempt to hide the photos, clipped from magazines and centerfolds. Sorry? Cat picked himself up before grabbing a few photos and handing them to her. You saw it? Nothing! She hissed, stuffing the pictures back into the box and sliding it under her desk. Uh, yeah. Copy that. Cat excused himself to the restroom, trying not to take note of why she was so embarrassed. Locking the door and looking at himself in the mirror, Cat realized his cheeks were the same color hers had been. Huh. Why should he be so embarrassed? He was a model. Of course girls had photos of him. But this was Marinette. Marinette who saw him at school time and time again. Why did she need so many photos? He didn't get it, but was somehow embarrassed or perhaps pleased? Marinette spent so much time looking at him. Well, that wasn't the best way to phrase it. But most girls keep boxes of photos of boys because they idolize them, right? Yeah, it was because he was an idol. And she wanted to be a fashion designer. Yeah. Oh, who was he kidding? If it was about fashion, she'd have boxes of runway dresses and famous designer magazines, right? So then why... Was he her idol crush? No. No, no, no. Was that why she was so heartbroken hearing he had a girlfriend? Cat's face burned at the realization. He was wrong, though, right? Oh, Camembert. It wasn't possible, right? She didn't like him, did she? This was horrible. If she liked Adrian, then he had no chance because he couldn't date her then. His father would never be okay with it. He already had a girlfriend, and... And he liked how she treated Cat Noir better than Adrian. Cat sat on the toilet, top down, in defeat. Regardless of if he was the subject of her affection, it didn't matter. He couldn't win, even against himself. Wow. Kind of a Debbie Downer thought, huh? His thoughts left him embarrassed in a way he couldn't articulate. It wasn't like a I messed up embarrassment. It felt like his entire being wasn't an embarrassment. It felt like the time he read Taylor Swift's poem, Why She Disappeared, when she stated, Whatever you say, it is not right. Whatever you do, it is not enough. He never felt like enough, unless he was here. But he was here, and didn't feel like enough. So now what? Now what? Chapter 15 Marinette Dupeng Cheng Marinette couldn't believe she'd been so careless. What if Cat thought she was a stalker? Thankfully, he'd excused himself to the restroom so she had time to compose herself but he'd seen the remnants of her Adrian shrine. How embarrassing. Well, she should also be embarrassed of throwing water on him, but pff, whatever. He was Cat Noir. He'd get over it. She plopped on the chase, her head propped up by her palm as she tried not to think of her feelings for him again. Alia said there was nothing wrong with liking two or more guys at once, but... Marinette had to wonder. But Adrian said he liked someone else. Well, scratch that. He was dating someone else. So she'd packed up her shrine and her heart. But these flutters for Cat Noir, was it because she was heartbroken? Was he the subject of her wandering thoughts because he was in her life so much? Because he was her partner? Or because she was actually developing feelings for him. She couldn't tell. 
Oh, sugar and cookies. This was confusing. Why couldn't he just be her cat? Why did he have to be anything but her cat? Yeah, maybe she would have fallen for him if Adrian wasn't part of the picture. But she'd fallen for Adrian barely knowing anything about him and then discovered him slowly. But Cat? Cat she knew inside and out, except for the parts he kept hidden. He had this guarded facade around her, and even Ladybug, in a way that she hadn't seen anyone else have. Granted, she was still a teenager, but sometimes Cat seemed older than whatever troubles he kept hidden behind the mask. Ugh, now she was romanticizing him. Yuck. Well, not yuck. It would be totally valid if he went on dates and found someone to... Okay, maybe not. That idea irked her. She'd love to say she didn't know why, but she did. It's not as though she wanted him, but she certainly didn't want other girls to want him. It was kind of like if he were her... Oh. Hmm. Marinette cleared her throat and her mind when she heard the bathroom door open, the end of that thought lingering. Brother? Did she really just brother zone him? Wait, no, no, no. No such thing. It just meant there wasn't a spark. But now, looking at him run his fingers through his hair nonchalantly, not realizing she was watching, she couldn't deny it. There was a spark. She just didn't want to feel its warmth. Chapter 16 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir Cat felt his heart palpitate as he realized Marinette snuck a glance at him as he ran his fingers through his hair. He'd struck a pose instinctively, as though her pupils were her camera and the kitchen lights were actually fluorescent. Why? Why did he do that? Oh, Kwamis, he was hopeless. She must think he's silly. Ugh. Not the effect he was going for, that's for sure. What were we doing again? He asked, trying to compose himself. Couldn't tell you, she said, spinning her back to him and grabbing a knife to slice an apple. What, we don't have plans today? Cat tried to change the tone of the conversation, confused as to why she clammed up all of a sudden. Apple? She turned and pressed a slice to his mouth, silencing him not from the gesture, but because her fingers grazed his lips. Oh, come on. Couldn't she realize how hard he was trying to not think about kissing her? You know, he caught her hand. If anyone saw us right now, they'd think we were a couple. Without missing a beat, Marinette smushed the apple slice into his face. Save it for Ladybug. Yeah, he definitely had a thing for girls like Ladybug. Except, well, Marinette wasn't like Ladybug. Actually, Marinette wasn't like this normally. In the two years he'd known her, she'd been the girl always tripping up words unless it came down to something important. She was a great leader when she needed to be, but not always when she had to be. He liked the side of herself she showed to Cat Noir, but he couldn't figure out why Marinette acted like, well, Marinette with everyone else. It was confusing. I should at least get a date if you're forcing dinner on me, Cat said, continuing the banter. A flash of light interrupted the space between them, kicking Cat's superhero instincts into overdrive. He tackled Marinette to the floor, sheltering her with his body, before popping up and assessing the situation. Akuma victim. Got it. 
scooping Marinette up as she protested. Cat jogged down the stairs and into the street, looking for the best place to store her. Where would she be least likely to get hurt? Buildings were crashing left and right. Were there any safe enough to stand up to... Cat looked up to see the victim. A Gundam-looking robot? Where could he protect her from that? The subway? Yes, the subway! The subway was underground and built to withstand that kind of pressure. Ignoring Marinette's fists pounding on his chest and deaf to her words, he raced toward the entrance, only to be met by a robotic metal foot. Okay, not the subway. Got it. Put me down, cat! He nearly dropped Marinette with the resistive tension she gave by locking her elbows. No. Ladybug wasn't here yet, so he couldn't risk leaving Marinette alone. Where could she be safe besides with him? Wait, that's it. She can just stay with him. Grabbing his baton, Cat adjusted his grip on her and made his way to the Gundam's shoulder to see the pilot inside. Okay, 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 okay. He dragged her to a rooftop, despite her protests. Come on, Cat, think. Stay behind me. He grunted, stepping back into a fighting stance like a black knight for his princess. Just who is it that needs protecting? The voice was smug, and Cat whipped around to see Ladybug smirking at him. Ladybug? Where's... He looked around frantically. Where did Marinette go? He needed to protect her. She's safe, Cat. She's a smart girl. Smart enough for me to trust her with the miraculous, that is. Is that what you did? Cat was nearly pleading with her to know. You you gave her a miraculous. Then she'll be safe, right? You know, magical spandex and all that? What's going on, kitty? You got a crush on the girl next door or something? Cat took a few steps back and snapped his mouth closed, clinging his baton to his chest. So, uh, so that, he cleared his throat, so that Akuma sure is big, huh? Ladybug laughed and took a step toward him. Yeah, because you're always losing your cat toys. He could tell it was a joke, but he didn't get it. Ugh, whatever. Akuma. Akuma time. Time to fight an Akuma. The Akuma's here, and it's his job to fight it. Don't worry about Marinette. Ladybug said she'd be fine. Don't worry about Marinette. Don't worry about Marinette. Don't worry about... Cat took a metallic fist to the chin without warning, spiraling him out of his thoughts and into a lamppost. Wait, what? Before Cat had the chance to groan, Ladybug scooped him up and sprinted them away, hiding behind a dumpster to assess him. Cat! She hissed. For the love of all that is sweet, where is your head today? Sorry, sorry. Cat knew he'd messed up. The hit knocked some sense into me. Let's go. He couldn't protect Marinette if he couldn't even protect himself. The fastest way to make sure she was safe is to take down the Akuma and search for her after the lucky charm. He had to wonder, as he fought against the Akuma alongside Ladybug, if the deities who created the Kwame were looking down on him now. Would they be proud of him? Or embarrassed? He was merely a boy who always seemed to have his tail caught in a crush. Cataclysm! There we go. The cockpit was open, the victim inside staring wide-eyed as Ladybug threw her lucky charm, a lit match, inside. It caught fire on the carpet, which turned out to be a playmat, and out flew the Akuma. Bye-bye, little butterfly, she said. It's time to de-evilize! Cat took a moment to take her in. Youth and beauty and confidence wrapped up in red and speckled with dots. He lifted his fist, not bothering to mutter his usual words. Pound it, Ladybug said, 
nearly laughing before her face fell. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. He shook his head. But you're right. About? Marinette. I do have a crush. She didn't respond verbally. Her eyebrows shot toward the sky and she covered her mouth, taking a few steps back before lowering her gaze. Oh. It's not like you like me or anything, right? So, I'm not hurting you by liking somebody else. Right? Right. Her voice sounded strange, but she quickly tapped her earlobe as the earrings beeped. Well, uh, good luck, cat. Thanks. I'm gonna go find her. I bet she probably ran back home. She grabbed her yo-yo and exchanged one more glance, biting her lower lip. Good luck. Her wish came out softer than he was used to hearing her voice as, and it was nearly unsettling. Ugh, he didn't have time to worry about it right now. Marinette was probably fuming over how he treated her. With a sigh, Cat Noir turned southward. Cat Noir turned southward and began trotting across the rooftops toward the Dupang Chang Bakery. It was time to go home. Chapter 17 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette didn't know what to do. Well, she did because there were multiple options and she had to do something. But she didn't know which choice she should make because both were hard. So I have to cut him out, right? Marinette asked, knowing it would be the less painful option of the two. But what if he gets close to someone else? Wouldn't the same thing happen all over again then? Tiki asked, propped upright on the desk. She sighed, knowing the truth about it. Yeah, what happened isn't okay. If he can't be objective, then... She didn't want to finish the sentence. Then he can't have a miraculous? The words tugged on Marinette's ears, weighing her down as she crumpled into her chair in defeat. Then he can't have a miraculous, she echoed. A thump came from the rooftop, signaling Kat's return. As the footsteps grew louder, Marinette debated transforming and waiting for him as Ladybug, but decided against it. No. She didn't want her bedroom to remind her of when she broke Cat Noir's heart by taking away his miraculous. What's wrong? She hadn't noticed Cat come into the room, much less stare at her. Thankfully, Tiki hid herself, else this would make for an even harder conversation. Well, no. Not tonight. She'd give him one more night. Cat Noir could call this place home for one more night. Chapter 18 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Cat trotted down the boulevard, wondering what Ladybug wanted to talk about. She wasn't going to ask him out, right? There was no way, as much as he wanted to entertain the idea. Sure, he liked Marinette, but Ladybug would always be his first love and crutch. He wasn't sure if he'd ever be able to say no to her if she wanted to start dating. <laughs> Dream on. As easy as it was to daydream of Ladybug asking him out, she probably wanted to talk about the latest Akuma fight or something. Hello, my lady, he sang, opening the cafe door with a jingle and sliding into a seat across from her. It was before the cafe opened, so there were plenty of seats and no wandering ears. Perks of saving the owner had its place in time. That's for sure. 
Then again, it was rare for Ladybug to take up such an offer. You look chipper. Anything happen with that girl of yours? Ladybug looked glum as she said it, despite her raised chin. Was she jealous? Nah. So, what's up? What is the catbug team talking about today? He asked, his palms on the table. Cat, your actions at the last Akuma fight, Ladybug said, her eyes lost in recollection. Yeah? What about it? Pretty dope, right? They give me pause as to whether or not you should keep your miraculous. She held his gaze as she said it, somehow worse than looking away. No. She wasn't serious. This was a joke, right? Right? Just a bad joke. Yeah. My lady, I think you need to leave the humor to me. Cat was barely able to keep the quiver out of his voice. Regardless of how he tried to comfort himself, he knew Ladybug was serious. I'm sorry, Cat, but you can't put one person above the other. We could have finished that fight a lot sooner if you hadn't lost your marbles over that marionette girl. Cat felt something dark and bitter twisting in his stomach. No. No, she wasn't blaming him for this. No. Nuh-uh. As opposed to you and that aggressed boy? She looked as shocked as he felt when the words came out. Excuse me? He couldn't pin her tone. Instead, he huffed and stood up. I think we're done here. What? No, Cat, we aren't. Come back here. Fighting the urge to ball his fists, Cat turned around for one last glance, a smirk painted on his face. You judge based on what? One bad day? One misstep? As if you haven't taken strides for certain individuals. He clicked his tongue, trying to calm down. We're a team, Ladybug. Me and you. I'd rather you talk to me. Help me change and improve instead of getting ahead in your own mind. And yet here you are, ready to storm out. Tension sparked as they made eye contact. Sighing... Cat plopped back in the chair. Don't do this to me, LB. Bad luck or not, I'm a great partner. As much as I don't want to start over with someone new, I'm going to need the ring back. Cat Noir had never heard words so cruel. Ladybug, he began. There will always be another Marinette Dupang Chang for you. Won't there? He scoffed, looking at her with his mouth open. This isn't you. Cat gave her a once-over, begging the universe to show him she was a fake. You've abused your ring, Cat. What? Wasn't this about him taking extra measures to protect Marinette? If you wanted to get close to this Marinette girl... Why not do it without the mask? You're supposed to protect Paris, not take advantage of anonymity. Her words were sharp, leaving his heart shredded. But what hurt most is the accuracy. She was right. He wasn't supposed to use the miraculous like this, but... But... Cat hung his head. Worried over if he sighed, it would turn to tears. We had a good run, he admitted, unsure of how much time passed. We did. Her voice was soft. Too soft. She didn't want to do this. He'd ruined it. I'd like to say goodbye to her. Like this. 
I'll let her know. All this time I wanted to know who you were. I didn't think you'd learn first. The guilt was written across Ladybug's face as she scratched behind her earlobe. I'll always love you, Cat. Remember that. Just don't love the next guy as much as me, all right? He gave a wink, but it lacked his usual charm. Deaf to her sorry laugh, Cat mumbled to himself. Sliding off his silver ring, Adrian snuck a glance at Ladybug to see her reaction, but her eyes were closed. How fitting. Even at the end of it all, she didn't want to know who he was. There'd be no way for her to find him after this. Oh, what a crushing and lonely thought. He stood up and rounded the corner, placing a hand on the tabletop for support as he leaned in. I'll always love you, Ladybug, he whispered, pressing a kiss to her forehead. Adrian felt a shiver pass through her before pulling away. Glancing up, he saw Plague stare at him from across the table. You too, Plague. We had a good run. He couldn't bear to stay and hear the Kwame's response. A dramatic contradiction to the events inside, Adrian stepped outside to a sunlit street. The pavement warmed and flowers blooming. Not how he pictured his last day as a superhero, but you never know. Maybe Ladybug would seek him, Adrian, out with another miraculous someday down the line. He had to have hope, after all because the emotions hiding behind his heart were too insufferable to unbox. And so, just as suddenly as Adrian's superhero adventure began, it ended. Chapter 19 Adrian Aggressed Adrian picked at his food glancing up on occasion to see his father flick a page of his newspaper over or harumph at whatever article he chose to read. Never mind his son, heartbroken, or the food in front of him. Clearly, reading the news was more important. Setting down his fork, Adrian made a motion to stand up and excuse himself. You've hardly touched your food, Adrian, Gabriel said not missing a beat. Adrian raised his eyebrows. He hadn't even looked up. Sorry, I'm just not feeling it today. Is your body unwell? No, but... You can't keep your mind healthy if you don't feed it, both in flex and in food. Yes, father. When did he become a self-help magazine? As though he could sense the snarky thought, Gabriel set down his newspaper and interlaced his fingers, resting his forearms on the table. Is it your heart or your work? Adrian's eyebrows couldn't shoot any higher, so instead he blinked multiple times before stammering a response. Uh, it's, uh, it's... It, it's both. It's not as though he could say, Hey, Dad, I'm Cat Noir, but Ladybug asked for my miraculous back, and so not only did I lose my job, that was the best stress relief in the world, but also I made a friend, and I can't visit her without it coming off as a weird visit, and oh yeah, her asking for the ring back was the single most hurtful thing anyone has ever done, and it came from my beloved partner, who I trust more than anyone in the world, and also my annoying Kwame is gone, and I can't do anything but miss him despite his antics. Yeah, totally couldn't say that, especially not with finger guns. Not used to having a girlfriend, I take it? Gabriel turned his attention to an avocado slice on his plate. Uh, sure. Don't tell me you fell for her. No. Good. That would be a fool's mistake. Wow. This was the most they'd spoken in weeks. 
I'll be all right. I'll get a pick-me-up for a cheat day. Cheat meal, his father corrected. More like a cheat snack. Good. Gabriel narrowed his eyes at an article before rolling them to the next opinion piece. What do you have in mind? Uh Uh-huh. Adrian had stood up, ready to retreat to his room. The cheat snack. Ah, he blanked. Hibiscus lemonade? It's the first thing that came to mind. His father set the paper down, holding his gaze for a moment. Hibiscus lemonade. Yeah, it's lemonade, but you... I know what it is. His father stood up abruptly. You're dismissed. Go to your room. Adrian sighed, disgruntled, but with no alternative. Making his way to his bedroom, he debated if he should spend the day learning characters or practicing piano. As fun as they could be, both seemed lackluster to a post-superhero. Well, the depression hadn't kicked in all the way yet. He was waiting for the next Akuma fight. That's when the pain would start. That's when you'd see Ladybug and Cat Noir, and both of them would be painful for different reasons. All he could do is hope she didn't flick the new guy's bell. Okay, Chinese characters it is. Practicing the stroke order for headphones, Adrian heard a knock at his door and looked up to see his father holding a drink carrier. Oh, he must have brought him something to drink. Cool. Wait. Adrian looked up a second time, straightening his posture. Father brought the drink? What's that? Your mother's favorite. Oh. Adrian didn't know how to process the news. What is? The lemonade you wanted. You haven't ordered any, correct? No, I was going to make some. His father scoffed, but maybe it was a laugh? Adrian couldn't tell. You remind me a lot of your mother sometimes, you know that? I do? He does? Wait, his mom liked lemonade? Once I picked her hibiscus flower from a cafe we walked by, and she lectured me on flower stealing, then used it to make me the lemonade. I ended up staining the countertop in her apartment. Adrian leaned in, mouth slightly open as he watched his father adjust his stature. His dad? In a kitchen? Making lemonade? We opted to only order it at cafes after that, Gabriel continued. Was it that bad? I also managed to get it on the dress I made her specifically for that date. You made Mom a dress? This was news to him. He knew she used to model for him, but was still somehow surprised. She's why I started designing, Adrian. What? Now this was news. He'd known Mom was his muse, but this? When she'd finally agreed to go on a stroll with me, Gabriel continued, we passed a store with a gorgeous white dress in the window. It had far too many zeros on it, if you know what I mean. But I was determined to get it for her, so I told one of my good friends I'd paint their apartment if they helped me make the dress. Adrian couldn't believe it. He'd learned more about mom and father in the last two minutes than he had in the last two years. I didn't know that. There's a lot you don't know about your mother and I. Gabriel stepped into the bedroom and set the drink carrier on his desk, taking a plastic tumbler out for himself before sitting on the bed. So, 
This is mom's favorite drink? He sighed, looking at the red-tinted lemonade. Yes. Yes, it is. Cool. Adrian took the remaining tumbler and took a sip. It was sweeter than the one he'd made with Marinette, but that was all right. This was probably from the cafe mom and dad used to go to together. Don't forget to practice for the competition, Gabriel said, standing up and eyeing the work on the desk. I'm studying for the HSK right now. Good. I'd expect nothing less. Gabriel left without so much as a goodbye, leaving Adrian with a touch of brain freeze from the drink and pondering if he'd dare get his hopes up for the relationship between himself and his father. Nah. Hey, Plague, he began, not thinking before he spoke to his empty room. Yeah. An empty room. There was no one he could talk to about the absurdity of what just happened, and that left Adrian feeling cold and estranged from his own sense of self. Oh, how he wished he could talk to Marinette right now. He glanced at his phone, debating what to do. You know what? Why not? Adrian grabbed it and opened his messenger app, sending her a Pusheen sticker to open the conversation. He could either wallow in the depths of despair or try to make a new connection with people in his life. He may have lost his miraculous, but he found a new beginning. This was the start of Adrian Acrest trying to live his best life. Chapter 20 Marinette Dupang Chang He still hasn't come, Tiki. Marinette laid, spread eagle, on her bed, staring at the ceiling. It was her fault. This was her fault. She shouldn't have been so rash in her decision. And she couldn't get him back. The last three days were something out of a fever dream. Thankfully, there hadn't been a Nakuma, because she wouldn't know what to do without Cat. He was so essential. Marinette, Tiki began. Sugar and cookies, she had jumped the gun, and as a hypocrite, no less. It's not like she hadn't used the miraculous for personal gain. So why did she do it? Why would she abandon her best friend like that? And why hadn't he come back? Marinette curled up, lonely and blanketed in guilt, and turned the jagged stone song up. Marinette, look out! It was Tiki. Peeking her eyes open to the contrasting daylight, she saw an akuma fluttering around the room. No, nuh-uh, not today. Tiki, she began, throwing herself off the bed and at the little evildoer. A quick transformation and target acquisition later, the butterfly was taken care of. That was a close one! Tiki exclaimed, shaking off the excess light particles after Ladybug detransformed back into Marinette. You need to be more careful! Honestly? Marinette sighed, plopping onto the chase. I'm surprised he hasn't been akumatized yet. He's a strong boy, Mare. She stayed quiet for a moment. Not strong enough to not be Cat Long. Well, that was... Tiki trailed off. Do you know something I don't know? I didn't say anything! You know, it's funny. In that timeline, he knew I was Marinette. Me. Ladybug. She rolled onto her side. I can't believe I told him. Well... Tiki began again. I mean, what if that's part of why he got akumatized in the first place? Marinette, that's... Ugh, 
Even having superpowers won't save me from being a klutz. Marinette groaned, rolling onto her stomach to scream into the cushion. You're one of the best ladybugs I've seen, Marinette, Tiki said, making herself at home on her shoulder. Until three days ago, you mean. You had your reasons, and I didn't fight you on them. I'm so she yelled into the fabric. Ugh, she didn't want this. She didn't want any of this. Marinette wished she could turn back time and undo this week. But she couldn't. Reaching to the chain hanging around her neck, Marinette traced the links down to where the Cat Noir ring hung and squeezed. Oh. Cat Noir, she'd failed you, didn't she? Plague? She tried again, throwing her gaze to the small tent that Kwame set up on her desk. He'd refused to speak with her over the last few days, and she couldn't blame him. Trying again, Marinette grabbed a piece of camembert and put it in front of the fabric abode. An arm shot out, sweeping the cheese inside with a black blur, but no verbal communication. Yeah, okay. Sounds about right. Plag, I'd like to give the ring back to your owner. Glowing green eyes peeked through the mouth of the tent, narrowing in suspicion when they acquired her in their line of sight. Like you said... You're a hypocrite, Plague said, and you're bribing me with cheese. Is it working? Working? Yes, but you're nowhere near the amount I need. Sigh. How did Cat afford to feed this bottomless pit? She'd used all of her allowance and had to dip into her savings, but even that wouldn't last long at this rate. Tiki, she asked, turning to her confidant. You know who he is. Could you take me to him? We've been over this, Marinette. Tiki shook her head. It's not my place to reveal the identity of another miraculous holder. But I'm the guardian. Even so, you wouldn't want me to tell Cat your identity if something were to happen, would you? Marinette knew she was right, but still hated it. Curse her sense of responsibility. The only way she'd find out Cat's identity was through Plague, but she might go bankrupt first. All she could do was hope he didn't get akumatized from this. That, and find another cat noir in the meantime. Yeah, no one would be as good as he would be, but she'd have to make do. How did Master Fu choose them, anyway? Surely there was some kind of grandeur test he gave them, or he asked the cosmos or something. She pulled out the handkerchief Cat was secretly working on. Home is where Marin was all it said so far, a work in progress yet to be finished in all its glory. Home is where she is, huh? Then why hadn't he come to see her? Or reach out in a different way? Looks like she wasn't the only hypocrite in their relationship. If she was his home, he would have contacted her. Marinette felt her phone buzz in her back pocket and slid it out to see another Pusheen sticker, this one laugh-crying, and a joke from Adrian. He'd turned her latest response into a pun. She smiled at it, but was too in mourning over Cat Noir for it to give her butterflies. Besides, he had a girlfriend anyway. Oh, foolish girl. Only she could go back in time. Even Cat could see her hypocrisy. He'd called her out on giving Adrian special treatment. She hadn't realized she'd been so oblivious. Oh, how she yearned for comfort. 
Maybe she could pull a cat noir and visit one of her friends as Ladybug to take her mind off things. But who? Alia? Nah, too many interview questions. Definitely not Chloe, either. She's not a friend, that's for sure. Adrian, perhaps? Nah, he has a girlfriend. Besides, the last time she stopped by unannounced, it triggered a timeline that ended in Cat Blanc. Nino? Yeah, she could always swing by Nino. Wait, no, he's with Alia right now. But wait, there was no more Cat Noir, so her visiting Adrian wouldn't trigger the akumatization, right? Right, she could visit Adrian. No, he's probably busy, and she didn't want to be that kind of selfish. Adrian's the kind of guy who would feel bad about not being available if she swung by. Julica? Rose? Mylene? Kagami? Marinette didn't know what to do anymore. Her head was swirling, and she didn't know how to make it stop. That's all she wanted. She wanted these tormenting, swirling thoughts to stop. She thought about every minute detail over and over and over again, and all she wanted was for the circle to stop. Let her get off this torture of a ride. Throwing her pillow over her head, Marinette screamed. It wasn't a release of any kind, because she didn't let it be loud enough for her parents to hear. She messed up. She messed up. She messed up. Oh, sugar and cookies, she messed up. Could she ever get forgiveness? Could she ever earn forgiveness? Marinette didn't know. Chapter 21 Adrian Agrest Adrian stared at his phone and sighed, knowing he shouldn't be upset. Sure, he and Marinette were friends, but it wasn't the same dynamic he shared with her as Cat Noir. Their conversation thus far was dry. So dry, in fact, he found himself simply not replying at times. He was also curious if Paris was truly Akuma-free for five days, or if Ladybug and her new Cat Noir took care of it discreetly. Ugh, a new Cat Noir. He knew Plague wasn't allowed to bring him the ring back, because he was formally removed from being his master. The only way to get Plague, and his ring, back was to physically get his hands on him. It. Whatever. Kwamis can't bring their rings to a new owner. They can only bring it back to them. Dumb rules. He wouldn't be surprised if Plague tried to bring him the ring already and got in trouble for it. But did he want to be Cat again? It should seem obvious that he'd want to, the superhero-loving boy he was. It was like being in some shonen anime, and what healthy-minded guy could pass up that? And yet, despite the heartbreak and the lack of freedom... The last four days had been the most peaceful ones he'd had in, what, a year? A year and a half? His chronic fatigue was nearly gone, and he wasn't constantly lying to his friends and father. He didn't worry about his homework being done, and he didn't have to skimp on practice. He felt... normal. And not pre-miraculous normal. Adrian felt like any other guy, and it felt good. Sure, he wasn't allowed to have friends over, but he'd managed to go over to Nino's place just last night after his homework and practice was done. It's not like he had chores to do or anything. Was he beat up from what Ladybug did? Yeah, of course. But this golden hour in his room where he didn't have to go anywhere or do anything except take in the smell of his freshly washed comforter, bathed in rich light, was something he didn't want to trade away. The only thing that would make it better would be if he was curled up with the person he liked, although there is comfort in solitude. Closing his eyes for a late afternoon nap, Adrian fell asleep in a great mood. 
It was a beautiful golden hour for the sunshine boy. But alas, all golden hours fade, be it into daylight or into night dark. Chapter 22 Marinette stared at the Eiffel Tower, her eyebrows furrowed as she sighed. This was it. This was the moment she'd spent the last six days dreading. Come on, Tiki, she said, looking at the Akuma victim. Spots on. She had six days and hadn't come up with a new cat noir. She couldn't send Plag home, either, because the title of Cat Noir was stripped from his former owner, the same way she couldn't send tricks to Alia or ways to Nino. Come on, she told herself. We've got some jewelry to deliver. A half hour and what looked like a catastrophe later, Rena, Rouge, and Carapace were doing their best to clear civilians from the falling meteors and assist Ladybug. But it was tough. So tough. In fact, they continued for another three hours without making headway. Morale was low between the three of them, and Rena kept cursing about a dumb cat while Carapace looked worried. When the Stargazer turned their attention toward the heart of downtown, Ladybug knew she was in trouble. She needed Cat. She wasn't in sync, even with herself, and needed him there even if he didn't do anything. She also needed him because there was no way she could destroy the telescope by herself. That, or use the cataclysm on the floating platform. Hark. <sighs> Dumb bug. She'd been so rash. She saw Rena Rouge go flying from the corner of her eye and winced. Sorry, Alia. A meteor crashed into the building above her, taking her out of her wallowing regret as she heard screams from the people inside. She had to... Wait. No. Was she trapped? Ladybug observed her new surroundings, crouched under a building propped at 45 degrees above her. This complicated things. Ladybug! She felt a hand on her shoulder. Cat? Turning, her upticked heartbeat sighed. Nope. Adrian. What are you doing here? You need to get to safety! She hissed. A miraculous! What? Give me a miraculous! I can help! Ladybug hesitated, but there was no time. She'd messed up so much this week. All she could do was hope this wasn't another mistake as she handed him her best friend's ring. Adrian Agrest, this, she began, but as soon as his fingers wrapped around the box, he took off running. Um, okay? Well, at least she knew where he lived. Please don't betray her trust, Adrian. Or desperation. She wasn't sure which one led her to give it to him, but there was no time to debate. The building slipped above her, accompanied by screams, to about 35 degrees. Yikes! She needed to get out of here, or she'd be a spotted pancake. Slipping out of the debris in time to see another meteor shower aimed for her, Ladybug rolled out of the way and into a pair of arms? You need to get out of here, she yelled. It's not safe. And here I thought you'd ask for my help. Ladybug looked up at the voice, startled by the familiarity. It was Cat, Cat Noir, and not Adrian as Cat Noir, but the real cat, her cat. Adrian gave you the miraculous? Adrian knew who he was? However it happened, she was grateful. Cat opened his mouth, wearing an expression that would match a confused nanny watching their kid dig for horse bones when they talked about dinosaurs all day. Yeah, Adrian got the miraculous, he said. 
turning his attention to the stargazer. Where do you want me? The warmth of his hand on her shoulder was a distraction she didn't need at this moment. Don't fall behind, she said, advancing to her prey. The stargazer had tortured the city enough. Now it was time to stop it. True to his abilities, Cat Noir used his cataclysm and she used her lucky charm, ending the fight in less than three minutes. Ladybug threw a glance at him, not bothering to hide the apology on her face, and he laughed. Pound it, he said, sticking out his fist as his legs held his victory stance. Ladybug gently bumped her fist against his, lingering there for a moment until he withdrew, fingering his ring. What are you doing? she asked. You want this back, don't you? It's not mine to keep. The words cut her more than any dagger could. Keep it. She couldn't hold eye contact. I was wrong, and rash, and a hypocrite. She heard him take a step toward her and hesitate. Thanks, LB. No problem. I'll be more careful in the future. Sure. Okay, then. He left as her earrings beeped, signaling the swift journey she needed to take out of sight. Collapsing on her bed just in time, Marinette screamed into her pillow, not bothering to look around the room. Was she happy her cat had the miraculous back? Yes, of course! But, oh, what chaos had ensued without her, and it was her fault. Kicking her legs as she screamed again, Marinette couldn't help but let the last week out into her pillow. She was embarrassed. She was ashamed. She felt foolish. She couldn't stand the consequences of her actions. And she had to have a classmate deliver the miraculous for her? Because she couldn't find a replacement on her own because of what? Pride? She screamed again, foregoing the pillow this time. I'm such a hypocrite! She yelled to the world, knowing only Tiki would hear her. Is this a bad time? Feeling her heart drop to her stomach, Marinette recognized the voice in the room. Flipping herself upright, she stared at its owner. Cat Noir was standing in the middle of her bedroom, staring right at her. Chapter 23 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette stared at Cat Noir, frozen mid-scream pose and trying to figure out how long he'd been there. Whether it only been the last ten seconds or the moment she entered, both were bad news. So instead, she played it off the only way she could. Marinette hopped to the floor, pressed both hands to his cheeks until his lips puckered out like a fish, and sucked in a breath. Where have you been? She nearly yelled, knowing the answer. You can't just fall off the face of the earth like that for a week without a word. I uh, actually uh, can't ask you on a date, Cat replied, his face still squished between her hands. Even if you... What? That wasn't the answer she expected. He took her hands in his and smiled as he removed them. A date. You and me. Formally. A date? With me? I meant it when I said home is where you are, Marinette. Sure, my life this past week wasn't bad without you, but I don't want some all-powerful, cocaine-state-inducing relationship. I'm a person in my own right, but... I'd rather be a person with you. Heartfelt proclamations weren't on the list of outcomes she'd expected when she jumped off the bed. 
I thought you were in love with Ladybug, she said, emphasizing it with a sing-song voice. I think I used the word love without realizing the weight it carries. And yes, I will always love her, but I like you. I want to go on a date with you. If only he knew they were one and the same. Would he still ask for a date then? If he knew she was the one who so harshly took his identity from him? What? Absence makes the heart grow fonder? Something like that. He raised her fingertips to his lips, hovering there as he peeked upward for eye contact. She took her hand back before he could do anything more, hot with anticipation. Is what I'm wearing appropriate? Sure. He took her hand back and led her downstairs. If it weren't daylight, he added, I would have taken you by rooftop. Where are we going? It's hot outside, Mare. Ice cream, of course. From Andre? Didn't he take this week off for a vacation? From the cheese store. T.S. opened an ice cream counter. An ice cream store inside a cheese store? Uh, Well, stranger things have happened in Paris. He led her down the block and into the farmhouse-style cheese store, nodding to two tables with chairs in the back. May I interest you in a hot sandwich first, little lady? Little lady. Not my lady. Marinette smiled to herself. Cute. That was a cute name. Uh, prosciutto and ham? She asked, unsure what they offered. Perfect. He ran to the counter and talked to a guy who seemed extra friendly to him, judging by the way they exchanged jokes, and stood talking as the sandwiches cooked. Five or so minutes later, he trotted back, their food in hand as he tried to balance bottles of orange juice in the cradle of his arm. You got it? she asked, reaching out to help him put their meal on the table. Yeah, hope you don't mind me ordering two for myself. I get quite hungry after Akuma fights. Marinette nodded, understanding more than he knew. Don't worry, I can probably out-eat you. Is that a challenge? He looked her dead in the eye as he bit into his sandwich. The red sauce of his meatball sub bled over the bread. A mouth-watering sight. Loser pays? Hey, Leon! Cat called out. Can we get another for the lady? The worker gave a thumbs up and Cat proceeded to hunker down his food, leaving Marinette with eyebrows raised before she realized they were already competing. Okay. Two can play at that game. Just make sure I don't need to beat your ribcage, too. Huh? I'm telling you not to choke, she said, her mouth full of sandwich. She had to take a drink to help it down. By the time he was on his fourth sandwich, she was finishing her second, wondering how the boy could scarf down so many carbs at once, but wasn't giving in just yet. She ordered a third with avocado in it this time, and burped herself as she waited. Truthfully, she didn't think she could finish another, much less go for a fourth one, but she wanted the appearance of competition, at least. Granted, one sandwich would be more than enough had she not just finished an Akuma fight. I guess I'm paying, Marinette burped, patting her now bloated stomach. He'd managed to hunger down five sandwiches. Did this boy not eat or something? For the ice cream, yeah. The ice cream? Don't tell me you didn't save room. I always have room, she shot back. Good. Cat pointed to the TS brand ice cream parlor through a glass door. What? Marinette hadn't realized the shop was connected to another. Patting her stomach, she got up and held the door for him, ignoring the joke he made before following him in. 
happy to hear the doorbell chime. He ended up getting a bowl while she got a waffle cone, and they sat on the outside patio, leaning over the wooden table provided as they talked like no time passed. Marinette did her best to ignore the gnawing guilt in her stomach as she ate her ice cream, but it felt like she would simply burst if she didn't confess. No, Marinette, that's why there are rules to prevent blurb-ups like yours. How much screaming did you hear? She asked, unable to stop herself. Hopefully he didn't say all of it or something like that. Her heart stopped when she realized that if he had heard all of it, then he might have seen her transform from Ladybug to Marinette. No! Oh, no! The last thing she wanted was the guy she liked hating her for being a hypocrite. Something about a hydro kid? You yelled as I entered the room. Kind of took me off guard, to be honest. Kat took another bite of ice cream as she sighed in relief. Good. Then he didn't know she was Ladybug. It's nothing, she said, shrugging it off. Glad you're safe after an Akuma like that. He chuckled to himself. Thanks. But seriously, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Ladybug had my miraculous this week. Marinette would have choked had she been eating anything other than ice cream. Oh? Yeah, but she gave it back to me, so it's all good. She had someone deliver it to you? He wrinkled his forehead and turned to look at her. No? She gave it to me herself. I mean, like... She tried to think of a way to make her sound less suspicious. You know how you told me she sends you to give Carapace or Queen Bee their miraculous sometimes? She gave it back to me face to face. His attention was back on his ice cream, almost nonchalant. No. No. No, she'd given his miraculous to Adrian out of desperation. In fact, Adrian asked for the miraculous, so... So... Something clicked in her brain, freezing like the after effects of eating ice cream. Ladybug gave the miraculous to Adrian. Cat said she gave it directly to him. Oh. Chapter 24 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Cat snuck another silent glance at Marinette, who seemed more occupied with her thoughts than she was with spending time with him. Had this date been a bust after all? He was bad at this. He should have consoled Alia first, and not just because she's Marinette's best friend. Well, one of her best friends. He secretly hoped she thought of him as a best friend, too. It'd be cool if she started thinking of him as a potential boyfriend, too. As the silence grew heavier with each step they took toward her home, Cat felt the prickle of sweat under his armpits and on the back of his collar. Yikes. Perhaps this was a bad idea. He'd wolfed down five sandwiches in front of her like a dog. He couldn't blame her if she lost interest. But surely she wouldn't hold that against him. Right? Right? Are you down for a Switch game, or... Cat began, feeling bad about trying to invite himself in, but knowing he didn't want to end things here for the day. You're Adrian Agrest! Marinette blurted out keeping her eyes forward and slapping a hand over her mouth. I mean, ah! Uh... She slid her other hand out from his to cover her eyes. She figured it out? Before Ladybug did? That's impressive. 
Um, okay. It was the only response he could come up with. Yep, that was him. Adrian Agrest, Mast Edition. Sorry, sorry, I know I shouldn't know. And, well, me being me, I just had to say it. Ugh, sorry, I sh shouldn't have said anything. I... Marinette rambled, clearly embarrassed for herself. But her words faded out as he realized the weight of them. Marinette knew he was Adrian. That he, Adrian, tried to be her friend by playing dress-up. That he, Adrian, had a girlfriend but still asked her on a date. That he, Adrian, could only send dry text when she talked to him over the last week. That he, Adrian, was known for a cringe-worthy crush of the century on Ladybug. Oh, Camembert. No wonder she'd been quiet. That girlfriend thing, he said, unable to look at her. That was surely what she was most upset about, right? It's fake. Huh? She looked up at him, then away. Oh, right. You already have a girlfriend. For the publicity. We don't like each other or anything. We're planning a breakup six months down the road. Ah. Ugh, Camembert. This wasn't a good sign. And she hadn't made a move to go upstairs, either. It would be weird for him to go. Sucking air through his teeth, Cat put a hand on her shoulder. So, like, did I earn a second date? Her eyes met his. Adrian Agrest is asking me on a date? Marinette's face was still pink. No! Cat Noir, Charm Boy, and Paris's vigilante hero is. Forget that Adrian kid. I heard he washes his hair way too often, and his dad kind of sucks. She didn't laugh at his remark, leaving him feeling a bit silly and like he should apologize for some reason. I think I need some time to think, Marinette exhaled, leading him to the conclusion he dreaded. Marinette was disappointed he was Adrian Agrest. Yikes. Feeling his heart fall, he wrapped his arms around her, sweeping Marinette into his chest. She lifted hers in surprise, choosing to settle them on the middle of his back gently. Pulling himself away, Cat gave her a modest wink and a pat on the shoulder before taking his leave heartbeat pounding from a different emotion than he was used to feeling when he left the Dupang Chang residence. Cat Noir was scared. Not in the physical sense, of course, but he was scared of losing his relationship with Marinette. After all this, he'd be the fool. But what could he do? Try harder? He didn't want her to think of him as a stalker. No. Despite his yearning, Cat would wait for Marinette to reach out to him. He didn't want to be another creepy guy stereotype. He was fond of saying, milady, after all. Pacing his bedroom floor, Adrian had a one-way conversation with Plague as the Kwame enjoyed some camembert. He was hunkering it down quite impressively. Adrian didn't voice his usual concerns, as Plague must not have had any camembert this past week. A check-in with Natalie came and went, as he insisted he wanted time alone to practice piano, and Adrian found himself bored and overthinking. That seemed to be a common theme when he had a crush nowadays, didn't it? He was tempted to text Marinette, despite his resolution an hour earlier, but thankfully had enough restraint to stop himself from doing so. The last thing he needed was for her not to respond and feel even worse about it. Instead, he plopped on his bed and mindlessly scrolled through social media, letting the hours numb his brain as Plague held an eating contest with himself. 
Adrian also decided to forego dinner. He'd had five sandwiches and was more than stuffed at the cost of showing off. Hopefully it hadn't disgusted her. But he couldn't think about it right now. He'd just keep thinking in circles if he did. What he needed was a plan. Yes, a plan. A plan to woo Marinette. Actually, no. Wooing wasn't his priority. He needed a plan to stay her friend. Yes, a friendship plan. He could worry about romance later. But after a half hour of staring at a blank piece of paper on his bed, Adrian was no further than when he began. Falling onto his back, Adrian grabbed a pillow and screamed, kicking his legs and not caring the paper got crinkled in the process. He didn't scream just once, either. Oh, no. Adrian screamed and rolled, then screamed and rolled. Thank Camembert his bedroom was so big, else he'd have earned a check-in from Natalie. Is this a bad time? Who? Adrian looked up from his pillow, damp from his scream spit, to see Ladybug standing by the couch, showing a toothful smile that looked like it belonged on a pained expression. Great. Now he embarrassed himself in front of Ladybug, too. Hopefully disappointing the girls in his life didn't become a habit. Wait. Ladybug? Adrian bolted upright, face red and clutching the pillow to his chest. Ladybug was here. In his bedroom. Looking at him. She even saw him scream like a lunatic! Oh, Camembert! His only saving grace was that she didn't know he was Cat Noir. He didn't realize she wouldn't put it together, but now he was grateful for it. <laughs> if she knew he was Cat Noir, he'd probably die of embarrassment. Chapter 25 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug Well, there were quite a few ways to go about this, and Ladybug had no idea which was right. She stood in Adrian Agrest's bedroom, which was also Cat Noir's bedroom, if you thought about it for a moment, unsure of what she'd witnessed and how to respond to it. Screaming Adrian? Check. Internally screaming Marinette? Also check. Then again, they were probably screaming for different reasons. I can come back, she said, looking at the window she came in through. No, stay, he said, a little too earnestly. But why? Why should she? And why should he want her to? Ladybug nodded, unsure what else to do but take a seat on the couch as he prattled over. Your room looks the same as ever, she remarked. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, no thanks. Silence ticked back and forth between them, and Ladybug debated if this was the most awkward moment of her life or not. She shouldn't have come. Unsurprisingly, her rash idea was yet another foolish one. Are you here because of... Adrian began, and Ladybug knew what he was trying to say. Don't worry about it. He managed to sneak a glance. You mean it? Don't worry about that marinette girl either. His eyebrows shot up, clearly surprised. You're... Letting me off the hook? You can trust her. She... He cut himself off with a sigh and a face that belonged in a funeral home. She knows I'm... well. I know. He nearly stood up at the comment, letting himself back onto the couch as he buffered. Can I... Adrian fingered the ring on his finger. Don't be late to the next fight, 
okay? Ladybug stood up, taking a moment to give a pat on the back as she did so before striding to the window. When she turned to wave, she saw Adrian clutching his chest with a smile on his face, probably fighting tears. Ladybug couldn't translate what the expression meant, but she felt bad that she'd been the source of what he needed relief from, even if it was a mere visit long. Returning to her home, Ladybug de-transformed and collapsed on her bed, pulling out her phone to text the boy she just left. Yeah, she could text the boy she liked. She could text the boy she liked and actually send the text because for the first time while texting Adrian Agrest in the history of ever, she knew he liked her too. Yeah, Adrian, Cat Noir, liked her back. Chapter 26 Adrian Agrest Had he just received Ladybug's blessing? Adrian couldn't believe it! Slumping back onto the couch, the young superhero couldn't suppress his grin. It almost felt like an ex saying he could date her best friend, even though that wasn't even close to the situation at hand. Yeah. Her blessing. He had her blessing for both the ring and for his relationship with Marinette. That was beyond amazing. It felt like the missing piece from his life pressed in, completing the puzzle he tried to shove answers in while hoping for a pretty picture. Are you just going to stare at the wall like a man who forgot Camembert exists? Or are you going to go out and get me some? Ah, yes. He'd promised plaid more cheese. The rest of the day came and went, with a few dry texts to Marinette. Ah, it must be hard for her because she's still processing that he was a part-time superhero. But over the next three days, Adrian found himself doubting their relationship more and more. Marinette would stutter when he tried to talk to her, and she wouldn't make eye contact when he would wave. Had he gotten it wrong? Did she not like him? Sure, they might have had a good relationship as Marinette and Cat Noir, but what if she couldn't think of him, Adrian, that way? Hmm. What they needed was a date. Sadly, he was all out of date ideas. It was as though the well of inspiration dried up inside him when he thought of taking her on a date. Adrian had far more money to his name than any teenager should, and his mask brought him access to places that, again, no teenager should have. It's not like he could take her out to some culinary bake night or something. She literally lived in a bakery. He was too embarrassed to attempt cross-stitch again, but... But he could take her to a craft store then she could pick out what they'd make. Oh, genius. She'd love that. His words were a jumble of letters as he texted her, despite her sitting behind him, and he smiled when he heard her phone buzz. Adrian heard Alia gasp, clearly reading the text behind his head, and it only made him more excited. He knew he had her blessing without needing to ask. She'd tried to set them up countless times before, and he wasn't a fool to such things. <sighs> if only past him knew how much he would grow to like this girl. Turning around, Adrian expected to see Marinette smiling or even nodding, but instead her head was cradled in her arms, face down on the tabletop. Oh. Okay. Guess she doesn't like the idea after all. Or we could go get, like, chips or something. Maybe a burger? He suggested, hoping to reclaim his position as Alia sighed. Sounds great, Nino said, placing his hand on Alia's wrist. We'll go together, the four of us. 
Adrian noticed the wink exchange, but said nothing. Thank you, DJ Wi-Fi, for the assist. Cool. I'll text my driver. Why don't we walk? Alia suggested. What do you think, Marinette? Yep. She raised her head, her face pink and bangs ruffled. Okay, then. It was a date. A group date. It was... Adrian's first group date? He was going on a date with his friends. How exciting. He was ecstatic, and all he wanted to do was tell Marinette about it, which seemed silly because considering she was the girl he was going on a date with. The minutes felt like hours, and hours felt like minutes until the school bell rang, and the four of them scurried out before other friends or Chloe could. Well, Adrian scurried, and turned around to see Alia holding Marinette's hand to lead her out of the classroom. Frowning, he addressed the feeling in the pit of his belly. Shouldn't he be the one holding her hand? Then again, he hadn't offered it, so it wasn't his place to get upset unless she outwardly rejected it. Okay. Oh, but he couldn't. He couldn't hold another girl's hand in public. That whole girlfriend thing he had going for the media. Great. Why did his dad even want him to date anyway? There was nothing more infuriating than being a pawn. Sure, he wouldn't have minded last year, but now he had feelings for someone else. Did his father not realize that maybe his son was capable of being a regular teenage boy? <sighs> Shake it off, kid. But their afternoon outing did nothing to help his mood. Instead of a pleasant grab-a-burger and chat, Adrian found himself holding the conversation together with Alia, with assists from Nino. Marinette distracted herself by sipping on her strawberry shake, but he was determined to make this work. Break the ice now or never, right? That's a cute cardigan, Adrian said, using his chin to point at the cable knit wrap she wore. He knew she made it, but instead of some kind of thank you or even a uh, you think, Marinette just stared at him, wide-eyed like a deer in headlights. Yeah, I like it. Is it new? Alia asked, tugging on her sleeve. Uh, yeah. Marinette turned to Alia and nodded vigorously. Yeah, it is. Is this the one you were working on last week? Adrian bit into his hamburger. Ah. Uh... She flicked her eyes from Alia to him, then back again. Yeah. Is it? Alia gave her sleeve another tug. Yeah, I used the... I, I used the yarn my grandma got me. Again, the answer was directed at Alia. What was he doing wrong? Did she just not like him anymore? Or... Or could she not handle being his friend in public? No, no! Don't think like that! Why couldn't they talk normally? Sure, he couldn't brush her hand like he wanted, and casual flirts across the table didn't seem appropriate at this point. Why? Why was this so hard? It wasn't this hard in the movies. Yeah, he knew they weren't real, but it didn't seem normal to not be able to have a simple conversation. Retiring to his bedroom in a sour mood, Adrian came to a simple conclusion as he sat, sulking on his bed. In the future, he wouldn't let his dates know he was a superhero. Chapter 27 Marinette Dupang Chang Oh, sugar and cookies! Why couldn't she act like a proper human being? Marinette laid on her bed, bathed in angst and wallowing in embarrassment. She messed up. Her and Adrian? 
She proved that could never happen. The worst part of today was her not knowing why it happened. Why did she clam up? Why was she the most awkward being to ever exist? Why couldn't she laugh and toss her hair like a regular girl? Like his official girlfriend could. Ugh, no. That made her sound like a mistress. Pass. If there was anything she didn't want, it was a relationship game. A soft knock echoed through her room, and Marinette scampered up the ladder to unlatch the balcony, cheeks already flushed. Cat Noir? Well, Adrian, actually. Eh, Cat Noir. How else would he get up there? And it was far less stressful to think of him as Cat instead of her long, broken crush. Hey. She looked up at Cat, beaming down at her, and her heart did that little flutter thing she loved and despised so dearly. Hey, she answered, lingering a moment before moving out of the way so he could enter. Sorry about today, he said, shaking off little droplets as he reached the foot of her ladder. Was it raining outside? No, I am. She didn't need to look in a mirror to know the sheepish look she wore. I made the whole thing... awkward. Should I not have invited Alia and Nino? No. Marinette sat on her chase, feeling silly. That's not it. Then what? He took his spot beside her. She laughed at the fabric growing damp around his thighs. Get any closer and I'll get wet. Water can't hurt a woman's beauty, he replied. The words stated so naturally, Marinette had to wonder if they'd been rehearsed. I'm sorry, what? The remark threw her off so much, she had to address it before moving the conversation forward. What? Water can't hurt a woman's beauty? Like what? Where did you hear that? Clearly, he forgot about the effects of mascara getting wet. So, uh, before over on High School Host Club was officially translated, some fan subbers translated one of Tamaki's lines as, water cannot harm a handsome man, or something like that. So, you've always wanted to use that line, haven't you? He gave a tooth-filled smile, and she laughed. Do you still like me? <laughs> Nerd? Come to think of it, she hadn't confessed her feelings to him, had she? No wonder today was hard for him. And yeah, silly, I do. Why was it so easy now? She would have made even more of a mess today if he'd asked that question. Why was now? With Cat, any different? Oh. Oh. Oh, no. It was because she was with Cat. They were the same person, but she couldn't talk to Adrian the way she could talk to Cat. Oh, no. She whispered not intending to let the word slip as she stared at Cat Noir before pursing her lips. Great. Once again, Marinette found herself sabotaged by her idle feelings. Sighing, she looked at her boyfriend, Mast Edition, and silently put together a plan. If she didn't do this now, their relationship would crash and burn before it ever made it off the run. Chapter 28 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir Why? Why was Marinette staring at him like that? Why did she say oh no before looking at him like he'd brought a decapitated rabbit corpse to her doorstep? Was it his joke? Was it because she thought him a nerd? Was she worried he was a closet otaku? Because, well... He was, but he was discreet about it. 
It's not like he lined up waifu pillows on his bed and publicly announced he liked things that weren't legal for his age. That's not what he was about. Marinette? You okay? He asked, waving a hand in her face as she buffered. She stood up abruptly, excusing herself to the bathroom without a word. Um... Okay? That wasn't nerve-provoking at all. Cat felt his heart rate accelerate as he reanalyzed the conversation. She'd admitted to liking him, but was that just to make him feel better? Or did she like Cat Noir, and him being Adrian was too much for her? He couldn't blame her. His family name was a lot for a person, and he knew that truth firsthand. So, to keep his hands busy, Cat grabbed his cross stitch and began to work on the letter N. What else could he do in his girlfriend's room? Everything okay in there? He dared to call out after ten minutes passed. The door clicked open in response, leaving him to make eye contact with a pink-faced marinette. Sorry about that. No worries. I had to, uh, compose myself. Anything I can do? No! Marinette squeaked. Nope, it's a personal journey, if you know what I mean. He had no idea what she meant, but okay. So, a loser makes dinner? Loser? Cat tilted his head to the side until he realized she gestured to the switch and he missed it. Sure, he grinned. But if I win, then it's beef stroganoff. You're... Marinette began, cutting herself off to regain her balance as the house shook. Without thinking, Cat was next to her, his arm wrapped around his back as his ears stood skyward atop his head. Another one. Cat Noir! Marinette patted him on the shoulder. I'll be fine. Go. He looked down at her, knowing there was no way to mask the concern in his eyes, and nodded. I'll be back soon. But when he turned around for a last glance when he went up to the balcony, Marinette wasn't there. Huh. Perhaps it was a bit egotistical, or even the expectation of his internalized misogyny, but... Cat thought she would see him off. No, it was better that she made her way to safety instead. He had a job to do, and worrying about Marinette shouldn't be his top priority. Setting himself straight, Cat made his way to the river where a man clad in iridescent plastic with what looked like a neon green onesie underneath stood. At this point in his super career, Cat stopped guessing Hawkmoth's fashion sense. But this one made him wonder a bit if, when they catch him, he should arrange for him to meet his father. There was plenty Hawk Moth could learn from a leading fashion designer. Oh, look! Ladybug! He'd beaten her here after all. It helped that he was not only already transformed when the Akuma appeared, but also that he didn't have to create excuses or lie to get out of a situation and slip away. He had an advantage over Ladybug for once. The thought distracted him for a moment. Now that she was the guardian, did she have someone she could count on for a confidant? The thought made him lonesome for how she might feel if there wasn't one. Sure, Marinette only knew who he was for a short while, nor did he talk to her about Akuma fights, but there was comfort in her presence. Judging by the anklet that didn't quite match the rest of the ensemble, Cat had the location of the Akuma pinpointed. He looked over to Ladybug to send her an affirmative nod, but found her distracted by crumpled cellophane balls aimed to pelt her. Why was she batting them back one by one? Why not whirl her yo-yo and be done with it? Hey, LB, get your head in the game, he called out, taking her off guard. She slipped from her rooftop arena, 
leaving him to bound after her for the saving catch before she hit cobblestone. What's going on? He realized he yelled the question at her out of concern. Sorry, I got distracted. By what? Some guy? Cat leaned in, despite already being close. An illicit lover? What? Why illicit? She pushed his face away. No, I just realized something about one of my relationships, that's all. Oh? Multiple lovers? Cat wiggled his eyebrows. Now you're the distraction. Come on, kitty. Time to find an Akuma. Oh, that? It's in the anklet. He relished his smugness. Knowing finding it before Ladybug did was a praiseworthy accomplishment. Great! Lucky charm! A cataclysm and a white butterfly later, the superhero duo was out of the woods and hiding from the media in an alley. Hey, LB, Cat began. Cat, you have to get out of here! You have a minute left, she interrupted. As opposed to you? I've got another four. He laughed, shaking his head. Have you forgotten? You already know who I am. Her look of surprise told him she hadn't thought of it that way. Oh, yeah, right. Don't worry, I'll get out of here before you detransform. But considering I'm an idol even without a mask, I'd rather have the crowd disperse a little more before showing my face. Ladybug nodded, her face lit by his detransformation. Good luck getting home, she said, not making eye contact. Thanks. He patted her shoulder and left her a smile. Good luck with that relationship of yours. Trotting onto the cobblestone, Adrian pulled the hood of his gray sweatshirt over his head and began to hum to himself, happy to be going home. This time, he didn't need help getting there. Marinette was already there, waiting for him to come home. Hopefully she had whatever, oh no, worked out by now. Hopefully him being a dashing black knight going out to save the city helped. Whatever it was, he hoped they'd have a peaceful, uneventful night. Between Marinette and Ladybug, Cat realized the women in his life were acting strange today. So the least he could do for himself is to get down to an American pop song while playing Just Dance. It was a great stress relief, and even if they weren't talking, maybe Marinette could relax. With that thought in his mind, Adrian entered the Dupang Chang Bakery, exchanged pleasantries with Tom, and made his way upstairs. Sure, the women in his life were odd, but so was his life, so all was well. All was well when he was home. Chapter 29 Marinette Dupang Chang For once, Marinette was happy she barely made it back on time before her transformation wore off. It meant she didn't have to awkwardly stand or sit or pace in her room as she waited for Cat Noir to return. So, when he scampered upstairs, she pretended to braid her hair and greet him with a smile like she'd been there all along. Did you save the city? She asked, flicking her eyes to his. It was her best attempt at flirting thus far, paired with a sly smile. But if it worked, he didn't show it. Another day, another historic building preserved and reconstructed through magic he replied, taking a short bow. Funny you say that. Isn't that Ladybug's power? He rolled his eyes and smiled. You got me there. Marinette chose to let silence pass between them, debating how to phrase her upcoming request. Cat, she finally exhaled. Could you 
remove the mask, please? His eyebrows shot up before folding themselves together. What's up? Oh, how could she say it to his face? How much do you like me? It was clear he didn't know how to respond. Um, what? Before she could clarify what she meant, he used his hands like he was measuring a fish, changing the distance between them with lips pursed as he debated how he could show her his... devotion? Emotion? Who knows? That's not what I... <sighs> she began. Sorry. I don't mind. I mean, I like you. I'm not shy about that. Whatever response she'd buffered crashed at his reply. Wow. Cat was smooth. She was awkward. Either this was a perfect fit or a horrible pairing. So, uh, I fly? Marinette trailed off, unable to bring herself to confess. I fly? She tried again. Great! If she couldn't say it to him with the mask on, how could she dare to ask him to take it off? Okay. Take a breath. Ease into it. You okay? Cat asked. He was visibly concerned. She'd be lucky if he didn't think she was having an aneurysm right now. Why is this so difficult? She groaned, mostly to herself. I can go if I'm- No! No! Stay! But- It's me, Cat. I've been so tied up in Adrian that I only know how to talk to you with the mask on! She managed a peek between her fingers, surprised to see him standing like a fish out of water. I'm confused. You talked to me just fine without the mask before you knew I wore it. Despite her best efforts, Marinette burst out laughing. You had no clue, did you? About what? He crossed his arms. Oh, I don't know if you're oblivious or Lady Luck had my back. What's Ladybug got to do with this? Oh, this cat... How on earth was someone as smart as Adrian so dense? Did the miraculous affect intelligence or something? I had the crush of the century on you, Adrian. Wow. Now that it was out there, it was both the easiest thing she'd ever said and her most regretted remark, hanging between them like a basketball dribble gone wrong. He opened his mouth to reply, staring at the chase instead of her before furrowing his eyebrows. Had, he repeated. Ah, yet another misunderstanding to address. Have, she tried, biting her lower lip. I am Confucian, he said in English. America, explain! It was a knee-jerk response, and the mood was lost to laughter as they made eye contact. Quoting vines had become something of an inside joke between them, and instead of worrying about the truth hanging in the air, the reference did enough to de-escalate the conversation. You... <clears throat> you... you liked me? Cat cleared his throat as he tried to rein in his composure. Um, yeah? The scarf? The obvious favoritism? Me unable to not talk with a stutter? Wait, your stutter isn't natural? She stared at him, unable to express the wave of exhaust that hit her from his response. Do I do it when you're cat? Oh. So my idolized feelings for you makes it hard to talk to Adrian. That's what the oh no was earlier. So you can only be my girlfriend if I'm masked. 
there was clear he wasn't grasping what she was trying to convey. No, I... Oh. Oh. How could she approach this? I'm working on it. I'll ask Ladybug about it, he said. It was clear by his posture he was confident in the idea. She'll know what to do. Oh, he might be placing his faith in the wrong person. Hold my hand, she asked, reaching out for him. Cat pursed his lips as they twisted into a smile, a spark of joy on his face as he trotted over and grasped her hand before sitting beside her. So I... And detransform? Cat blinked in surprise. Um, sure. Claws in. Marinette felt her face grow hot as her eyes moved from their hands to his face and back to their hands. Get it together, Marinette! They're the same person! They're the same person! They're... <sighs> she tore her hand away from his, hot and sticky and feeling out of place. Yep, this was problematic. Sorry! She blurted out. Oof. She didn't want to own up to the amount of psychological damage she probably just dealt. It's cool. Adrian's voice was flat. Despite the comforting smile on his face, his eyes looked like they did when his driver came to pick him up. Marinette covered her eyes with one hand and reached for his with the other, taking a moment to wipe her palm on her pants first. This is Cat. He's Cat. You like him so much. You should be ecstatic to hold his hand. She peeked her eyes open just enough to see Adrian gazing at her a soft smile on his face. You're blushing, he murmured when they made eye contact. Am I? Her voice was more of a squeak. Well, that answered that question. Claws on. Marinette blinked in surprise. Why? I'd prefer my girlfriend to be comfortable in my company. His girlfriend? Your girlfriend? Well, if you're willing, I'd love to date you. I don't know. Marinette gave him a sly look. We've only gone on two dates, so... He laughed and squeezed her hand. All right, all right. You got me there. Sure. Sure? I'd love to date you, Cat Noir. He made a duck face, too smug for her to take him seriously. You wouldn't say that to Adrian. Marinette resisted the urge to roll her eyes, closing them instead and taking her hand from his so she could smack his chest. Too soon! We'll work on it, babe. He took her hand back, and she found herself wearing a smile that matched his. Boyfriend, huh? Marinette had a boyfriend now. It's official. Marinette had a boyfriend, and he went by the name Cat Noir. Chapter 30 Adrian Agrest Adrian was excited to go to school. It was as though he were five years old, holding his mother's hand with bright colored laces weaved through his sneakers. He couldn't show the excitement over breakfast, in fear of making his father too suspicious and relinquishing his school privileges. But oh, to pick up some fruity ice drink and pick up his girlfriend seemed like heaven in the moment, even though he knew it wasn't going to happen. But even with the strict parenting and pseudo-girlfriend, Adrian found happiness in the morning. He'd made eye contact with Marinette across the courtyard, and although she'd adverted her gaze, she lifted her hand to give him a small wave. That wave was the cutest wave in the history of hand waves. No doubt she deserved the princess nickname he'd given her all those moons ago. And what's more, she was cute in a different way than Ladybug was. There was no comparing the two, nor did he want to. 
But despite how different the two girls were, he was just as excited to go on another date with Marinette as he had with Ladybug, although he was a different kind of nervous. A more mature nervousness that he wasn't able to express through words. Did he know what kind of a date to take her on? No, but he didn't care. Anything would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Adrian got those treacherous little flutters in his chest throughout the day, paired with a smile that told others he had a secret all to himself. Except, well, it wasn't all to himself. He'd turn to look at Marinette every now and then, and her expression would bloom into a matching smile. Yeah, they were a couple. This is what being a couple felt like. He hadn't known until today. But when the bell rang, Adrian didn't try to say goodbye to her. He packed up his things and hightailed out of there, catching his driver as soon as he could and rushing himself back to the manor. After a short update to his father, Adrian raced to his bedroom, set up a fake piano practice session, and transformed into his alter ego. The smell of rising dough greeted Cat Noir after he bounded through the streets of Paris. He tried to rush through pleasantries with Tom and Sabine, but when Marinette's father swooped him into a hug, Cat was at a loss as to what to do. Savor it? Run away? Hold on for longer than socially acceptable? Thankfully, Marinette saved him from coming to a conclusion. You owe me a Just Dance competition, she remarked, leaning in the doorway between the living room and kitchen. Oh, how she looked like a dream with her hair braided and wrapped in a pink pusheen apron. Her father inquired about the game, clearly eager to participate, when Sabine interjected with news of dinner. It was Marinette's turn to cook, which meant Cat, too, was up for cooking dinner. What are we making? he asked, all too used to the routine by now. One would think he'd adorn the cat aprons in this household, but his was checkered navy blue with orange stripes and a hello pumpkin over the heart in cursive. Marinette made the apron and he'd embroidered it. It was special to him now. Too special to get grease on, but he didn't want to lose face by protesting using it. Enchiladas, Marinette answered, unwrapping some kind of ground meat. Enchiladas? What were they? Yeah, have you ever had them? Can't say I have. What? Marinette stared at him like he said he chopped off kitten tails for fun or something morbid along those lines. Never? Are they carb heavy? Her stare turned to what must be pity. Depends on how you make them, and what you make them with. And so, Cat learned how to brown beef, stuff and roll tortillas, and preheat an oven without any dangerous side effects. He did get Marinette to laugh by sprinkling the cheese on top like he was part of the salt meme that circulated a few years back. And realistically, that would be the moment he remembered most for the night. So they danced while the food baked, then washed their hands, or super suit, before sitting down to dinner as family, cat across from Tom and next to Marinette. Yeah. This is what eating like a family should feel like. While Marinette filled her father in about details from school, Cat noticed the mood was different than when he did it with his father. It was so strange seeing what looked like a regular day up close even though he'd seen it before. If they knew he was dating their daughter, would they accept him? Her father got akumatized over it before, so they would. Right? Right? Wow, this was nerve-wracking to think about. Then again, it's not like he was about to ask for her hand in marriage or something, so he'd best not overthink it. Oh, Marinette, what would you like me to do with these? Cat looked up from washing dishes to see Sabine set a box on the kitchen table. 
He was just as curious as Marinette, but his hands were wet while hers were already on the towel, so he sighed and turned back to the plate in his hand with open ears. Oh, where did you find these? He heard Marinette ask. Your grandmother had them stored away. She did? Wow, I forgot about this one. Cat itched with curiosity, but used that energy to scrub at baked on cheese. What were they looking at? Family photos? Old toys? Books? Presents? Come on, Cat, don't stare. Not your place. You have a place in the family, but you aren't family. Just keep scrubbing, just keep scrubbing, 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 scrubbing. Daring to sneak a glance, all Cat Noir could see was Marinette digging through a cardboard box, bent over it and standing on her tippy toes. Oh, Camembert, she's cute. But it didn't satisfy his curiosity, as he couldn't see anything from this angle. Sighing, Cat Noir turned his attention back to the dishes, scrubbing them one by one and stacking them on the drying pad for Marinette when she came back. Hopefully, he could finish this before the box was put away. Sure, she'd tell him if he asked, but that wasn't as satisfying as seeing it himself. And he felt a little left out at the moment as Tom began shuffling through the box as well. But it wasn't his place to be greedy. He should be happy with what he had, right? Yeah, he was happy here. He didn't need to take more than he had. Hey, Marinette, he piped up. Oh, sorry. She returned to his side, grabbing her towel and picking up a dish. It was as if the curdling mood never existed when she started drying a plate. Huh. Marinette was magic for him, wasn't she? A wonderful mood lifter that kept him humble. He shouldn't ask for more than what he had. This jealousy from being left out. Was it insecurity? Cat was happy here, and he wanted to keep it that way. Sure, he wasn't entirely comfortable, but part of that was on him, and he knew he would grow into this family with time. Yeah. Cat would grow into this family with time. Chapter 31 Marinette Dupeng Cheng So, what was in the box? Marinette put the final dried plate in the cupboard before turning to answer Cat's question. It was obvious he wanted to know but there was something attractive about him finishing his work before turning his attention outwards. Then again, she might be a little biased, considering he was her... boyfriend? <laughs> oh, her boyfriend! It still didn't feel real! That, and there's no way she, Ladybug, would have believed someone if they told her she'd say yes to dating Cat Noir, much less without him knowing she's his partner. Crazy! Well, what's crazier is Adrian being Cat. She couldn't blame Tiki for not telling her, but still, imagine how different her life would be had she known earlier. Granted, Plague didn't tell Adrian either, so pros and cons to that, she supposed. Wait, did this mean they liked each other this whole time? Cat liked Ladybug and she liked Adrian? <gasps> Marinette, you okay? Cat leaned in as she tried and failed to process her realization. He, she, they, um, yeah. Marinette chose to answer him instead of thinking about her epiphany. Picture books. Oh, which ones? Le Petit Prince, Le Peu. No, they're all in English. English? Grandma decided I should be bilingual by age five. You're kidding. Marinette looked at him like she was peering over spectacles. Adrian, she began, foregoing his mask. 
You speak fluent English and take Mandarin lessons. He shrugged sheepishly, but she wasn't sure if it was because she called him by name or pointed out the similarities. Okay, yeah, so American industrial or European folklore. Hungry, hungry caterpillar. Marinette tapped his bell before pointing to the chase. Want to read to each other? It was easy to interpret the glint in his eye as eagerness. I bet my accent is better than yours. Knowing you, you'll purposely try to narrate as strangely as possible. Meow wee. She rolled her eyes at his pun before running downstairs to grab the box. Cat sat on the chase when she returned. So Marinette made the bold move to plop down next to him with the top book and curl into his chest, her head on his shoulder as she tucked her knees in. He stiffened for a moment, hopefully in surprise, before his body relaxed with his smile. His arm slid behind her, resting around her hip, and she could swear he tugged her closer as he shifted. Opening the book, Marinette realized the flutters in her chest didn't belong to butterflies. They were the warm pulses of her heartbeat, matching the temperature of Kat's body. Clearing her throat, Marinette began to narrate. Once upon a time, there was a little princess who lived in a castle far, far away. And so their evening went, one page turn at a time, warm and cuddled in each other's warmth. Except, well, the warmth wasn't just from cuddling. When she noticed Cat fell asleep on her shoulder, Marinette was overwhelmed with softness for him. It would be nice to keep him there and fall asleep together, but there is a difference between being nice and being good. And so, when the dusk swept darkness over Paris, Marinette woke him up, sending him home with a kiss before anyone noticed he was missing. It wasn't some grandiose, sweeping first kiss. It was as ordinary as any goodbye kiss would be a mere peck on the lips, but it was memorable beyond reason. Kat smiled in response and had felt like they'd done it forever, as though they'd said a goodbye a thousand times before with kisses. Retiring to bed, Marinette curled up, happiness in her heart and an overgrown kitten on her mind. This was so warm, so tender, no wonder people chased feelings like this and allowed themselves to fall to ruin if it broke. She was dreamy and hot and elated all at the same time, unable to suppress her giggles to the point she half worried her parents might check up on her. She wasn't emotionally ready to deal with the realization that they'd liked each other all this time, so she didn't. Perhaps it turned out this way because of the luck from her miraculous, or perhaps it was straight destiny. Marinette liked the idea of her and Adrian being destined for each other. Ah! <sighs> it was overwhelming to think about! Kicking her legs, Marinette escaped her blanket, out of breath without exercise. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's time for bed. Time for sleep. Not time to fangirl over her own life. Good night, world. Good night, life. Good night. Oh. Yeah. She should probably text her boyfriend good night, too. Huh. Smiling to herself, Marinette typed a small text, sent it, and closed her eyes. Good night, Adrian. Chapter 32 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Cat Noir sat on the balcony of his girlfriend's patio, waiting for her to get ready for their date. He found the sushi bar about an hour out of town that served an excellent ahi tartare, and Marinette hadn't known what a tartare was when he brought it up. For once, it was his turn to show or teach her something new. They'd been dating for just over a year now. And while he would take her out for dinner any day of the week, no questions asked, 
They were sharing a meal to celebrate her 17th birthday. He'd donned the mask for just over three years now, but he never imagined using it like this. There was no way to date Marinette in the public as Adrian, as she'd be labeled derogatory names of choice because Adrian the model already had a girlfriend. Nor could he date her publicly as Cat Noir because she would become easy bait for Hawk Moth's schemes. Yes. Tonight, they'd be out on the town where the paparazzi weren't, and happy, together. He'd have the option of taking off the mask at times, too, if he wanted to, thanks to the private booths he negotiated with a black card. Tonight was the night. Tonight was the night he was going to tell her. But what if she didn't feel the same way? Would it ruin her birthday? No, Kat didn't want that. That'd be horrible. That'd be... His thoughts slammed into a wall of nothingness as his brain stopped functioning. Marinette stepped onto the balcony when he wasn't paying attention, and seeing her in all her beauty was enough to make him melt, both emotionally and mentally. Her normal girl-next-door look was replaced with a delicate energy that suited his princess nickname for her. Soft, light, and nearly angelic, Light pink fingertips paired with natural lashes and thin but long earrings. Goodness. He worked with beautiful women all the time, but they felt artificial to him compared to her. Yes, her lip gloss was probably the same as theirs, but it made her lips look ever more plumped instead of processed. Okay, so he was a bit biased. Really? What made her look authentic glamorous over YouTuber glamorous was her lack of foundation. Marinette had perfect skin, to the point of being annoying, so when she'd freak out over the occasional zit or whitehead, he could only roll his eyes in private while sharing tips from other models. It made him wonder how she'd react to cystic acne. Cat got your tongue? He realized Marinette had been speaking to him this whole time and he had to shake his head to clear his thoughts. Thankfully, she didn't ask him what was on his mind, because he didn't think I was wondering what it'd be like if you had cystic acne would bode well. Ready to go? Cat asked, still trying to clear his thoughts for a stable, non-acne-centered conversation. Marinette began to smile, but the darkening look on her face made him worry. Cat she said, her tone serious. If he didn't know any better, he'd think that was a tone for breaking up, but he did know better. That was her Akuma voice. Sighing, he turned to see an electric blue Godzilla stomping around town. Oh. He reached for her hand to give an apologetic squeeze. Go. Marinette grabbed him by the shoulder and pressed her lips to his. I'll be here. Marinette probably didn't realize what a huge relief her words were. She'd said them dozens of times before, in some variant or another, but there was comfort in not only having a place to come back to and a person waiting for him, but having someone who understood what wearing a mask like his entailed. Sure, she'd never understand it completely, unless Ladybug gave her a miraculous to keep, but she was incredibly pragmatic and never made him choose between his superhero duties and his, quote, real, unquote, life. Then again, he wasn't sure if he had a real life. He was either playing model boy or superhero. When he was with Marinette, he wasn't sure what he was. Working with Ladybug was as smooth as ever. They didn't even need to call on one of their friends to help them this time around. And Cat was secretly celebrating, more than ready to resume his date with his lovely girlfriend. Why are you in a hurry? Ladybug asked, fastening her yo-yo back to her hip. Got a hot date? Yeah, actually. Cat gave her a smirk. She must have picked up on his eagerness to return by how quickly he trotted over for a fist bump. Oh? She arched an eyebrow that seemed to say, tell me more. 
Are you bringing her flowers? Flowers? I bet she would like flowers. I mean, I don't think she'd be opposed to flowers. It's a special dinner and you didn't bring her flowers? Amateur move, Cat Noir. He felt the beginnings of panic prickle at his spine. Flowers? Oh, why hadn't he thought of that? Cat spent so much time worrying about the date, he forgot to think about her on her birthday. Everything was for her, but it was about him feeling good as a boyfriend. Oh, Camembert, what should he do? What kind of flowers? Ladybug laughed and bumped hips with him. Peonies. Peonies? She'll like the scent. I guess I have no choice but to trust you, he joked. As far as relationship advice and translating Marinette's actions went, Ladybug had yet to let him down. One might think she wouldn't be helpful, as she once mentioned liking Adrian Agrest, but that was before learning he was, well, himself. They hadn't talked about it, but Kat assumed her interest got dried up with the towel masking his identity when it came off. <sighs> okay, time to go get flowers. The restaurant would understand them being late because of the Akuma fight, but they might have given the booth away. It was an hour out of Paris, after all, and wasn't often affected by Hawkmoth's victims. Sighing, but still looking forward to the evening, Cat Noir detransformed and went to go buy peonies for his girlfriend, making sure to send some to his in-name only so the press didn't think he was shopping for another woman instead. He chose pink and white, suitable for a girl as lovely as Marinette. Armed with freshly cut flowers and a positive mindset, Adrian set off toward the Dupang Chang Bakery, slipping into an alley to transform into Cat Noir. Okay, time to tell Marinette he loved her. Chapter 33 Marinette Dupang Chang the problem with promising to wait for a boyfriend at home is that you actually had to get home before said boyfriend does. There were too many close calls over the years when Kat got home before she did, and now, more than ever, she didn't want him to find out she was Ladybug. Not by accident, at least. Thankfully, she was able to plant the idea of flowers in his brain as Ladybug so she would have time to redo her hair and touch up her makeup before he got back. The last thing she wanted was to look like a disheveled mess on her birthday. She wanted to look like a dream for him today, because even though it was her birthday, it seemed to be more important to him than it was for her. Last year, he didn't know it was her birthday, then felt horrible about missing it. She knew he'd gone overboard this year, despite not knowing the itinerary for this evening. If this superheroine thing didn't work out, Marinette could probably pass for an actress or model, because whenever Kat returned, she'd pick out a position to lounge in like she'd been there the whole time and act like she didn't know what happened during the Akuma fight. That was talent, although she definitely slipped up a few times. While Marinette expected peonies from her beloved boyfriend, she didn't expect a bouquet that surpassed her shoulder length. Instead of focusing on the boy carrying a small tree of flowers and wearing a sheepish grin, Marinette found herself wondering if she'd be able to wrap her wingspan around the stems. What a delightful surprise, she fibbed, thanking him with a kiss that smelled like peonies. He caught her before she could step away, pulling her in for a second kiss. Oof. She felt herself smile downgrading the quality of the kiss, but upgrading her mood. Ready to go? He asked, breaking away and offering her a garden's worth of blossoms. Anxiety twisted her stomach. Did she want to go? Yes, but then again, she didn't. She'd made up her mind that she'd tell Cat Noir she was Ladybug, 
And even though Marinette made the decision to tell him at least half a dozen times by now, she'd chickened out of every opportunity, natural or forced. How are we getting there? Kat stared at her, but she couldn't figure it out. Was she supposed to know? Uh, Marinette, he began. Yes? I think I made a mistake. What's wrong? He shifted his weight. So, the restaurant's about an hour out of town. Yes, and? What was the problem? Unless he thought to carry her all the way out... Oh. I, uh, didn't think about how we'd get there. And it'd be too suspicious for Adrian to take me in a car. I can keep the mask on and get an Uber. No, no. I've got a better idea. Marinette sighed, but not in disappointment, as she pulled out her phone. Modern day problems require modern day solutions. Take out? He asked, looking at the screen. I was thinking of delivery, if you're up for it. You're handing me the phone so I pay for it, huh? It's my birthday! He laughed, taking it in stride. He said he was going to pay for tonight earlier anyway. Sure, I'll order something, then tell the restaurant they won't see us tonight. Thanks. Sushi is expensive, after all. Looking at the feast in front of her, Marinette knew she couldn't pay Cat back even if she wanted to. He'd been able to pull strings and favors from three different restaurants to get food there within a half hour during peak dining time. Forget a four-course meal. This was at least seven with three different types of cuisines. It was enough to feed her and her parents for days just on leftovers. That... And she didn't want to know what price time came with elite dining such as this. Small talk came and went, but it seemed like Kat was just as nervous as she was. Why? She was the one with the big secret to reveal. So, she began, not realizing he started a sentence. Sorry, you go first. No, no, he brushed off a chuckle. You. I insist. Have you ever... Uh, did you ever figure out Ladybug's identity? He looked up, attention focused on the unexpected question. No, I stopped trying about a year ago. Not even an idea? No. I'm not saying I don't care, but I'm not... Cat adjusted his posture. Never mind. What? Doesn't matter. Come on, Cat. It's between me and her. That was enough to silence her. If only he knew how much harder that made it for her to say what she'd been trying to for the better part of a year. Cat. She tried again, feeling herself beginning to shake as she thought of the dreaded question. It's between you and me. Come again? Cat didn't look at her as he went after a piece of ahimaki. It was clear he didn't pick up on how life-changing her remark would be after it gestated. It's because... The words choked in her throat. I'm well... Uh, come on, Marinette. You're Ladybug. You're fearless. Mentally strong. Capable. Dependable. And totally frozen stiff at the idea of telling your partner you're his girlfriend. But he can't get mad at her because it's her birthday, right? She knew it was a cop-out, but it was the best she could come up with at the moment. You're what? What's wrong? Kat asked, looking up to meet her eyes. Do you need to use the bathroom or something? As grateful as she was for how comfortable they were with discussing such things with the other, that's not even close to what she was going for. I'm... Sugar and cookies, just say it, Marinette. I'm Lady... 
You're a lady noir shipper? Cat filled in, shoveling a piece in his mouth. I know she and I have chemistry, but I never thought you'd go so far as... No, Cat, I'm... How was it this hard? I'm a lady... <laughs> he stared at her, still chewing on the maki. You okay there, Bluebell? She slumped her head into her hands, inflicted with self-embarrassment. Ladybug. She muttered. Why couldn't she say it to his face? Eye contact included. When she looked up, Marinette saw Cat Noir staring at her, his face blank and unreadable. Had he heard her? Oh no, he had. Oh, that's not how she wanted this to go. She wanted to say it to his face, not to her arms. Oh, that and the way he was looking at her. He'd never looked at her that way before. The only time she'd ever seen that expression on his face was... was after conversations with his father. If this look was from dealing with his father, Marinette could comfort him. But now... Marinette didn't know how to respond. Should she hold him? Apologize? Ask for his thoughts? His eyes flicked away from hers when they made contact, and it was like a knife to the gut. Cat? She asked, feeling her body tremble. Are you going to... Uh... Are you... You going to leave? I'd like to say that's wonderful news. Cat's voice was hollow, but I can't process it in the moment. Cat? I'm not saying I'm going to pretend to not know, because you said it. It's out there, and I believe you, but... He turned his attention to his chopsticks, picking up another maki piece sprinkled with togarashi pepper. But I'd like to... He sighed, still putting a sentence together. Can I spend this evening with my girlfriend and think about this later? His low, almost defeated sounding tone of voice made her heart ache. She nodded and picked up her set of chopsticks, turning her attention to a roll garnished with some kind of red sauce. She dare not start a conversation for fear of saying the wrong thing or making it seem like she took the situation lightly, but the air between them was too heavy to bear. Finally, Marinette decided she had enough and threw her chopsticks down. Cat, she began. No. Adrian, she corrected. Look at me. He looked up his face still dead to emotion. He didn't answer her, choosing to stare instead. Yeah, it was a lot to take in, considering he had no idea the girl he confided in for the last year about his relationship was the girl he was in the relationship with, but Marinette couldn't handle the consequences of the news. No, she was going to talk to him properly over dinner, and then he could take all the time he needed on his own. He could take all the time he needed, or get mad and explode. She'd accept any consequence, but only after she laid all the cards on the table. Okay, Marinette, you can do this. Time to lay all the cards on the table. Chapter 34 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir Cat rubbed between his eyes, emotionally fatigued and ready to retire from this night. But knowing Marinette, and knowing Ladybug, that wasn't about to happen anytime soon. Ladybug always liked being in the know, and leaving things undefined crippled her. She couldn't be as in the moment as he could. So, instead of listening to her go on and on, starting from the beginning, of course, Cat retreated into his own headspace, numb to the sounds outside his brain. She was explaining for herself, after all. 
He told her he wanted dinner with his girlfriend, but she wanted to explain her actions to make herself feel better in the moment. That made him feel more hollow than any epiphany he could have while sitting here. Honestly, he wanted to get up and leave. She didn't respect his request, so why should he honor her putting the cards on the table? But nonetheless, he stayed, against his better judgment. She probably punished herself enough across the past year for this truth, and he didn't want to add any more guilt to it. Wait, where were her earrings? She was wearing gold-threaded earrings, but that's not what the miraculous looked like. He flicked his eyes away from his plate, causing Marinette to stop in the middle of whatever sentence she was saying. There. She had them stuck in her collar like lapel pins. Truthfully, he didn't know how he felt about all this. It left him with questions he didn't want to begin to address. Why now? Didn't she trust him before this? If she waited this long, what sparked the sudden reveal? If anything, Cat felt played. She had him wrapped for a long game, and he got played. Now all he wanted to do was leave, but she wouldn't stop talking. He didn't care. He would care when the time came for it, but this wasn't what he expected nor wanted tonight. Can you just... Cat began, fatigued with spite. Can you just not... The words slipped out without warning, or much thinking on his part. Marinette looked shocked, or perhaps even hurt, but he was numb to it. It's not that he didn't care, he just... Ugh. His thoughts were circling. How many times had he thought not right now since the reveal happened? Sliding his line of sight away from her, Cat Noir noticed the company that landed on his plate. Oh. Look, a little butterfly. Chapter 35 Marinette Duping Chang Marinette felt her face grow white as a black butterfly landed next to Cat Noir's plate. Every sense she had went numb as she could only stare, bathed in trauma's drowning memories. No. No! She had done this. If she hadn't waited so long, or if she let him ask the questions instead of deciding to explain everything herself one-sidedly, or... Smack. Her anxiety was overridden by disbelief as she watched Cat Noir crush the Akuma with his hand, like it was any other night where one would take a newspaper to smack a moth. Cat! she exclaimed, watching him stare at his palm with a blank expression on his face. Yes? He looked up, far more nonchalant than a person who Hawk Moth tried to akumatize had any right to be. You just... How could she put this? You just... You just killed a magical being! More like smushed, he said, turning his attention back to the goop in his hand. Between the mood that was and the mood that is, Marinette didn't know how to respond. Will that work? Cat continued looking at his palm and shrugged. One way to find out. Cataclysm. The butterfly turned to nothingness, unlike the consequence of a lucky charm. Cat! Marinette hissed. Now you've really killed it! Think so? he asked, brushing his hand off on his leg before turning his attention back to the food. Did you just smear a carcass on your super suit? What? No. The cataclysm destroyed it. Did it, though? We'll see. If it comes back, then we know the cat and war ring can't handle Kumas by itself. His mention of the miraculous stirred the guilt in her stomach. Do you... Think that Akuma was for you? Or... She let the silence fall, hoping he would fill in the answer for her. 
Marinette wanted him to know just how horrible she felt about all of this. Yeah, maybe. He made a gesture at the last piece of ahimaki, and she held up her hand in polite refusal. But I ain't nobody's camembert. You're not worried about getting akumatized? She asked. He held up his finger to pause her, still chewing. Sorry. Marinette picked up her fork to poke at the food in front of her. Nah, I'm not a kid anymore. Are you going to stay here at least? It'd be safer. And she'd feel better. She didn't know what they'd do at the time, because both movies and video games seemed too awkward after what happened. But at least they'd be together. Then maybe she'd get another chance to explain herself. For me? Or for you? He turned his gaze to Paris instead of her. I know I said I wanted to spend the evening with you, but... Cat cut himself off, clearly conflicted with what he wanted to say. But it's my birthday. But it's your birthday. Marinette held the moment, thinking of what to say. I know you're probably disappointed in me, but... Cat set his chopsticks down, but it looked like the gesture of a man restraining himself. You just aren't listening, are you? There was a sharp edge to his voice. You're LB? Cool. Then why aren't you acting like my partner? Only after his words did she see the hurt in his eyes. Hurt that hadn't been there when she first told him who she was. He was right. He told her what he needed, and she ignored that. As much as she wanted to protest the realization with a fallacy that she was doing it all for his sake, she knew it wasn't true. She did what she wanted to do to make herself feel better, not him. You want to go home, don't you? Marinette said, looking down at her tasteless meal. Kat sighed and closed the lid of a to-go box. How about Princess Bride? The Princess Bride? It took a moment for his suggestion to click. Yeah. That was actually a good idea. A movie they could both laugh at, but knew so well they didn't need to comment on what happened to the other. It was a good choice. Yeah. They cleaned up their meal in silence, but Marinette could tell it wasn't a cold shoulder. Cat Noir was lost in thought, or perhaps not thinking at all. I just want you to know, Cat began sitting down next to her on the chase. I'm not mad. You aren't? No, just buffering. She couldn't help but laugh, slapping her hand over her mouth as she tried to stifle it. Buffering? That's why I asked for more time. If you keep typing on Google Docs while it tries to connect to the internet, you'll make no progress. It'll just forget the keystrokes. Are you really comparing yourself to a computer program right now? Aren't we all in a computer program right now? Don't even start! She laughed, unable to restrain herself. This ridiculous cat. Without thinking, she pressed her head to his shoulder, greeted by his familiar cologne. What, you don't want to talk about theology the same day you reveal your identity? You silly cat. She reached behind herself to pull a blanket across their laps as farm boy met Blondie. He didn't respond right away, choosing instead to pull her closer and rest his head on hers. Thank you, he murmured, his words lost in her hair, for telling me. Marinette reached up and ran her fingers through his hair, closing her eyes and taking in the moment. With this warm and peace cradling her, it was hard to believe there'd been an Akuma in the vicinity less than half an hour ago. Ah, uh, well, even if Cat's cataclysm hadn't worked, they wouldn't find a little butterfly here. Not now, in this moment. 
I should have done it sooner. Just so you know, I wasn't trying to guilt trip you. I know. Marinette interlaced her fingers with his. Good. They continued in silence, not out of words to say, but enjoying the warmth of their partnership. Tonight added a whole new dynamic to it, but Kat was right. They'd process it later. For now, they were going to enjoy her birthday watching the Princess Bride. With rodents of unusual size and a trip to a torture chamber, Marinette couldn't imagine a better way to end the night. She revealed her identity. Chapter 36 Adrian Agrest So Marinette is Ladybug, huh? It made sense in a weird, roundaboutish sort of way. She really was everyone's everyday ladybug. Adrian had somehow come so close to figuring it out years ago, but the blinders were on. Was it because he'd always thought of Ladybug as older than him? Or had he simply never thought the odds of knowing her in his daily life would be so high? Rolling over on his bed, Adrian contemplated, well, a lot. He thought about her then about himself, and then about them as a unit, as a partnership, as a cu- Wait a minute. A year. Cat Noir talked Ladybug's ear off about his amazing girlfriend for nearly a year. Well, actually, more than a year. He always thought she chuckled nervously because she was uncomfortable with how mushy he was when he gushed about Marinette, but he never stopped because sometimes she'd tease him about it or even ask questions like she was invested in his love life. All that time, he'd been gushing to her about her. No wonder she was uncomfortable. It must have been embarrassment. Oh, no. Adrian covered his face with his pillow, too shy to scream in the comfort of his own bed. He'd gone from fangirling about Ladybug in front of Marinette to fangirling about Marinette in front of Ladybug. It wasn't the glow-up he wanted, especially now that he was connecting the dots. He'd embarrassed himself in front of the two identities loads of times, but when you combine those two together... Adrian, rather... Cat had embarrassed himself more in front of her than any person had a right to be. Either this meant he failed at life, or she needed to be disposed of. Okay, okay. He wasn't about to hitman out his girlfriend and partner, although he'd be red in the cheeks about it for weeks. How was she even dating him anyway? After all the dumb stuff he did in front of her? Between being a horrible sous chef in the kitchen with Marinette and burping flames into Ladybug's hair and catching her ribbons on fire, he couldn't tell why she was dating him. Sticking his legs in the air to swing their momentum forward, Adrian rolled from his back to his rump to sit upright, thinking with his head in his hands. All relationship embarrassment aside, last night did spark a change in his motivation, but it had nothing to do with Ladybug. The akuma that landed on his plate literally changed how he thought about the world. No matter where or who or how he grew into a home, it would always be at risk if Hawk Moth was still in the picture. He was too out of it in the moment the butterfly landed to freak out, but now? Now Adrian realized just what kind of bullet he dodged. Putting his thoughts of home aside, what if it were someone else? What if Hawkmoth sent a butterfly to another Parisian last night, and they saw it before their emotions caught up to them, and all they could do was sit paralyzed in fear until their free will became misguided, seducing suggestions? That's horrible, regardless of if they remember their akumatization or not. What kind of effects linger on the brain from something like that? He needed to talk to Ladybug about this. Actually, no. He needed to talk to Marinette about this, and unlike every idea he had before, a new option was open to him. Pulling out his phone, he scrolled to Bakery Bay and hit the call button. Hello? Marinette's voice echoed through his speaker. Hey, 
he said. Is it cool if I come over this afternoon? Uh, yeah. Adrian could practically hear her relieved smile through the phone, despite the yeah dummy tone she used. Great. Should I bring food or are there leftovers? Euros, please. Cool. See you this afternoon. Kisses. Adrian smiled to himself. Yeah, kisses. As much as he wanted to keep chatting, he didn't want to go there unprepared. They'd been trying to catch Hawkmoth for years, so why would today be any different? Adrian needed to come to the table with facts and a plan that worked. It was rare for them to see Hawkmoth in the flesh, so they needed to find his home base. No, Lair. Lair sounded cooler. Or bait him out. Actually, they would probably need bait even if they found his home bit Lair. But Adrian wasn't a fool. He knew what Hawkmoth wanted. It was obvious from the start. He was the solution. But could they trick him? The last thing he wanted was Ladybug getting hurt or her family put at risk. With solution after solution on his mind, Adrian transformed, got food, and made his way to the bakery. Oops. A little early. Marinette wasn't home from school yet. Okay, well, Cat Noir Brain is attracted to that patch of sunlight on the rug, so Cat listened to his instincts and flopped onto the floor, bathing himself in its warmth. Ah, yes. This was a perfect way to wait for Marinette to come home. Allowing himself to slip into the cover of darkness, Cat Noir came to the solution he needed, but not the answer he wanted when it came to taking down Hawkmoth. Ah, oh, Ladybug wouldn't like this. He could already see Marinette getting angry, but he didn't see another option. His dad could protect himself, but Sabine and Tom couldn't. He'd leave them out of this. In the grand scheme of his budding plan, getting Marinette on board would be the hardest part. Ah, oh, whatever. He'd sleep for now, and worry about it later. It was time for a sacred sunlit afternoon nap. Chapter 37 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette couldn't help but smile to herself when she climbed into her room to see her boyfriend curled up, napping in a sunbeam. Ah, his hair looked so soft and fluffy in the light. Beside him was a bag with food, no doubt, but Marinette didn't want to open it, despite her hunger for fear of waking him. Instead, she walked behind him and laid down, wrapping her arm over his side to rest her hand on his tummy as she pressed herself to his back. Ah, this was nice. Before she knew it, she'd matched his breathing. Oh, how easy it would be to simply fall asleep. She awoke when warmth peeled away from her, realizing it was Cat trying to separate himself without waking her. She felt him slip his arms under her legs and back and carry her to the chase, and couldn't help but smile. Perhaps that alerted him to the state of her consciousness, despite her closed eyes, but he only gave a gentle kiss to her forehead and pattered downstairs, as quiet as a kitten. Moonlight greeted her when she awoke again, slightly disoriented and realizing she was in for a long night. Tumbling downstairs, Marinette grabbed the food her boyfriend left her from the fridge and retreated to the couch, pulling out her phone and FaceTiming Adrian. Her parents weren't in the room, so it wasn't a scandalous act. Hey, he answered. The screen showed him sitting at his piano, a piece of cheese hovering above his shoulder. <laughs> Black must have won an argument again. You should have woken me up, Marinette began, digging in the bag for her meal. I could say the same to you. But it looked so comfy. Pot, meat, kettle. She laughed and scooped dressing under her euro. What's up? 
I wanted to talk to Ladybug about a few things. Marinette felt her ribcage tighten, her heart beating a pulse that nearly hurt. Oh? Keep it cool. You're 17 now. You're a mature adult, ready for the world. We need to bring Hawk Moth to justice. Oh. That's what we've been trying to do for years. But we've never baited him. Baited him? Marinette didn't like where this was going. She could feel something was wrong in her gut. Like, with a miraculous? It was risky, but a man like Hawk Moth was attracted to power. She didn't want to subjugate another Kwame to his terror, but likely a few of them would volunteer if she asked. No, he'd smell the trap. Bait him with an identity. The meat in her mouth lost all flavor as she stared at her partner through the screen. No, I'm not putting anyone at risk like that, much less their families. My father would be fine. He's the king of protecting himself. Marinette didn't know how to respond, both at her boyfriend's suggestion to sacrifice himself and the underhanded dig at his flesh and blood. She couldn't imagine speaking about any of her family members that way, even if it were true. No. Hear me out. No. We're partners, he reminded her. No. He puffed out his cheeks, going from charming model to equally charming gad boy in a poof of a breath. I'm already famous, Baronet. His voice was softer than she could bear, weighing the truth on each word. Not only am I a better option, but my ring is far more seductive than the other options out there. Of course he had to be right in moments like these. I'm still against it. She didn't want to lose him. I can't do it without you. Marinette held her tongue for a moment, wondering if she wanted to accuse it out loud. But you'll try anyway, won't you? I didn't say that. No, but the idea will weigh on your mind as days turn to weeks and weeks turn to months, until another year or two passes without any luck. He didn't respond. He couldn't respond. They'd tried for years, but never something as radical as this plan. If we're going to do it, we have to do it right, Marinette continued, not looking at the screen. Hey, can I come over? I need to sleep before I start designing a course of action. No, I just... Adrian ruffled his hair. I want to hold you. Marin had felt her heart glow. I'll be over soon. Adrian wore a look of surprise that melted into understanding. It was clear he hadn't considered her swinging by until now. How could he? He barely found out his girlfriend could transform into a super awesome superheroine, and apparently he decided to capture their nemesis instead of figuring out what that meant for their relationship moving forward. Silly cat. Wide awake, both from the news and her nap, Ladybug made her way to the aggressed manor, ready to throw popcorn at her boyfriend as they watched TikTok compilations before tucking him in for bed. Huh. This was certainly a new dynamic for them indeed. Greeted first by night air, and then her loving partner, Ladybug made her way inside, happy to arrive. Hopefully nothing would disturb this beautiful night, but even if someone or something did, it would be all right. Ladybug had her partner by her side, after all. What could possibly get between them? Chapter 38 Adrian Agrest as warm and comforting as the mixture of sleep and late morning sun was, Adrian had a hard time peeling his eyes open. 
Marinette was asleep on his chest, curled up with Tiki plopped beside her. <laughs> Plague would never snuggle up like that. A quick glance showed he'd fallen asleep mid-bite of camembert, lounging with no modesty on his desk. Hey, he murmured, tapping Marinette's shoulder. He didn't have to go to school, but he could already feel the anxiety she'd have from sleeping in. Come on, you're late. She groaned, as he knew she would, before waking with a start. Tiki also awoke groggily, but she wasn't speeding around the room looking for a backpack. It's not here, Adrian said, ruffling his bedhead into something more manageable. Take my old bag. It's got a laptop and a notebook. That should get you through the day. Thank you, Marinette exclaimed, rushing toward it like a parched woman offered water. She noticed him tapping his cheek and pressed her lips to it before flashing herself into red and black. He grabbed her arm and got one more peck before she zipped away, a flurry of anxious energy as she went to school. Flopping onto his back, Adrian closed his eyes. He'd sleep a little longer. It was moving day, after all. Finally, 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 it was moving day. Well, there wasn't much to move, his father was upset and didn't approve it, which meant most of the stuff wasn't going with him. But he'd signed the lease a few weeks before with an NDA and got to pick up his keys in an hour. It was appropriate, as he was turning 19 this year, despite it taking longer than he thought it would. Okay, yeah. Nino would come over to help after his work study, but for now he'd take the two boxes of what he actually cared about and hit the streets instead of sleeping. If his father decided to get rid of everything else, so be it. He'd taken the extra time over the last year to shuffle his assets to accounts Gabriel nor Natalie could touch, and it paid off. They'd figured it out last week, but it was too late to stop. Sure, they still held on to payments from various contracts and Adrian aggressed the brand, but even the meager scraps he'd scavenged would be enough to live off of for the next year or so if he didn't squander it. Taking his boxes and plague, Adrian took one last look at his bedroom, then left without a word to the house he grew up in. Adrian hadn't accounted for rain, but it wasn't bad enough to worry about what was inside the box yet. His attitude was as sunny as his hair and as sweet as a cinnamon roll. He hopped on a train, and two stations later walked three blocks to stand in front of his new apartment building on Rue de Nancy that would put him back 900 euros a month. Checking in at the front desk, Adrian got his keys and made his way up to the 25 square meters of a studio apartment. Ah, yes. Bare floors greeted him as he dropped two boxes on the floor, arms numb after their adventure through the heart of Paris. Wow. Could his old bed even fit in here? Whatever. It was his. And under a false name, no less. If he was lucky, it'd be at least three months until someone tracked him here. This location was harder to slip in and out of as Cat Noir, but the alley behind the building was an easy place to drop in with a mask and leave as a famous model without being seen. He'd already done a security camera check and knew where all the worst angles were. This would be a good place for both Cat Noir and Adrian Agrest. Worst case, he'd use the window above his radiator. He couldn't help but laugh when he tried the shower. It blastered with cold water as it sputtered, not growing to a steady stream until after his butt cheeks were pressed against the glass trying to get away from it. It didn't help. He could barely fit in the shower as it was, so there was no chance of avoiding the water. Gritting his teeth, Adrian began washing his hair as his body quivered. It didn't get warm until he was nearly done, so he spent an extra minute getting warm before it nearly scalded him. Getting out of the shower, pink as a lobster, Adrian rubbed the steam off the mirror above the sink, just barely large enough to see his face in, when something caught his eye. Something moving caught his eye. 
a roach. There was a cockroach in the bathroom. Standing in only a towel, Adrian jumped onto the pedestal sink and screamed, mostly out of surprise rather than fear. The roach scuttled away, but Adrian couldn't unfreeze himself after the adrenaline rush. Okay, breathe. One foot to the floor, and then the other. It wouldn't be too hard. All he had to do was... Wait. Gravity shouldn't work like this. It wasn't the thought he expected to have as the pedestal broke beneath him, but it rang through his head as he landed on all fours, slipping on the damp tile until his chin hit the ground. He felt water droplets on his back, stunning him with a mixture of pain on his upper half and goose flesh on his rear as the droplets transformed into a running steam of cold cascading down between his butt cheeks. But instead of focusing on his newly broken sink or what was going to become an abrasion on his chin, Adrian could only look at the tiny intruder in front of him. There it stood, the smug cockroach, staring at him as its little antennae wiggled in the air a few centimeters in front of him. Pouncing the air, Adrian fled the bathroom, losing his towel by the time he made it to the other end of his 25-square-meter apartment. It took him a moment to realize he was exposing his family jewels in front of the lone window in his apartment. Yikes! He slammed his rump to the floor in a last-ditch effort to retain his modesty, because there was no saving his dignity at this point. Oh, why did he go with a ground-floor apartment? Of course there were roaches! Well, bruising his butt cheeks hadn't been on the itinerary for today, but here he was. May as well make the best of it. At least he'd had the common sense to slam the bathroom door, so at least the demon-spawned insect couldn't find him in here. The problem was that all of his clothes were in the bathroom. And his towel. He was crouching in his birthday suit, in a studio apartment, sopping wet and surrounded by a bare floor and walls. Ugh, Camembert. He was in trouble. Plague? Adrian called out, hoping his Kwame could hear him. Plague? He heard a grunt from the bathroom before his partner floated through the door, clearly disgruntled from waking up early. There better be Calibur. <sighs> Plague yawned. Hey, I need you to get me some clothes. Plague stared at his body before snickering. Oh, this isn't funny, Plague. <laughs> what happened while I was sleeping? Went for the fermented cheese instead of the regular stuff and blacked out? Please? Think of the cheese store. Five. Five rounds of camembert? Come on, Plague. We talked about this. I have to live on a budget now. No. Five minutes. Five minutes to get me clothes? Five minutes of me putting whatever cheese I want in a basket at Leon's cheese store. Adrian wanted to strangle the magical being. Why couldn't he do this for him as a friend? Also, couldn't he just order him as a master? More like five seconds. Twenty seconds. Five seconds. Fifteen? Plague tried. Ten. And only in the discount section. Deal! Plague cackled. Just say the magic words for clothes! Um... Please? No, peasant! Claws out! Oh. He'd forgotten about that. He had a super suit. He'd forgotten about it, and that mistake was going to cost him nearly a hundred euros of cheese. Claws out, he muttered begrudgingly. Embarrassed, Cat Noir made his way to his usual boutiques, only to realize what kind of prices they came with. Was he fated to live in the suit forever? How were clothes so expensive? Dodging the paparazzi, Cat went to Nino's house. 
Sure, it surprised him, but it's not like Kat didn't know he was carapace, and Nino lent him a shirt and jeans, no questions asked. Picking up a set of underpants from the corner market, Kat trotted back to his apartment, wondering what the gossip blogs would write by evening. It wasn't until after Adrian dressed himself in Nino's clothes that he realized he'd messed up. Nino was coming. Nino was coming to help him get furniture, and he was wearing the clothes he gave to Cat Noir. Ah, oh, Camembert. All Adrian wanted was to create a new home for himself, and somehow ended up in yet another bad luck predicament. Pulling out his phone, Adrian dialed the person he should have gone to in the first place. He wanted to get away with not telling her until after the move, but he'd given up on impressing the woman a long time ago. Marinette, he said when the line clicked, I need help. Chapter 39 Marinette Dupang Chang Not only had Marinette not known her boyfriend had plans to move out of his childhood home today, she also didn't know he was catzeridophobic. Shouldn't cats hunt cockroaches instead of being hunt by them? Also, she was pretty sure she'd seen him take care of a cockroach before. Was he only brave to them in front of her? I'll bring by the sweatshirt you left here the other day, she said into the phone, pinching the bridge of her nose as she knit her eyebrows together and sighed. Will Nino recognize the jeans, do you think? You mean the sweater you stole from me nearly two months ago? Details, details. Would you like me to drop it off or will you pick it up? I'll be there in a minute or two. Thanks, Bluebell. And there he was, donned in magical leather, rapping at her window like some German fairy tale. Here, she said, holding out the sweater. Don't I get a kiss first? His ears did that droopy cat noir thing as he stuck his lips out, more of a pout than a kiss request. She gave him a peck, lip tingles included, and handed him the blue pullover. Little did she know she'd be getting another call from her newly adulting boyfriend less than an hour later. Um, hello? She answered. Did they make plans? Shouldn't he be with Nino? Um, hi, uh, could you maybe... Adrian sounded out of breath. Could you bring as many towels as you can and get here ASAP? What? Like, dish towels or anything? Hurry! His voice was distorted by what sounded like Nino falling. The line disconnected, leaving Marinette to stare at the black screen in confusion. Sighing, she went to the linen closet and grabbed a few body towels, transformed into her masked self, and took off. She texted him in the meantime for his address, and even though his reply back was garbled, she got the message. She landed in the back alley behind his apartment complex, taking the four steps up to what was the building's ground level. Huh. This wasn't a bad landing spot. She could detransform here without any cameras seeing her. Good choice, Cat Noir. Good choice. Babe? The door was ajar, and although she could see, and although she could see the barren apartment through the crack, she couldn't tell where the incomprehensible yells were coming from. She brushed her knuckles against the door before letting herself in, only to feel a splash from beneath her feet. A splash? Water was trickling from under the door the grunts and shouts were coming from on the left. Oh, no. Marinette didn't know what happened, but one thing was for sure. Cats are no good with water. Boys? She said, opening the bathroom door. Got em! A pair of hands grabbed the towels from her before she could recognize them as Nino's. Here, here! 
Adrian said, his hands death-gripping a pipe in the wall. A broken pedestal lay beside him, its basin detached from it and instead clinging to whatever wall it could. What are you... Marinette began, observing the scene. She watched Nino wrap the towels around the pipe, probably not intending to tie Adrian's hands to it as well, but that was a consequence, and it worked for all of ten seconds, where the three of them held their breath. And then it didn't work. Water started dripping from the towel as the young men's faces fell in dismay. Marinette, sighing, pulled out her phone. Hey, Dad, she said when the line clicked. Can you help me fix a broken sink? Dad's coming, Adrian grunted, still pinned in a peculiar position under the hanging basin. Marinette walked over to the water heater, followed the pipe with her eye, and found the knob to turn. Here. A twist later, the boy stared at her in awe. You know plumbing? Nino chirped. I know how to turn off a water line. It's a basic life skill. Marinette didn't mention she learned it from trying to flush her Barbie doll heads down the toilet when she was six. Twelve minutes later, her dad was there, tool bag in hand as he stared at the boys with thinly pursed lips and raised eyebrows. Hello, Mr. Dupang. Adrian said feebly. Hello, Mr. Dupang, Nino echoed. Tom stared at the room, sighed, and opened his bag. Marinette eyed the discarded pile of clothes on the floor next to the sink, the probable first line of failed defense. How had he broken the sink anyway? Old age? Or did Adrian not know his own strength? Nino got back to cleaning up the floors with the mop they borrowed from the neighbor as Adrian became a second pair of hands for her dad, which left Marinette to do... nothing. She stepped out of the bathroom to walk around the flat. There wasn't furniture, and there wasn't much to walk around in, but she memorized the view from Adrian's small window and looked at the holes in the wall from where the last tenant had a TV. She turned her attention back to the grunts coming from the bathroom to see the men in her life trying to slide the pedestal underneath the damaged basin, stuffing a card from Adrian's wallet to fill the gap between them. Pragmatic, sure, but not a good long-term solution. Sighing, Marinette left on her own, knowing the conclusion they would come to in about six minutes and not wanting to stick around for it. Taking in the cooling September air, Marinette went to get her boyfriend an unplanned, but needed, housewarming present from the hardware store. She wouldn't be surprised if they duct taped the sink together by the time she got back. No, thank you. She might be dating a boy who was surely about to be very broke, but she refused to let him have duct tape appliances. 300 euros later, Marinette brought back a delivery ticket and a bag of, well, whatever, to her boyfriend's new home. Nino left in the meantime, leaving her dad and Adrian to chat a bit. Had I known Adrian was cat, I would have fattened him up even more, Tom boomed when she walked in. Um, what? Marinette flipped into panic mode as her eyes went from Adrian to her father and back to Adrian. Boxers, Adrian half-whispered, pointing to the pile of sopping wet clothes on the floor. Cat Noir boxers. Cat Noir boxers her dad ordered for Cat Noir last Christmas. Marinette couldn't believe it. Her dad figured it out? Her dad figured out Adrian was Cat Noir from a piece of clothing? When she spent literal years not knowing who he is despite having classes and superhero duties together? Well, that's one superhero identity down, Marinette tried to say calmly. 
she had to check something. Any idea who Ladybug is? If anyone figured out her identity but pretended not to, it'd be her parents. Right? No idea. I can see why you find her so cute, though, Tom said, nudging Adrian in the ribs. Ha <sighs> ha. Adrian gave a tight smile, still looking guilty from the identity reveal. You really figured out Adrian was Cat Noir in the half hour I was gone at the store? Marinette asked. What did you buy? Adrian changed the subject, looking at the receipt in her hands. A vanity, complete with a basin, drain pipes, and faucet. Babe. She could hear his throat tighten. It'll be here in about an hour. Babe! Adrian threw his arms around her. I guess I'll just have to stick around then, won't I? Tom asked, crossing his arms. Why are you in a Papa Bear pose? Marinette asked. Sorry, I still think of Adrian as just a friend and not a boyfriend. I got defensive for Cat Noir's sake. Marinette laughed as Adrian grinned sheepishly, running a hand through his hair. Well, how about you continue bonding with my boyfriend's face by grabbing us some food? I'll hold down the fort. Tom laughed harder, and Adrian shot her a thank you look before kissing her forehead. Like the whirlwind the day had become, the men left, leaving Marinette in Adrian's apartment. Smiling to herself, Marinette opened her bag of goodies and set to work, hoping he'd like the finished look. Marinette was going to turn this apartment into a home. Chapter 40 Adrian Agrest Whoa! When Adrian came back to his apartment with sweat, Nino, and a couch, the last thing he expected were bulbs draped across a ceiling and plastic bats stuck to his wall. Huh. Grunting, he and Nino made one last-ditch effort to get the love seat into the apartment before they both collapsed in it and admired Marinette's Halloween handiwork. Dude, Nino said, out of breath. Yeah? Adrian's tone matched his, winded. I love you, bro, but I'm never carrying furniture seven blocks for you again. Fair. His neck was damp with sweat, already soaking into the upholstery. Marinette popped out of the bathroom, wrench in hand. Your sink's installed. Adrian looked up at her, eyebrows raised but too fatigued to muster up motivation to get up and look. He was married to this couch now. Oh. He meant to say thank you, but his thighs protested too much to remember pleasantries. Tom emerged from the bathroom, munching on a sandwich square. He and Adrian had bought lunch, or rather dinner, together, but when the couch owner messaged him saying she was home and he could come pick it up, he jumped at the opportunity. He didn't want to pass up a couch like this for 20 euros. You don't have it in you to get a mattress, too. Do you? Adrian asked Nino, not bothering to look at him. Ugh. Yeah, I'll sleep on the couch. Who needs a bed anyway? Adrian shot a glance to Marinette, who stood smirking with her arms crossed. Big day, she said, turning to give her father a goodbye hug. You have no idea. Marinette waited until her father and Nino left to speak again. So this is the place we're going to bait Hawk Moth to. Her tone was a stunning, sullen contrast to her cheery goodbye. Adrian sat up, elbows on his knees as he looked up at her. She was always direct to the elephants in the room. Yeah, yeah it is. 
Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Although it was worrisome to bait Hawkmoth to an apartment complex, the alley in the back would be a great place to trap him, so long as they separated themselves from Mayura. Not right away, but yeah. This way, if something goes wrong, we can camp out in this apartment as Adrian and Marinette. She stared at him. Like, as a couple? Yeah. What about... Her face twisted, the same dark expression whenever this came up. It stabbed his heart. What about your girlfriend? She whispered. I'll break up with her. She scoffed, and he couldn't blame her. It wasn't the first time he'd said that. Okay. I'm not dependent on my father anymore, he said. It's been less than 24 hours, Kat. Besides, can you promise there was never a contract? She only called Adrian Cat when she was emotional. Huh? For the dating? Are you sure you didn't get certain modeling gigs because you're a contracted couple? Adrian hesitated. They'd done quite a bit as a famous couple for brands. Breakups happen all the time in this industry. I'm okay if it falls on me. He looked up at Marinette's soft confession. No, he said, voice hardening. No, I won't do that to you. I can take it. How could he convince I won't do that to Mama Chang and Dad? He could see her hesitation. Be careful about it, she said, holding herself and not making eye contact. I'm sorry I've done this to you. He knew better than to touch her. It's not your fault. Adrian slumped back into the couch after she left, still feeling gross despite his best efforts to lighten the mood. What a mess. He couldn't even call the fake girlfriend a bad idea because their popularity had skyrocketed and them breaking up would be an even bigger scandal than certain American couples. What a mess. Well, if it weren't for this mess, he wouldn't have been able to squirrel away funds for this apartment over the last year undetected, and yet... Did he regret it? Adrian wasn't sure. His girlfriend real girlfriend, was his priority, but he didn't want to screw over people he didn't have to. Frustrated, Adrian ran his hands through his hair, unable to talk to anyone about this, least of all Plague. His Kwame would choose whatever route or answer that led to more cheese. This would be so much easier if Nino knew about it. If all you knew about it. If... There's an idea. Adrian sat up, texting his girlfriend a name ferociously. Hopefully, she would be on board. Instead of a messy news site delivering the news to the audience with embellishment, they could give an exclusive to the lady blog under contract that every word would be approved before publishing. It would be a win for all three of them, right? Pressing the phone screen to his lips, Adrian allowed his body to relax, heart still thumping from the idea. Sure, he wouldn't be able to publicly date Marinette right away, but they could tell Nino and Alia, and that would help Marinette's mental state so much. It'd be nice for him too, but that wasn't Adrian's concern. And with a buzz back, his answer was confirmed. Do whatever you want. We were only supposed to date six months to begin with. You're the one who wanted longer. Adrian smiled to himself, pleased. God, all that drama for an anticlimactic ending? He didn't mind, but surely there was irony. Closing his eyes, Adrian fell asleep, lit by the bulbs Marinette strung over his room and the golden hour peeking through the window. Despite it all, today was a good first day in his new home. 
Chapter 41 Marinette Dupain Chang Marinette woke up the next morning to a text from Alia, too groggy to comprehend what it said. There were 24 texts from Alia and three voicemails. Um, what? She bypassed the messages and called her back, knowing it would give her more clarity than whatever mass texting mess Alia provided her. Girl! Alia answered, nearly taking Marinette's ear off. Girl! Um, yeah? Should she be scared or concerned? Adrian just broke up with his girlfriend! Oh. Marinette couldn't gauge her internal reaction. He'd actually done it? Yeah, Marinette, he gave an exclusive to the lady blog. An exclusive! Everyone is buzzing about it, and I'm pretty sure Chloe camped out in front of the aggressed mansion to comfort him, but Gabriel isn't letting anyone in. Well, there's a reason for that last bit, but clearly Nino hadn't told her of Adrian's new living quarters. It's not as though Adrian had the chance to tell her, either, as he no longer attended school. He was able to fast-track graduation and go straight into full-time work-study. Lucky guy, although she missed him sometimes. But it was for the better. It was easier to concentrate without seeing his face every day. Mm. Baronet grunted back, still wrapped in covers and wishing she didn't have to get out of bed. How are you not screaming over this? I'm not 14 anymore. Oh, don't act like you don't check out his jawline and butt cheeks every time we hang out. Oh, yeah. You know it's true. I do not check out his butt. Whatever you say, Alia sang, but you've totally checked out the booty. Marinette laughed, unsure if it was okay to tell her she'd kissed that jawline and spooned with that booty, but better safe than sorry. How about we all get dinner then? We can cook it ourselves. The guy's been single for all of a morning and you're already making your move? I like it. Marinette laughed and exchanged pleasantries before hanging up, groaning mentally about school. She didn't want to go, but she did want to graduate, if only it were in a few hours instead of, well, now. She'd be late, even if she used her miraculous. Throwing off her blankets, Marinette got ready, went to school, and drudged through her day. Halfway through science, there was another Akuma victim, which led to a fight with Carapace, Cat Noir, and herself. It explained why Alia was a little huffy during history. She'd wanted to fight, too. And then came work-study. Her work-study was easier than some of her friends. She just helped out at the bakery. But Adrian was at the bakery when she got there, apron on and helping out her father as he shaved frozen butter into dough. The scene was bewildering, and she caught her mother's eye as she glanced around the room. Sabine only gave a knowing smile and went back to balancing the till, making Marinette wonder if she'd missed an episode of her own life. Do you work here or something? Marinette asked, joking, but also dead serious as she pulled on an apron. Three hours an evening, he smiled tossing a cube of butter her way. She looked at her father, her mother, and then her boyfriend. Since when? Since now, he shrugged. I work too, groaned a voice from the corner. Marinette's eyes widened as she saw Plague, dusted in flour, before looking at Adrian in shock pros of an identity reveal, Adrian winked. The little fellow is great for cleaning the back of the ovens, Tom boomed, patting Plague on the head and slipping him a slice of cheese. Dumbfounded, Marinette turned to her mother. 
I'm surprised it took Tom this long to figure out, Sabine smiled, not looking up from the till. Mom! Marinette protested, although she wasn't sure just what it was she had a problem with yet. This way I can afford Plague's cheese tabs, Adrian said, hands folding the dough on the counter. No, you owe me the same amount of cheese as ever. This doesn't count, Plague chimed in. Okay, this had to be the strangest week of her life. Why not continue modeling, she asked thumb pressed between her eyebrows. Oh, father's throwing a fit, threatening companies so they don't use me right now. Adrian, that was horrible. What are you going to do? I don't know. Maybe start a YouTube channel? A YouTube channel? Yeah, you should grow fairly quickly considering my current fame. If she were a damsel in a Victorian novel, Marinette would have swooned in dismay. Couldn't she go back to a few days ago when he didn't know who she was and hadn't completely uprooted his life? What a headache. Oh, I got a bed, Adrian piped up. That's nice, babe, Marinette said, still thinking about dating a YouTuber. I still need a frame. Uh Uh-huh. My bed sheets are made of spider silk. Nice. And the comforter is Pusheen eating sushi, except Plague scribbled out the maki and drew camembert instead. Oh, cool. I'm literally on fire right now. Okay. Marinette's attention snapped as her father laughed, leaving her looking around in confusion. Had she missed something? You weren't paying attention, were you? Adrian asked, smirking at the dough. I'm sorry, what? You got caught in a mental goofy loop. Don't worry about it. Uh Uh-huh. Do you remember anything I said? She thought back to his last few remarks, face turning pink as she realized he'd trolled her. Well, time for work, she huffed, turning attention away from her embarrassment and more towards her work study. Adrian working added a new dynamic, but Marinette didn't mind. It was nice to be an open couple without a mask, and it almost seemed like Plague was their little pet as he floated around, exchanging hard-to-reach chores for cheese. Smiling to herself, Marinette realized that this was their future, at least for the moment. Spending time with friends at school, then working part-time at home with her boyfriend smelling like dough and vanilla. Ah, what a wonderful thing to come home to. Chapter 42 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Cat Noir felt the breeze rustling his hair, like a calm message meant to reassure he was doing the right thing, bad luck and all. This was it. This was the night they caught Hawk Moth. The last two weeks had been simultaneously the longest and shortest of his life. Not only had he moved out of his father's mansion without permission, he'd also been disowned, then rehomed by the Dupang Changs. It might be bold of him to even think it, but if he needed a place to stay instead of getting his studio apartment, they'd probably put him up. But then the planning came, with ink covered in flour in the kitchen or sneaking off to talk about the fine details behind her... Marinette's parents' backs. His apartment looked like something out of a conspiracy theorist's dream, its walls lined with papers and question marks and only Ladybug knows what else. And now, the cool, brisk air greeted him, 
ruffling his hair on the roof of his apartment complex. His baton rumbled, a notification from Rena Rouge. It was done. There was a gossip leak that Cat Noir lived on this block with photos. Now he had to wait, on guard, until the consequences came. Viperion sat behind him, his reverse already activated as he stared out into the city. Okay. They could do this. Hey. Cat Noir turned to Viperion, catching his grim expression. Yes? He'd asked. They'd just gotten started. What had gone wrong? This time? Viperion said, wrapping his hand around Cat's shoulder. Actually, no. Let me start from the beginning. Uh, sure? Don't use your cataclysm. Excuse me? First will come Aquaponic. Her Akuma is in her earrings. He sucked in a breath, furrowing his eyes as he thought about it. Sorry, no. It's in her left earring. If I don't clarify, bad things happen. Oh, okay. Cat's heart rate picked up. Then they'd done this already. They'd done this multiple times, and Viperion looks spent. But Alex wasn't here, so it couldn't have gone that badly, right? They still had a chance? While you're fighting Aquaponic, I'll go out and get cookies and camembert and store them in your microwave behind that dumpster. He jutted his chin down at the alleyway and under the mailbox on the corner of Rue de Nancy. The owner of the candle store will let you in to hide and rejuvenate, but make sure to take a selfie with her son first. Kat stared at him, remembering the weariness from his attempt at being aspic. How many times? He hesitated. Sixty-four. Blowing out a sigh, Cat turned back to the night. So, what else do I need to know? Viperion filled him in on Gardetto, Spyglass, Bouchine, Litter, and Parfume's abilities as Ladybug arrived and listened in, her face drawing tight as the crease between her eyebrows became more pronounced. What happens after Perfume? She all but whispered, looking at the shingles. Myura. Ladybug's eyes snapped to Viperion's. Why does that sound like a bad thing? His jaw went rigid, his temples flexing as he gritted his teeth. We'll catch up after Gardetto. I need you to focus on three things right now. Three things? First, you, more than anyone, need to rejuvenate as often as you can. Don't worry about transforming back into your mask right away when Gardetto appears. Trust your partners. You and Kat can take care of Aquaponic on your own, so I'll fill in Carapace and the others while you hold down the fort. What else? You'll need Multimouse for litter. Kat noticed an unspoken conversation flicking between Ladybug and Viperion that flickered an ugly feeling in his stomach like a gas oven that wasn't properly lit. What's the third? Kat interjected, breaking their eye contact by stepping in between them. Viperion smiled, tired but warm. Trust Paris. Excuse me? Ladybug asked, reaching out as Viperion stepped away. All of Pyrrhus is on your side, he said, his voice warm. Like I said, we'll catch up after Gardetto, but don't be afraid to accept help from people who don't wear masks. They have yet to betray you. Viperion all but fell off the roof, but Cat Noir wasn't concerned about that. His eyes searched for something else, someone else. Sure enough, a cackle cracked the air above them. The seaweed green girl who appeared didn't need an introduction. This was Aquaponic. Clearing his throat and gripping his baton, 
Cat Noir squared up, ready to fight. All of Paris was on his side. He would not lose. Chapter 43 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug Ladybug's stomach twisted. Viperion was correct about everything leading up to this moment, and Cat Noir had Mayura pinned, so this should be a good thing. This should be a good thing, but she could only feel fear. Bunnix was here. Where's Viperion? Ladybug whispered, trying to not draw attention. Bunnix lifted a finger, pointing at a slumped-over man thirty paces away. This is the last time, Ladybug, she said gravely, choosing her words carefully. You have to protect Cat Noir. Should I have him retreat? Ladybug asked, placing her hand over Bunnix's. If there was no more reversals, then they tread a thin line. Get him and his miraculous out of here? It's not his miraculous you have to worry about. What do you mean? When he finds out who Hawk Moth is... <sighs> Bunnix drew in a sharp breath. Please, Ladybug, you can't let him. You can't let him find out who he is. What do you mean? Ladybug stared at her. We're partners, she protested. We started this together, so... I can't tell you more. You'll know why when you see it. Ladybug looked away at a flash of light, and Cat Noir stood over a coughing Natalie Sancourt. Natalie? Ladybug felt the blood drain out of her face as she watched Cat's expression twist, his hands gripping the peacock miraculous so tightly she feared it may break. Natalie propped herself on elbows, coughing blood onto the ground, her eyes hollow and sunken. But Cat Noir? Cat's expression was empty. He stepped over her body, walking the miraculous to herself. I believe you're in charge of this, he said, handing it to her. Ladybug reached out to take it, worried more about him than the situation at hand when she felt a blow barreling into her. Knocked onto the ground head first, Ladybug's skull bounced off the pavement, lacerating her cheek despite the protection her suit gave her. Only a miraculous holder could harm a miraculous holder like that. You! She heard a voice bellow and opened her eyes to two pairs of feet as she tried to refocus her vision. How dare you? A pair lifted in the air. Cat. Cat Noir. Her partner, her boyfriend, was being held by the throat, dangling in midair by a supervillain, a super terrorist, and she couldn't do anything. Ladybug willed her body to move, but the world spun, and her actions only made her wretch onto the long, weathered concrete. If she wasn't careful, she'd detransform. Lucky charm, she grunted, grateful she'd followed Viperion's advice to not use it for Myura, but nothing appeared. Nothing appeared for her lucky charm. She looked up to see Cat Noir ripping the brooch off of Hawkmoth's chest, and she yelled, a contrasting timbre to Hawkmoth's own shouts. No! No! Bunnick specifically said to not let him learn of Hawkmoth's identity! And now she knew why. Ladybug stared, pinned to the ground by the limits of her own body, up at Gabriel Grest who still held his son unknowingly in a chokehold. Cat stopped fighting, his body going limp as he looked into their nemesis' eyes. Hawkmoth, 
Gabriel must have thought he was giving up or was out of oxygen, but no. This was different. This was heartbreak. And oh, oh, how her heart broke too. Her heart bolted out of her chest as Gabriel jutted sideways, loosening his grip on Cat to reclaim his balance. Carapace. Carapace had hit him over the head with the frying pan she needed during their fight with Bouchine. Rena Rouge caught Cat by the armpits, dragging him away with grunts, but he didn't fight her. Of all the ways she thought of capturing Hawk Moth, Carapace with a frying pan in the alley behind her boyfriend's flat wasn't one of them. That's for Adrian, Hawk Daddy! Carapace yelled, cuffing Gabriel's fists before tugging him upright. Mr. Agress didn't seem all that put together, groaning to himself as he was walked into the building. Ladybug realized she could move now and popped herself up to see to Natalie. Her heart nearly stopped when she couldn't find her pulse, only breathing again when Natalie let out a puff of air as she moved her. Dragging her inside, Ladybug observed the organized chaos in front of her. Gabriel was snarling at Carapace, who stood towering above him with a frying pan raised. Cat Noir stood facing the wall, not interacting with anyone, and Rena Rouge sat on the bed, knitting. This looked like some kind of stock image. Dragging her body in, Ladybug laid Natalie down on the bed beside Rena, grabbing Gabriel's attention for the first time since walking in the room. You, he grunted, jutting forward, only to be met by Carapace's trusty kitchen cookware. I hope Adrian knows he isn't getting this pan back, Carapace remarked. Adrian? Gabe looked up in both pain and confusion, but the door slammed open before he could continue his questioning. I cannot believe you just left him out there, Queen Bee yelled, causing everyone in the room to flinch except for Cat Noir, who just kept staring at the wall. Chloe? Ladybug said. How was she here? Had Cat? No. Bunnix. Bunnix must have... Chloe, darling, Gabriel began. Oh, shut up, loser. I don't work with trash like you. She stepped into the room to reveal Viperion's butt, his body flung over her shoulder like a sack of potatoes. I only work with the best of the best, and you sitting there like an outdated movie character gives you the same air of an abandoned 80s VHS tape that contains a movie accidentally recorded and commercials for products that literally no one cares about. Get lost. And you... Ladybug raised her eyebrows ever higher as Queen Bee jabbed a finger at her. Um, yes? She asked. You gave Monkey Boy and Math Brain a miraculous for this instead of moi? Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Here's your pet snake back. Queen Bee all but tossed Viperion at her, huffing as she glared around the room. Taking a few selfies, she flipped her hair over her shoulder and detransformed slapping the comb into Ladybug's chest. Her hands were full of transformed Luca, of course, who groaned slightly, but she was somehow able to keep the miraculous from dropping to the ground. Chloe, I... Ladybug wanted to say thank you. Anyway, later, losers. Don't forget to use a lucky charm, else my nail salon will be permanently closed, and that's a tragedy worth in Hawkmoth's all-purple ensemble. Ladybug stared at the door as it slammed shut, unable to process the whirlwind that just went through. Easing Viperion to the foot of the bed, Ladybug snuck another look at Cat Noir, dread creeping into her heart. He still faced the wall, 
his forehead resting against it, and she couldn't make out his expression from here. Oh, no. Bunnix was right. He shouldn't have found out. Not now, at least. Ladybug had been so preoccupied with saving Paris, she'd never considered she'd have to save her partner, too. Chapter 44 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir Cat Noir heard the shuffling of the room and his teammates' concerned voices, but he didn't pay them much mind. He didn't care what they had to say. In fact, he didn't care about much at all. He didn't care about the concerned look on Ladybug's face or Viperion passed out in his bed. He didn't care about the damage his father's head took, and he didn't care that he chose not to answer as he stalked out of the room and into the alley, ignoring the comments and questions instead of trying to please his friends and soothe anxiety. Walking the alley, Cat Noir saw a tube of lipstick discarded, a mere meter away from where his father tried choking him out. He reached up to his throat, considering for a moment if a miraculous ladybug could fix the hollow depression sitting in his chest, his nose, his shoulders, his existence. No. It was better to know. It explained a lot, actually. His father chose power over him. Well, that wasn't true. His father chose... <sighs> Whatever. He didn't want to think about it. Grabbing the spotted lipstick canister, Cat Noir left the alley, turning to go to the only place he could think of in such a mood as this. Cat Noir went home. Chapter 45 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug There was so much to do. There was so much to do that needed to be done that only Ladybug could do, but she couldn't do it. She couldn't do this without her partner, at least not until she knew he was okay. As far as Paris knew, there was still an Akuma fight going on because she hadn't been able to miraculous ladybug the city, although the damage wasn't too bad. She'd done half a dozen miraculous ladybugs last night, and the dawn's early light didn't reveal too much damage. They'd been able to take down Mayura quickly, and there wasn't damage from Hawk Moth's intervention. But still, she had to deal with it. She had to deal with what to do with Hawk Moth, and she had to decide what to do with Natalie, and she... She was the one who knew why Cat Noir reacted the way he did, and she couldn't tell anyone. Least of all Gabriel, who kept flipping between muttering and screaming in rage. So she did what any sane superheroine would do. She abandoned the supervillains with her partners and checked every place she could think of, looking for her cat noir. But alas, she couldn't find him. The bakery, the arcades, and even the side streets they fancied wouldn't give her the solace that would come when she'd find him, because she would find him, no matter what. Finally, her thoughts turned to what might have been an obvious choice to anyone but her. The mansion. The aggressed mansion. She could only imagine what the cold tile and echoing halls felt to him right now. With the stillness of that building, as though it preserved time itself, bring him peace? One way to find out. Ladybug took off for the mansion. The morning sun now bright, leaving its golden hour behind like any comfort she hoped to find elsewhere in the city. She needed him. Ladybug needed Cat right now, perhaps even more than he needed her. He certainly hadn't made this easy, but she couldn't blame him. 
As much as realizing her potential father-in-law was their arch nemesis was traumatic and took her off guard, she didn't have to sit and think about all the warning signs she might have missed. Oh, cat, where are you? Ladybug landed through the same window she used a month or so ago to see her boyfriend, but so much had changed. The room was trashed, with books and DVDs and brocade knickknacks galore, and Ladybug felt her chest tighten. Was this cat's handiwork? Or... <sighs> Taking a swift glance around the room didn't give her any answers. Cat wasn't here, and he wasn't going to be anywhere she could think of. After a weary night, it was time to accept that. Collapsing to the ground, Ladybug cried. This was too much. This was all too much for this teenage Ladybug. Chapter 46 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir Cat stared at his mother, preserved behind glass like a modern art exhibit. Mother? Mother was here? He touched the glass, cooler than it should be, as his breath fogged the barrier between him and... whatever that was... A wax figure, perhaps? Did he have his aunt model for it? He. Cat felt his heart twist, thinking about his father again. Why? Why? It didn't take a long adventure to find his lair. How had he been so blind to it? And who else knew? Obviously Natalie did, but what about his driver? The cleaning gentleman? The cook? The... Cat's whole body shook, but he couldn't tell if it was rage or betrayal or something else. This whole time, this whole time he'd slept under a villain, his villain's lair, and above his mother's memorial. Disgusting. Simply disgusting. Had he known? Had Hawkmoth known? No. He'd wanted the ring so terribly, he didn't mind becoming the most wretched father of the year. It made sense. Cat only took one psychology class so far, but knew that obsessing over something the way Hawkmoth did meant compromising your attention. Adrian was the compromise. He couldn't help but chuckle. His father gave more attention to Natalie, the assistant, than him, and he thought it was because she was such a nice person and that they were maybe, with a sliver of chance, falling in love. But no, she was his partner in crime, literally. Ugh, he wanted to wretch at the betrayal. The numbness, the denial of the news, was wearing off, leaving him as bitter as the lemon cupcakes he'd made for Marinette when he mistook baking powder for powdered sugar. He'd also used lemons that weren't ripe yet, so that was a mess of a creation that was a great example for his feelings. He was underprepared, overwhelmed, and straight-up embarrassed. Yeah, he wasn't just angry his father was Hawk Moth. He was embarrassed, and worse yet, Ladybug knew Gabriel was Hawkmoth as well. Ugh, oh, camembert. Cat Noir sat crisscross applesauce on the floor in his mother's sanctum, his elbows propped on his knees as he held his face. Why? Why? Why did his father... Ah! The answer lay in front of him. He wanted the miraculous to turn back time to before his mother got sick. That's why he didn't care what damage he left, even to his own son, because he could just turn back time. But why couldn't he just heal her in the present? The doctors couldn't figure out the reason why she got sick, so why waste the wish to go back in time? Wait, no. He couldn't heal her now because... 
Well, claws in. Adrian sat in front of his mother, throat tight as Plague groaned and began insisting for cheese, unaware of his surroundings. A garden? Plague asked, patting his belly. Perfect for a picnic. Where's the cheese? This wasn't a statue. This was his mother. Adrian felt his goose flesh pick against his clothes, as though even his skin wanted to escape the truth in front of him. His mother hadn't left. His mother wasn't in a life support facility. His mother wasn't dead. No. His mother was in front of him. He didn't think it was possible to feel even worse after learning of his father's truths, but each layer was more repulsive. Adrian swallowed bile and stood up, frustrated there was nothing he could do for his caged mother at this moment. Sure, there were actions he could take, but it was better to let the idea swirl instead of acting rashly. Adrian retreated to his room, comforted by the sound of his echoing footsteps down the hallway. The arched ceilings and distant Paris traffic was a tourist's aesthetic, so he may as well appreciate it for a moment. This was his childhood home, and he didn't know what would happen to it from here on out. But something about it pushed him forward. Even the morning light filtering through the tall windows seemed to encourage him. His room was not as he'd left it. It was ripped apart, torn from edge to edge in rage. His father? He couldn't think of anyone else. But why? Because something he wanted to control walked away? What an abusive maniac! In the light of the morning, he could finally see his old man for what he was. He'd worked so hard for his attention, and for what? He wasn't worth it. Tracing his fingers over the piano keys, Adrian saw the room for what it was. His apartment could fit in here several times over, and there was all the entertainment money could buy with a view people would rob for, but it wasn't anything like a home. It was barely a bedroom. If anything, a bed looked out of place in a rec room like this. Now, more than ever, Adrian knew that this wasn't his home. Not anymore. Nor had it been for a long time. Adrian went to the bottom desk drawer, pulling out the fabric that hadn't made it into the two boxes he'd taken with him on the day he snuck out of this building for good. The pink and blue thread... A Pusheen aesthetic stared up at him, speaking the truth he'd known for a long time with silence. Folding the cloth, Adrian slipped his truth into his back pocket and grabbed Plague off the piano, clearly unaware of the chaos and destruction surrounding him as he gouged on a hidden stash of camembert. What? The Kwame began. Come on, claws out, Adrian said making his way to his usual bathroom escape route. Without looking back, Cat Noir left his nemesis's lair, still angry and not ready to bargain with the news. He knew where he had to go to process this. Cat Noir went where his home is. Chapter 47 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette swallowed herself in pillows, so deep in her personal fortress of softness that an outsider would think it as a messy bed, no human included. It's fine. She didn't want to see the light of day anyway. Her eyes were too sensitive to bear it. She'd rather keep them closed, at least for a few hours of sleep. The Kwamis knew she needed it. Even Tiki insisted. But her eyes snapped open when the blankets moved without her consent, freezing her actions long enough that she couldn't squawk out a spots-on in time. Who? What? 
if it was her mom, it was best she didn't transform, but... Cat. Cat Noir climbed under the blanket with her, lit poorly with pink light, filtered through her comforter. How late in the morning was it for the light to be this strong? Cat? She cracked, knowing she and her face were a mess, but she made no effort to conceal it. He should be the one hurting, but she needed to hold him for her own selfish reasons. Hey. His voice was as gentle as she'd imagined it to be over the past few hours of self-caged torture, imprisoned in the loop of her mind that no amount of running could escape from. I'm so... so... sorry, she gasped, wishing she could keep it together. I'm here. He stroked her hair as she clung to his chest, shaking the mattress with her sobs. Cat rolled the blanket over her head, exposing her to sunlight as a wave of smell rolled out. Not the most attractive thing, but she was past the point of embarrassment. Focus on the good. I... 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 You don't need to talk yet. Take your time. Oh, this should be the other way around. How did it end up like this? Where did... Did you go? Shh. She felt him hold her tighter. I came home. That's all that matters right now. He was right. In some strange, roundabout way, everything else, although it wouldn't take care of itself, could wait. Maybe it was his words, or his scent, or his presence itself, but Marinette felt herself relax into him. A wave of relief so sweet nothing could compare to it. When Marinette woke up, she was still in his arms, drool on the sheets as he snored softly. <laughs> he snores. She didn't know that. Something about it was cute. She closed her eyes once more, surrendering to the warmth of the moment and the afternoon sunlight, her mind still clogged but her shoulders light. The next time she woke... Her hand was on his thigh as he sat against the headboard, her cat pillow propped behind his back as he played on the switch. Animal Crossing? She slurred. Yeah. Hmm. The third time she woke, Cat Noir wasn't there, and although she should panic, the hangover from tears dammed her thought process canals, unable to let her reason and rationality flow. She wasn't numb, but clarity washed over her, and she knew better than to sit in bed and wait for her partner to return. Stumbling out of bed, Marinette made herself shower, although she sat in front of the water, fully dressed, for ten minutes before sighing and undressing, once she was in the water, it was fine, but she couldn't bring herself to be concerned with how hard it was to get in. Thankfully, she'd brought her toothbrush in with her, because with her ever-swirling thoughts, Marinette wasn't sure if she'd have it in her to brush her teeth when she got out of the shower. As long as she was in here, she could function, a comforting routine guiding her in a way she didn't have to think about. But out there... Out there, she'd have to deal with the consequences of Marinette skipping school and Ladybug abandoning the rookies with Paris' terrorist and a deflated miraculous holder. Wait. No! Luca! Marinette nearly choked on the bristles of her toothbrush when she remembered. Luca! What happened to Luca? She twisted the water off 
unbothered that she hadn't rinsed out the conditioner and transformed without bothering to towel off. Luca! 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 She landed in front of Adrian's studio, praying to the past guardians everything was all right. She paused outside the door, jilted further by the silence. It was too quiet. What had her partners done? Turning the handle, Ladybug peered through the crack as though she was going to button-hook her way into the rectangular room that had no cover and little concealment. But even in her wildest dreams, she couldn't have imagined the scene inside. Gabriel Grest sat, crisscross applesauce, with cards in front of him as his hands were bound behind his back, in front of Cat Noir, who peered at other cards in front of him as Carapace shook a dice. Were they... Were they playing Oregon Trail? They were! They were playing Oregon Trail together! Well, judging by the sneer on his face and how he refused to answer questions, Gabriel wasn't playing in the organic sense of the word, but her partner set him up with a deck of his own and rolled for him, making him a player. No! Carapace exclaimed as Cat laughed. I died of dysentery! About time, Gabriel grimaced. It was clear this game tortured him, and something about that made Ladybug smile for a breath's length. Oh, hey, LP. Viperion. Ladybug cast her eyes to him, curled up in the corner with a guitar and a notepad. Will you shut him up? Gabriel barked. He keeps playing the same four chords over and over again. Completely tasteless. Calm down, old man, Carapace said, pushing his supplies in front of him. Do you want to draw a card or play a trail? Gabriel stared at the game for a long moment before humping his gaze away. There are no trails for me to play. You know that. Carapace laughed and drew for him, adding to the surrealness of the moment. Taking another look, Ladybug saw Natalie resting in bed as Rena Rouge scrolled through her tablet, pressing on the articles she wanted to read and typing out emails as Natalie dictated them. Oh, hey, Ladybug, Rena piped up, making eye contact. This is fascinating. I'm learning so much. Sugar and cookies? Was there a single sane person in here? Someone who would have a normal reaction? Oh, hold on, Cat said, waving at her before pulling out his baton. Good. Of course she could trust her partner to update her. Let me call Queen Bee. What? Ladybug's jaw fell open. That wasn't what she expected him to say either. She has a miraculous again? Yeah, I swiped it from your bedroom. You've been in her bedroom? Rena shouted, causing Natalie to flinch from the lack of distance between her ear and her mouth. She's buying us drinks. What do you want? Cat continued, unperturbed. Drinks, Ladybug echoed. Like, Starbucks? Yeah. Now? Well, you were sleeping and we didn't want to make a decision without you, so we decided caffeine was the best option. Besides, evil old Gabe here is refusing to use the bathroom, and honestly, I'm getting worried. Natalie snorted at his last sentence as the subject in question rolled his eyes. I will not allow myself to succumb to, Gabriel began. A crack John the centipede's call, call home. home. The room echoed as everyone but Ladybug finished his sentence. As much as Ladybug wanted to protest how the day had unfurled, she couldn't. She was the one who left, and even Cat Noir, 
who was truly betrayed by flesh and blood, returned to his duties before she did. A honey steamer, please, Ladybug said, succumbing to her environment. I'll have her pick up a sandwich, too, Cat said, turning his attention back to his baton. She's going to shoot something back about not being a servant. Well, we need some kind of normalcy right now. It'll keep us grounded. Yeah, Ladybug sighed, making eye contact with Gabriel for the first time since walking in. Yeah, we do. My vote is a selfie, Rena Rouge called from the bed. I take it back, Kat said putting his baton back. Everything is exactly as I'd expect it to be, all things considering. Ladybug laughed, and it felt good. After the night she had, to the point of pleading to every deity she could think of and a mess of a morning, draped in emotions she still couldn't process, Ladybug came to her acceptance. This happened. It was her job to figure out what to do next. But she wasn't alone. As always, Marinette, as Ladybug, had her partner Cat Noir by her side. That was more than enough. It was all she'd ever need. In some roundabout way, it was like Cat Noir was home. Chapter 48 Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir Truthfully speaking, Cat Noir's life was a bit of a mess. He'd gone from as near perfect as it could be in his power to just a chunk of oops literally overnight. Besides finding out his father was his arch nemesis who tried to kill him on multiple occasions, he'd also learned that his mother was kinda sorta alive. Still not clear on that part, actually, but he'd figure it out later. The denial and anger had come, but the latter hadn't left. Cat was so furious with his father that he was numb, as though the situation hadn't hit him yet. Clearly it hit Ladybug, but somehow he was more upset with the situation hurting his love than the situation at hand. Perhaps that's why he could go back to the apartment where no one, at the time of arrival, knew was his, and sit across from the man no one knew was his father and listen to the chatter of his teammates until Ladybug arrived. Perhaps it's why, when she did arrive, He kept it together, nonchalant like it was any other superhero gathering. Perhaps it's why, when Ladybug placed a concerned hand on his shoulder, he leaned over and kissed her hand before kissing her face, brazenly in front of everyone. I knew it, Gabriel grumbled, squirming under his bonds. Oh, darling, we been new. Rena said, collecting a bill from Carpace as he sighed. I knew I should have gone with less than 24-hour post-hoc daddy capture, Carapace muttered. Cat laughed off the implication that his best friends placed bets on when he'd kiss Ladybug as Viperian too forked over cash to Rena Rouge. If only they knew they'd been dating under the radar for more than a year— Although, he wasn't privy to that information until recently as well. (laughs) Ladybug also laughed, but it was much more forced than his. So, what do we do? Cat asked, turning his attention to her. Well... She trailed off, and he knew this was too much for her. Hey, he said. We decide together, okay? I'm back! The door snapped open, clattering as it hit the wall adjacent to reveal Queen Bee in the threshold. Had she kicked it? 
Sabrina was behind her as well, carrying her weight's worth in bags while Chloe, Queen Bee, sipped from a tumbler with a metal straw. Ah, that's why. Nice to see time hadn't changed much. Queen Bee's eyes narrowed when she saw Ladybug, grabbing a drink from Sabrina in a way that upset her balance and trotted over. Here, you must be parched from listening to the drabble of this room, she said. Uh, thanks, Ladybug said, taking the tumbler and reading the label. Wait, we haven't taken this loser in yet? Even though you're here? No, I'm... Ladybug hesitated. Debating. Girl, what's there to debate? Super terrorist, duh. What, you can't be rational because he's Adrian's father? Ladybug crossed her arms. What's that supposed to mean? Girl, please. Buzz off if you're going to pretend to not know. I've seen you look at him at events. The looks you give him is enough to make a woman flutter with jealousy. Cat sat, smug, as he listened to Queen Bee go off. It was that noticeable that she liked him? That made him incredibly happy, but he'd never volunteer that information. At least, not as Cat Noir. That'd be weird. She's right, he interjected. Just because he's a celebrity and a friend's father doesn't mean he's not subject to the law. The room stared at him. So that's it then? Rena Rouge interjected. We just hand him over to the cops? He shook his head. No, we take them in together. Clearly, the rest of the room didn't follow. Even Viperian's stare was suspicious. Cat, Ladybug began, putting a hand on his arm. Come on, folks, he said, standing up. This apartment was too crowded. Let's go. Where? Queen Bee asked, seemingly more annoyed that they weren't drinking her gifts than anything else. Where else? The Tibetan mountains. <gasps> you mean... Rena Rouge began, clapping a hand over her mouth. Ladybug might be the guardian of our miraculous, but we need to go to people with more experience as to what happens when they're abused. I chatted with Nuru a bit. Nuru crawled out from the bag he brought, trembling as Gabriel growled. And he's agreed it's the best course of action. Of course, Ladybug gasped. We should have asked the Kwame what to do. I'm guessing you want Daddy to pay for this, Queen Bee sighed, clearly ready to detransform to use her phone. No, Adrian will be more than happy to pay to put his father on a plane, Kat said, trying not to sound too smug as Ladybug narrowed her eyes. Glances flew across the room with a variety of reactions, but no one objected. Good. Meet at the airport in an hour? Ladybug suggested. Nah, I'll get a car. But Gabriel... You think I don't know people who won't question when money talks? For once, Cat was happy for his upbringing and underhanded tricks. Leave it to me, LB. It's my turn to miraculous Ladybug us out of Paris. He could see the concern in her eyes, but it was better not to dwell. She nodded, a sign of timid trust, and he left to go be, well, himself. It was time for Adrian to pull every favor he had. Chapter 49 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug as it turns out, Cat Noir had, in fact, gotten a private plane to take him, her, and the rest of the Miraculous crew to the Tibetan mountains. She didn't have the heart to tell him they could have used the horse Miraculous instead, but packed it nonetheless. 
It's not as though she was going to leave the box she was literally called guardian to guard behind, even if they did have their arch nemesis in custody. So, even though she hoped this wouldn't be a long trip, Ladybug detransformed, got dressed, and packed a bag in the comfort of her own bedroom before returning to the studio apartment. Grateful Tiki took the time to chat while she did so. But, as last time, Ladybug was wildly unprepared for her trip to the apartment. She walked in to Rena Rouge sighing and pointing to the bathroom, wherein she found Cat Noir curled into a ball and wrapped in the blanket she crocheted for him last Christmas. You okay, bud? she asked, crouching down beside him, careful not to touch. I forgot about the horse miraculous, Cat muttered. How many favors before you realized that? I blew my savings, Albie. Oh, How against it would your parents be if I tried moving in with them? Uh, Tom likes me, right? I can sleep behind the oven. I don't need much space. She knew he was trying to make her laugh in the light of a bad situation. You silly old cat. She peeled back the blanket enough to reveal his mop of hair, tussling it herself. It's been nearly 24 hours. Did you know that? And he still hasn't used the bathroom? Ladybug wrinkled her nose. I know, right? Cat laughed, taken off guard by her response but rolling with it. Seriously? I'll leave it up to you, Ladybug said, changing the subject. Would you like to take your favor plane or use the Miraculous? Miraculous. Ten times out of ten, he answered without hesitating. Oh, thank! She heard from outside the room. Rena Rouge had clearly listened in, but someone covered her mouth as she exclaimed. Well then, we best be going, Ladybug said, pushing her thighs as she stood up. Yeah. Cat reached for her hand. You sure you're up for this? She asked, knowing her voice was dripping with empathy in the worst way. Yeah. Hasn't hit me yet. Okay. His answer didn't make her feel any better, but she'd rather have him beside her than not. This way, she could make sure that if he did break down, it was by her side. Well, I guess it's time for me to use the horse, Miraculous. Why not get Max in on this? Nah, not because I'm some voice actor who doesn't want to do yet another voice with an already abundant cast in the next part, but because I want to hurry up and take care of this, you know? Skipping the details, Ladybug used the horse, Miraculous, and... After a quick snack for Kaiki, stood at the base of the Tibetan mountain where the guardians trained. Couldn't you, like, have gotten us a little closer? Queen Bee spat, still sipping from her Starbucks tumbler. How had she made it last so long? There's some kind of force blocking me, Ladybug sighed, looking at the staircase in front of them. The long long staircase that was something out of a martial arts cliché. She felt like Poe from Kung Fu Panda trying to sell noodles, and she hadn't even started. If you even think I'm going to willingly climb to my own, Gabriel began, stopping short when Cat Noir picked him up and flung him over his shoulder. Get comfy, Hawk Daddy, he said. Will you kids stop calling me that? Get off my lawn, Cat Noir said, imitating his grumpiness. Ladybug sent him a worried glance, and he returned it with a shrug. He couldn't possibly be this okay. But the cat she knew wasn't this good of an actor. So what on earth was going on? She hadn't taken psychology, but surely a therapist could explain this. Hopefully. 
at least. The rest of the group laughed, and Ladybug noted Viperion subtly activating his power. Good. He always seemed one step ahead. She hoped they wouldn't have to use it. But even though Gabriel was taken care of, albeit struggling, she turned an eye to Natalie. Even though her partners, or even herself, could take her up these stairs, she worried the constant jostling would worsen her condition. It would be best to leave her here, guarded, and let the monks attend to her. Queen Bee, Rena Rouge, you're... Ladybug began. Ah, no. Bad idea. Sorry, Queen Bee, Carapace, and Viperion, you stay here with Natalie. Cat, Rena Rouge, and myself will climb the stairs with Gabriel. Roger that, Rena said. You're leaving me on babysitting duty? Queen Bee questioned. Chloe, Ladybug said, stepping forward and taking her hands. This is one of the most important jobs I've asked of anyone. I'm trusting you with this. The words were cliche, but they worked. Fine, if you insist, I guess, she mused, mouth puckered at the implied compliment. Well played, Cat said as they began their ascent. Gabe decided to be a deadweight, so Cat and Rena teamed up to carry him like a roast, one holding him by the feet and the other at the shoulders as he wore an ever-persistent frown. Sighing, Ladybug nodded and kept walking, grateful the suit alleviated a lot of the oncoming physical weariness. They were in for a long climb. One foot in front of the other, Ladybug. You're almost there. You're almost to the end. Chapter 50 Alia Césaire as Rena Rouge Rena Rouge eyed her partners with a keen eye. They were dating. They had to be. The tension between them cooled off over the last year, but these past three weeks had rekindled something. She just wasn't sure what. Even though they should be celebrating, Ladybug kept shooting worried glances at Cat Noir, who, although he definitely started flirting with her again, was somewhat distant and cracking jokes at Gabriel Agrest's expense. Was it because he was the father of a friend? Because that friend suffered at the hands of him, both in home and as a target of Akuma victims? Rena couldn't figure it out. At times, it seemed like they were dating— but she'd imagined Kat to be all over her if that was the case. Something was off, right down to the way they were treating Gabriel. They were too careful with him. And had anyone contacted Adrian about this yet? It would hurt, but he deserved to know. When she brought up that they shouldn't be using Adrian's flat to keep a supervillain, Kat shrugged and said, don't worry about it. And Rena hadn't had it in her to protest, especially while getting a private lesson from Natalie about online marketing. Arg, what was it? What was she missing? She hadn't been able to overhear much through the bathroom door, especially because Carapace fought her from eavesdropping. The question was so frustrating that she found herself unable to concentrate in the temple, the holy grail of miraculous information that could answer questions she'd had for years. Arg, what was it? What was she missing? Left alone in the courtyard garden, Rena Rouge crossed her arms and thought. And thought. And thought and thought. Perhaps it was the inability to figure it out, or the overwhelming curiosity that she couldn't wrestle back, but Rena Rouge stood, knowing she was about to betray Ladybug's trust. Ever so carefully, and ever so quietly, Rena padded to the room she'd seen them enter and cracked the door, peeking in ever so suspiciously. Nothing could have prepared her for what she saw inside. 
Cat Noir was on his knees, pressed into Ladybug, sobbing like a child. The scene upset her so terribly, it took her a moment to realize no one else was in the hardwood floored room. It was just them. It was just Cat Noir crying into Ladybug's arms like a disheveled boy, bent over with whatever sorrows he was wrestling with like they were demons. This was not for her eyes. This was not something she should see. But something about what she bore witness to stirred emotions inside her, and not proper ones. She closed the door as his sobs echoed, not worried that someone might hear it. The way Ladybug rubbed his back and his tight clutch on hers. There was so much more than a sidekick like her would ever know. An hour passed, and then an hour more, but Rena didn't dare look inside the room again. She instead made herself useful, finding monks and telling them about Natalie. An hour later, she found herself in a sitting room with Carapace, Viperion, and Queen Bee, but Ladybug and Cat Noir were nowhere to be seen. She couldn't blame them. Whatever happened, it wasn't good. Looking like her soul decided to leave her body, Ladybug staggered in. Okay, she said, her voice hoarse. Let's go. Ugh, finally! Queen Bee exclaimed. Did Cabe ever pee? Carapace piped up. Ah. Uh, Yes, they took him to use the facilities, Ladybug said. Viperion put a hand on Ladybug's shoulder, a look of concern on his face. Where's Cat Noir? He asked, his voice gentle enough for Rena to realize he noticed her pink eyes. He's... Uh... Ladybug took a moment to compose herself. He's not coming. Rena could tell she was barely keeping it together. Okay, she said, clapping her hands. Sounds good, folks. Let's go. Ladybug gave her a slight nod and, thanks to the power of the miraculous, went back to Adrian's apartment. Queen Bee and Carapace left right away, but Rena and Viperion hung back with Ladybug. Rena had her own reasons, but she was sure Viperians weren't as selfish as her curiosity-stemmed ones were. Is Cat all right? Viperion asked, his voice forever gentle. Yes. Ladybug blinked back a new wave of tears. It's better if he doesn't come back, for now. Rena bit back question after question. Her reporter instincts were roaring for the scoop, but she knew better. She needed to be a comforter, not an antagonizer. And, well, only Ladybug was here, so that's the only one she could help. Sweeping Ladybug into a hug, Rena Rouge sent a silent prayer to whomever was listening. Please, please let Cat Noir find the comfort he needs, too. Chapter 51 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug Ladybug was glad no one on her team asked questions, even Rena Rouge. The evening had passed leaving her exhausted from the responsibilities that came before her personal life. First and foremost, as recommended by the Order of the Guardians, she transported Emily Agrest to them with the barrier unblocked so she didn't have to haul a body up those steps again. Then she collected the miraculous from her teammates, texted her parents, and finally, finally went back to Adrian's apartment and detransformed, all but crawling into his bed, too exhausted to cry. Even so, she wept. 
Marin had wept, and there was nothing Tiki could do to comfort her. They'd done it. They'd finally achieved their goal, together, but it felt like nearly everything had been ripped away from her. Unexpectedly, Marinette got to keep the miraculous. She was still the guardian. She still had Tiki and her memories, but she'd lost everything. She'd lost Cat Noir, and somehow he was everything. She'd take Akuma fights and traumatize citizens every single day for the rest of her life if it meant having him back, and saying, however selfish it was. But he was right. Paris wasn't home for him right now. At least, not anymore. But he was hers. What did he expect her to do without him? Days passed. Then weeks, and finally, months. Months passed, leaving more questions than answers. Everyone wanted to know what happened to the aggressors, but it was left to speculation. Kidnapping? Well, sort of, although Marinette would never tell the press. A long vacation? Also partially true. Gabriel's famous seclusion finally turned suicidal? No, although that article brought police to the manor. No one, not even Alia, knew the truth besides Marinette, and even she couldn't ease her friend's tears about what happened to him. She finally, as Ladybug, made the rounds to tell Nino and Alia that she made sure he was safe. It wasn't a lie, but... It wasn't the most truthful statement she'd ever spoken aloud. Marinette spent her nights gracing her pillowcase with tears as Adrian's apartment sat, fully furnished but empty. Finally, she decided to do what Adrian had, finish school online and at an accelerated pace. She also convinced her parents to let her move out, and of course there was only one place to move into— even so, her boyfriend's flat didn't feel like home. Ex-boyfriend? Marinette wasn't sure, but at least it felt better than staying in the bakery. She loved her parents, but it felt off staying there now. No, this was the better choice. Surely it was. As time passed, she learned to cry less. Seeing his face, Adrian's face, still stung, a bittersweet heartthrob that she clung to, or perhaps even yearned for. She'd learned, in one of the articles of a magazine Adrian was featured in, that sometimes trauma victims don't break down until they're safe. Be it a car accident or domestic violence, those affected seem to be collected until the threat is removed, and then they break down. Apparently, it's some kind of defense mechanism the body or the brain puts up. Their shields stay until they aren't needed, and the dam they held back bursts through, even if they let a little trickle through during their trauma. Was that what happened to Adrian? How he was fine until the Order took Gabriel and he disappeared behind oak doors? The echoes of his sobs still haunted her, a plague when nightfall came. Was he doing all right? Was he still at the temple? Marinette had to resist the urge to use the miraculous to check up on him. Sometimes it was better to not know. She wanted him to be happy. She did, but seeing him happy without her might hurt even more than her current frustrations. More months passed, and after much speculation from the press as to Ladybug's whereabouts, Marinette began to face the public again, without a cat-eared partner by her side. She teamed up with her past partners to host events and do fundraisers or assist the first responders in dire situations. It helped a bit, took the edge off, but her life still seemed unbalanced. Her life was imbalanced without a cat noir. Sure, she missed Adrian. How could she not? But this, she thought, 
was worse than a breakup. She'd never experienced a breakup before, but surely these cruel emotions that grasped her would have left her alone by now if he hadn't been her dual-sided partner. If he hadn't been her home. A year passed, and then another. And although it still hurt to think about a tender scar that blemished all of her memories of him, Marinette found it easier to bring up Cat Noir. She stopped dodging interview questions about what happened to him, and she stopped tearing up in the middle of the night. She still lived on her own, in his old apartment, but it was hers now, in every sense of the word. And finally, on the night of her twentieth birthday, Marinette went to blow out her bedside candle and go to bed, tired from the day, when she heard a rustling from behind the window that didn't sound like a pedestrian or traffic. Moving quietly, she pressed herself to the frame, unable to see anything unusual through the screen letting in the night air. Hello, princess. A figure spoke, a shadow she hadn't seen from the other side, and like any sane person would do, she reacted in self-defense. Marinette sucker-punched the person on the other side of the screen in the throat, tearing the screen itself before slamming the window closed and locking it. Grabbing a baseball bat, she made it all the way to the bathroom to transform before she realized the shape of the figure she'd punched. They were wearing cat ears. Her hope betraying her, Marinette carefully stepped back, moving from heel to toe on the floor. There was no way. There was no way he would be here. Not after all this time, right? Like he said, there was nothing left for him in Paris. A comment that she'd spent far too many hours in therapy for. But sure enough, framed by the window, Marinette saw something, or rather someone, that brought tears to her eyes. Gasping for air on the other side of the glass was her partner. Cat Noir was on the other side of the wall. Chapter 52 Adrian Graham Devanely as Cat Noir Ah, Camembert. Cat Noir grasped his throat as he gasped for air. Cat! Marinette unlocked the window and slid it open, eyebrows raised. He took note of the baseball bat and had to stifle a laugh, mostly due to pain. I deserve that, he wheezed. What are you? She began, the bat still in hand. Can I come in? He could see the hesitation in her eyes. He couldn't blame her. She wasn't the one who left, after all. She was the one who'd been left. Would she open the door for him? Would she open the door and then maybe, maybe open her heart? He didn't think himself foolish for hoping so, but he couldn't blame her if she didn't. To his relief, she nodded, disappearing from the window. He went inside the building and knocked on her door to hear a delightful, Come in! Well, perhaps it was only delightful to his ears. He opened the door to see Marinette, baseball bat no longer in hand, filling a tea kettle. She'd put on a cardigan, and perhaps it was the gesture, or perhaps it was the time that passed. But she was cute. Well, no. She was gorgeous. He planned on knocking at the door like a normal person as Adrian, but when he saw her through the window, he hadn't been able to help himself. Years passed, but she still owned his heart. How could he not greet such a gorgeous being the moment he laid eyes on her? It's been a while, he said, standing in the doorway. She'd changed. Her body, her demeanor... Even her hairstyle. It was all... different. She scoffed at the remark. 
you've gotten taller, she said, reaching into the cupboard. Yeah. Silence passed, and he kicked himself for using a one-word answer. Have a seat, she said, filling a cup with water and stirring. He did as he was asked, trying to not look around the room at the changes she'd made. The bathroom door was open, and he could see through the sliver of a gap the vanity she'd bought for him years ago, no longer looking new. Time had passed here as well, no matter how frozen his memories were. Thanks, he said as he received the cup. Hot chocolate. She'd always made this when he came back to her place after an Akuma fight. He didn't deserve her. He never deserved her. And she didn't deserve this. How have you been? He asked, unable to speak his mind. I'm better now. Good. He regretted the one-word answer as soon as it filled the space between them. Great. Why was he like this? You? She continued. I'm... He debated his answer. Would the truth hurt her? Whole. Clearly it wasn't the answer she anticipated, but after a few blinks of surprise, she let down her shoulders. Good. Her response came with a smile and Cat felt himself melting. Oh, dear. After all these years, he was still weak for her. That's a problem. Dating anyone? The question came out before he could stop it, and it took courage to not look away. He had no right to be hurt, no matter the answer. He'd been gone for three, now nearly four years, and it'd be no surprise if she dear johned him like an LDS missionary. I've gone on a few dates. She looked away. Oh, how desperately he wanted to ask if they'd worked out. But no, this wasn't his place. He was the one who left, after all. You? The question took him off guard. Have I dated anyone? You could, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. She was doing a relatively good job at keeping a poker face, but her smile was gone. He could tell she didn't want the answer. Uh, no. No, I, I haven't. Oh. Silence passed between them, and he noted Tiki staring from the corner, arms crossed. Claws in, he said, letting Plague go free. Are we at Leon's cheese store yet? The Kwame groaned, not bothering to take in his surroundings. Plague! Tiki exclaimed. Or perhaps scolded? He wasn't sure. Marinette's sigh caught his attention as the Kwamis tried to hug, but ended in a chase. Adrian didn't mind. It meant they could watch them instead of trying to fill the silence but the moment didn't last. What are you doing back, Cat? Marin had asked, adjusting her cardigan in a way that made it seem she was holding herself. Cat. She didn't call him by his name, even though he'd taken off the mask. But there it was, the question he dreaded. He could see, in her eyes, the answer she wanted. But it wasn't his to give. No, his return wasn't chivalrous or grandeur in the slightest. In fact, had he not messed up, he might not have come back at all. I, uh, no easy way to say this. I lost the butterfly miraculous. 
Her eyebrows shot up, and even Tiki stopped chasing Plag at the news. You what? Oh no. Here it comes. Yeah, I... You lost the miraculous that can manipulate other people and that someone used for years to terrorize Paris? That miraculous? You lost that miraculous. If Adrian could melt into the chair, he would. But he sipped the hot chocolate instead. So, uh, what's new with you? Marinette pinched the bridge of her nose, her eyebrows knit together. That's why you came back? Her voice wasn't as harsh as he thought it'd be. Adrian lowered his head. Yeah. Adrian Crest, she said, arms crossed and shaking her head as she stared at her mug. You- That's not my name. He interrupted. She looked up, body language still cross, but with a softer expression. What do you mean? Marinette, I... He ran his hand over his face, temples to chin. My mom, she's... How could he explain it? She's awake. She dropped her angry facade leaning forward and reaching for his hand. Adrian, that's... So I took her name. I don't know that one. Graham de Vanily. Isn't that your cousin's? He kept the maternal name as well. Marinette squeezed his hand lightly. Well then, she said, inhaling sharply. Pleased to meet you, Adrian Cram de Vanoy. It's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is, she laughed. Oh, her laugh. It'd been years since he heard it, even though this one was closer to a giggle. His heart ached for her, regardless of how selfish it was. Anyway, I, uh came to let you know. I'm taking responsibility for it, of course, but I figured you should know, considering you're the, uh, the guardian. The handkerchief in his pocket all but burned him, torturing him to confess. She nodded, taking her hand away. Well, that's to be expected. Plug, claws out. Marinette looked confused for a moment before she realized. You're leaving? Yeah, it's... it's for the best. He drained the cup, setting it down on the table with a clink. And I wish you the best, Marinette. You're an idiot. He'd been prepared for her to scream or cry or curse. He'd been prepared for all sorts of reactions. But this collected, cross-armed marinette in a soft-looking cardigan took him off guard. I know. An absolute fool. Yes. And a coward. Yep. I loved you. No words had ever left him so guilty. I did too. It was selfish to say. It was so selfish, and all it would do would hurt her. I know, she said before he could continue his thoughts. Her voice cracked just like his heart. He stood up without a word. Thank you for your time. In an unexpected turn of events, she caught his wrist. Where do you think you're going? She asked. It came out more of an accusation or a bark. Uh, home? Well, no, that wasn't right. Back to 
We're partners, Cat. We're going to look for it together. Something he'd locked away in his heart trembled. No, no, we're not going to unlock that. Not here, not today. But I... Besides, she said, standing up and bringing the dishes to the sink. I'm the guardian, remember? It's my responsibility to know where the miraculouses are and to keep the holders in check. He could tell there was no arguing. She was right. So where do we start? It was an admittance of his defeat, but he knew deep down he didn't want to win the argument. With a good night's rest. Huh? And that's how Cat Noir, former superhero of Paris, found himself in his ex-girlfriend's childhood bed, surrounded by the smell of bread and the warmth of a comforter as Marinette lounged on the chase below. Surreal, but welcome. When his stubbornness finally receded, Cat allowed himself to drift into the feeling swaddling him. He remembered this. He remembered what this was. This is what it felt like to come home. Chapter 53 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette cracked an egg into the cast iron, humming to herself as the morning light filtered through the window above the kitchen sink. Her parents were downstairs doing bakery business things, so she had the floor to herself, although her father's laughs echoed up on occasion. She heard the stairs familiar creak and didn't bother to turn around. These eggs wouldn't cook themselves, after all. You can take off the mask, you know, she said, betting on her guest wearing it. I'd, uh, rather keep it on, if that's all right. But what about Plague's breakfast? Did she want him to take the mask off? Truthfully, no. She wasn't sure she could handle seeing Adrian right now. Kat's physical changes were enough to make her cry last night, albeit into a pillow and without anyone's knowledge. The changes weren't a bad thing in and of themselves. If anything, he'd gotten hotter, but it was a testimony he'd done it without her. Cat Noir became an adult without her. She had to wonder if he felt the same way when he looked at her. Did he regret it? No, best not to dwell on what-ifs and should-haves. She didn't make an effort to visit him, either, so she had no right to call him out on it. Besides, with the horse miraculous, it would have been easier for her to visit him than the other way around. He already ate, he said, walking over and filling the space beside her. May I? He gestured to the pan. Uh, sure. To do what? To her horror, he split the yolk open, the goo sizzling as it trickled off the white and into the pan. Humming to himself, Cat picked up the spatula and twisted his wrists, mixing and seasoning and... Oh, that looks quite good, actually. This is... She began. A trick I picked up on my travels. Try it. Hesitating, Marinette took a bite. Oh. This was good. A cat, she began. I learned it from this Samaritan in Pakistan. Pakistan? Why was he in Pakistan? Yeah. He turned his attention to salting the cast iron, giving it a good scrub before setting it upside down on the oven's open flame. Where, she didn't mean to hesitate, where have you been all this time, Cat? Here and there, he said, flipping the pot over and rubbing oil onto the surface. Spent a couple months in Italy with a piano professor. Spent an entire year in India, actually. Got a pet of koala in Australia, too. Can you believe that? Oh, and I went to Dubai. 
It was probably the most surreal trip I took. Oh, and I learned how to make harps in Spain. Double action, that is, not lever harps. Although, so you've been traveling. She cut him off. All that time and he didn't bother to visit? Even when he went to Spain? To Italy? A stone throws away? And he didn't... She cleared her throat, trying to clear her mind in the impending tears. My mom, he answered, turning his back to her. She loves it. Uh, traveling, that is. Well, now Marinette felt like a jerk. Your mom? Oh, Marinette, you'd love her. He wiped out the excess oil and opened the cupboard, a gesture that proved their former relationship. He knew where everything went. Did you... Marinette began. Did you ever... She couldn't bring herself to ask. What was that? Did you ever visit Japan? She knew he wanted to in the past, so it was a good deterrent. About that. He wrung his hands before taking the seat across from her. That's, uh, where I lost the miraculous. The butterfly miraculous. Yeah, the butterfly miraculous. She stared him down over her mug of orange juice. So? What happened? Cat shifted in his seat. I started the night in Tokyo, but... So you lost it in Japan? Well, I... Uh... Woke up next to a cow. Oh. Um, that's a bit of a plot twist. In what country? Uh, still Japan. Cat raised his hands like he was meditating. Hokkaido. So you lost it somewhere between Tokyo and Hokkaido? Yep. Did you give it away drunk or something? No! Cat just about yelled, protesting. I don't drink. He crossed his arms. And I don't know. So you went to bed in Tokyo and woke up in Hokkaido? He sucked his teeth. I was making takoyaki at a workshop one moment, then lying next to a cow the next. Oh. Marinette let the news sink in. Oh! Oh! By the way, a cow nose? Very moist. A cow nose? That's how I woke up. I got nuzzled by a cow nose. I think maybe it thought I was grass? Uh, we were both confused. I stared at its big brown eyes for a solid half minute before screaming and sitting up. Ew! <laughs> Marinette laughed, flinching at the thought. Seriously? Big brown eyes? What's with that description? Were you gazing into them or something? He laughed. I wouldn't want to make up something like that even if I could. Do you think someone stole it? Her tone brought seriousness back into the conversation. Cat sighed. I don't know. Then how do you plan on the temple? The temple? This is going to sound harsh, but Marinette... He scratched behind his neck. I'm more qualified to be the guardian than you are now. She blinked twice, transforming her softened expression into a hard glare. No! I'm not trying to take them away from you. He lifted his hands again, palms toward her. But I need to borrow them for a bit. They can help. Over my dead body, she said, standing up to snatch the still dirty spatula and wash it at the sink. It also meant standing centimeters away from him. Feeling her cheeks flush as she checked him out from habit, Marinette turned her back on him. He leaves. 
for years, traveling plaque knows where with all the opportunity to visit, only to return and basically ask for the miraculous? Saying he'd be better after losing one? Oh, <laughs> she shouldn't have let herself cry month after month. You said we'd do this together, right? He had a point. He had said he was going to leave last night after letting her know, but she insisted he stay. The pox is upstairs, she sighed, bumping her fist against his chest before going to get her dishes. This cursed cat. I'll follow you up, he said, a bit softer than their conversation was. Knowing she was being stubborn, or even petty, without much of a reason, Marinette cleaned up their meal in silence, dragging herself upstairs as Cat trailed behind. Ugh. Okay. Time to go plan an adventure with her ex-boyfriend. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> yeah, right. Everything would go wrong. Chapter 54 Adrian Cram de Vanerly as Cat Noir Cat stared at himself in the mirror, knowing he should de-transform. He should. He should do it. Two words. Two little words and the mask would come off. But he couldn't do it. Cat couldn't bring himself to be Adrian in Paris. Not anymore. The concept of being Adrian aggressed was too far-fetched now. It was like a role he'd played long ago, and now the costume didn't fit. At least he had his mother's eyes. That was some solace, at least. But the jawline Marinette teased him about, and the cheekbones that made him thousands upon thousands of euros. He didn't want to see them. He didn't want to see his father, and yet he stared at the man in the mirror whenever he checked his phone or used the restroom. No, it wouldn't do to be Adrian Agrest in the city. It wouldn't do to be Adrian Agrest at all. Cat, you okay in there? He heard Marinette's call for him and slapped his cheeks. Okay, he muttered to himself. You can do this. He could work with this absolutely gorgeous perfection of a human being and not fall for her yet again. He'd already done it twice, albeit accidentally, so he knew better than to fall for a third time. There's no way she'd take him back, so why set his heart up for failure? Yeah, just pooping, he called back. He heard her stifle a laugh from the other side of the door. Make sure you turn the fan on then. Will do. Okay, time to go make a battle plan with his ex. Easy peasy. Not a challenging thing to do in the slightest. He unlocked the door, flipping the fan on to avoid suspicion, and left the tiled anxiety cave. Anything else you need here in Paris? Marinette asked, grabbing a pair of sunglasses and putting them on. Were they the change in sunlight kind? Suddenly, they were a normal pair of glasses. Hmm, was this a new blue light item? Uh, no, not that I can think of. Great. Well then, Kalki, full gallop. Cat hadn't seen her in the Horse Miraculous before. Sure, it wasn't his preferred aesthetic, but she was hot in it. Ah, <sighs> Camembert, stop thinking about her like that, Cat Noir. Let's go, Marinette said. Marinette? He wasn't sure what to call her right now. Oh well. She was still his Marinette, 
no matter how she transformed, both in attire and over time. Where are we going? he asked, reaching for her hand. She hesitated at his touch, cutting his heart like a knife. Oops. Even so, she took it, wrapping her fingers around his palm. Isn't it obvious? Hokkaido. Hokkaido? Japan? I passed geography sitting in front of you, if you remember. The glasses hid the twinkle in her eye, but he could see it anyway. Let's go, Kitty. He took her hand and, like magic, they were in Sapporo. An elder lady stared at them from across the room, slack-jawed until Kat gave her a small wave. Uh, sumimasen, he said, tightening his grip on Marinette's, Lady Pegasus? Oh, whatever, hand. They dashed outside before the grandma could grab her broom to sweep them out of her home. A few baton twirls and rooftops later, they were far enough away to sit and chat. That's weird, Marinette said, taking her sunglasses and detransforming to look at them. What is? This isn't where I wanted to go. Oh? It's not like he told her where in Hokkaido he'd woken up. It certainly wasn't here, in the middle of a city. Yeah, it's like... What did you envision? Kat didn't mean to cut her off. The butterfly miraculous, of course. Kalki interrupted. You can do that with these? Marinette asked. Use them to find something? Not quite. The Kwame rubbed her tummy. How about we go get something to eat and talk about this more in depth? Kat suggested, noticing Kalki's body language. They got down from the rooftop to be met with stares as they walked the street. On their way to a restaurant he was sure Marinette would like. She'd always been into interior design and sales setups when it came to food and dining aesthetics. Kat, you should really take that off. Marinette said, aware of the stares they were getting. Would you rather walk around with a blonde Frenchman they mistake for an American or a cosplayer? A cosplayer? Trust me, we'll get less attention with me in a mask. I doubt it. I'm getting my fair share of stares, too. That's because you're a half. They won't approach you for pictures the same way they would for me. She didn't answer right away, and he felt a bit bad about how he phrased it. It was true, but he could have found another way to say it. People will try to figure out what I am, no matter where I go, huh? It doesn't help that we're conversing in French and not English. Don't be suspicious, Marinette whispers, saying. Huh? You haven't heard that before? Is it a song? It's from a TikTok. A what? She stopped walking. You don't know? About TikTok. What is that? A band? Kat could tell from her blinks that she wasn't expecting him to guess. I thought you'd be all over it, she said, beginning to walk again. I might be. What is it? It's like, fine, but evolved. Fine? Evolved? He didn't want to get his hopes up, but he could already feel the excitement growing. Like, Pokemon evolution or Digimon? He asked. What? Never mind. His cheeks burned from the failed reference. Cat led her into a ramen shop, because... Obviously, that should be their first meal here, and thank their server for accommodating a private booth. They probably thought he wanted to avoid stares as a foreigner, which was fine for both of them. Okay, so, Marinette began as they waited for their food. Cat didn't quite hear what came next, 
as he was too distracted from realizing just how much of their time in the last 15 minutes they'd spent holding hands, and how it flickered a feeling he'd abandoned a long time ago. He knew better. He knew better than this. He knew better than to let his gaze linger and entertain thoughts. She'd only get hurt in the process because, well, despite this rekindled feeling, he'd still leave. Again. Once this is all over. Cat would leave despite these lingering feelings of home. Chapter 55 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette felt her irritation building with each word, watching as Cat zoned out in real time. Did he not realize how important this was? Thankfully, they got their food before her feelings could come to a head, and both Kalki and Tiki were happy to indulge. Are you going to take that mask off now? she asked. Huh? For Plague. He should eat with us. Cat shifted in his seat. I'll feed him later. It's fine. She narrowed her eyes. Marinette had yet to see him as Adrian. What was he hiding? Was he embarrassed? Sure, it was probably better for her mentally to not see him like that, but his avoidance of detransforming in front of her was irritating at best, but definitely touched the infuriating stage. What are you scared of, Adrian? She knew her words were a knife, and she meant them. Let's get this out of the way right here, right now. He'd had years to improve himself. If he needed to keep hiding behind the mask, that's fine, but he needed to be upfront about it. Cat watched the steam rise from his noodles before answering. I don't like it. Huh? I don't like being Adrian. You don't like... Something told her not to press it. Okay. I won't ask you again, then. Thanks. They filled the silence with the sound of eating noodles, too tense to do anything else. They were delicious, but Marinette couldn't appreciate them. She'd messed up. Well, she hadn't, but it felt like she had. More questions flooded her as the noodles disappeared. What happened to his father? How had his mother recovered? Why did he take her last name? Where was Gabriel now? Why did he keep the butterfly miraculous with him even when traveling? Why did only the butterfly get stolen and not the Cat Noir ring? Was he Cat or Adrian when he woke up? What's on your mind? Cat asked, his voice soft among the clattering of utensils. Marinette hesitated. I didn't know Kali could get us so close. The Kwame had already explained how she could get them to the area of a desire, but not pinpointed, which means the miraculous was, at this time, somewhere in Sapporo. Ugh. Why couldn't it be some tiny farming town? That would certainly make it easier. Where do you suggest we start? Cat asked. I can feel Nuru, Tiki piped up. You can? Marinette didn't know if this was good news. So someone's using the miraculous. It's faint, but yes. Tiki raised her hands to hide a soft burp. I'd say somewhere in the city. Well... The good news is that we've narrowed it down from country to city, Cat said, cleaning up his area and stacking his bowl on hers. The bad news, Marinette began, already checking her phone, is there's about two million people here. Metropolitan or proper? Proper. Yikes. She looked up at him. Got any yen? I wouldn't have ordered for us if I didn't bring my wallet. Cat sighed. Good. It looks like we're near a station. Is there somewhere you're trying to go? I'm going to have these two, she pointed to Tiki and Kali, ride with us and hopefully narrow down what area of the city Nuru's in. 
Smart. He nodded, arms crossed and staring at the table. She didn't have the heart to tell him it would be more effective if Plag joined in. Let's go. An old habit overtook her as he stood up and lingered in front of her chair, waiting for her to stand up, but she'd caught it just in time. She'd almost grabbed his hand. No, no, no! Old habits die hard. Besides, she'd already been far too generous when he led her out of that Obasan's house and across the rooftops, and when they were walking on the street. Had he even noticed? She could feel her cheeks burn as she wondered, but it didn't matter. It wasn't because they used to date. It was because they were partners, both then and now. Sure, they were estranged, but Cat Noir, no matter what he did, would always be her partner. Always. The stairs were hard to ignore, but she learned that turning her head a bit as she walked would make them all look away. It was stranger being a mixed race here than it was in France. She snuck a glance at Cat, who seemed unbothered. How could he get used to something like this? Then again, he was used to getting attention on the streets in Paris, but even so... A realization struck her, stopping her in her tracks. Was that a factor in him not returning and traveling instead? That he could blend in like a normal person, depending on the country? And even if he stood out, it would be because of his features, not because he was Adrian or Gabriel Grest's son. Her thoughts irritated her, and she balled up her fists. It was frustrating. But even these subtle gazes bugged her. She couldn't blame him for wanting to avoid even more obvious or scandalous ones. Had her anger towards him been unjust all these years? Frustrated with herself, with him, and with society, Marinette shook her head to reboot her thoughts. She needed to focus on the task at hand. They had to find Nuru. They had to. And then everything could go back to normal, whether that meant Kat stayed in her life or not. But what was the ideal turnout? Kat in her life or not? She didn't know anymore. Marinette didn't know what she wanted. This person who had been her home was now a stranger she could recognize anywhere. What do you do with that? Where do you go from there? What do you do when you're ripped apart from your home, only for it to go up for sale in front of your eyes? Chapter 56 Adrian Graham de Vanily as Cat Noir Here? Are you sure? Cat asked, staring up at the building in front of them. The Kwamis led them to Hokkaido University in the Kita Ward, but he was a bit skeptical. A student bested him, blocked his memories, and stole the miraculous? <laughs> no way! Marinette snuck a glance at Tiki, hiding in her purse, then echoed her nod. So it seems. I can't get a clear sense, but he's definitely closer. He might even be on this campus! Tiki squeaked, doing her best to contain her voice to just the three of them. Hmm. Now he was standing out as Cat Noir. Unfortunately, he might have to parade around as Adrian after all. Should we risk getting a room? He asked, seeing the time as Marinette checked her phone. Uh-huh, but it's only... Marinette began. Well, first of all, we need a base. A base? And second of all, it's ten at night. But Franz is eight hours behind. I can keep going. Marinette. He put his hands on her shoulder. I know time is of the essence, but we need to think things through. Eventually, she agreed, and they found a hotel six minutes away from the station by foot. They nearly didn't get a room, because it turns out there was some boy band playing a show that night, but there was a cancellation. Marinette agreed to it before he could turn down the idea. 
one room for both of them? Wow, she'd clearly moved on. Was he the only one uncomfortable with the unspoken dynamic between them? They went upstairs, following the directions the front desk clerk gave to them in English, and found their room. Okay then, Marinette said, swiping her card. This will be... She cut herself off as they stared at the room, decorated with only an end table and a bed with a singular pillow. What's this? Four square meters and a toilet? Cat asked, suddenly very aware of how small the doorway was as he stood next to Marinette. So much for one of us sleeping on the couch. Marinette sighed and walked in, setting her purse on the end table. Well, I'm all right with the... Cat began. Don't you dare talk about sleeping on the floor. She whipped around, her braid whipping from her back to over her shoulder as she crossed her arms. But with your wingspan? No, your shoulders alone are too big for down there. Marinette pointed at the floor. Cat chose his next few words carefully. But I don't want you to sleep down there either. I won't. Your internal clock is used to it here, right? I'm still rearing to go, so you rest and I'll go work out, okay? A mixture of relief and disappointment flooded him. Wait. Disappointment? No. That's a misinterpretation of his feelings. Anyway, he nodded, stepping inside the room. At least the ceilings weren't small. Marinette left quickly, practically dancing around him to get out of the small room. Huh. The mirror was in the bathroom, so it should be okay, right? Yeah, it should be okay. Cat detransformed and climbed into bed, suddenly exhausted from the day. She was right about his sleep schedule. Sure, he'd slept last night in Paris, but it was more of a nap. He spent most of the hours staring at the ceiling and trying not to be consumed by the thoughts of Marinette and the memories they shared in that room. After unwrapping the last of the camembert from the cheese store, Adrian's head hit the pillow, knocking him out almost instantly, preventing any development of swirling thoughts. Adrian woke from the depths of sleep to a warmth at his back and nearly teared up. When was the last time he'd been touched? There was no doubt it was Marinette, her back pressed to his in this tiny bed as it was immediately removed. <sighs> she was stiff as well, despite her cool demeanor. He couldn't rotate without letting her know she'd woken him, but he ever so slowly made more room for her, his face still aimed at the wall of the room. Despite their lack of touching, the space beneath the blanket was warm. Whether it was an emotional warmth or physical warmth, Adrian couldn't tell, but he wanted to cling to it. With everything he'd gained these last few years, he'd also lost this. Wide awake now, Adrian waited for what he hoped was about an hour before rolling over in place, confirming that it was, indeed, Marinette sleeping beside him. This is what he'd left behind. This kind of moment. Was it worth it? Had it been worth it? Could he leave it again? He had no right to these thoughts, but held on to them anyway. Memories of her were too painful to think about on his own, but now they were literally sharing a bed together like some monthly shoujo manga. Taking care to not wake her, Adrian pulled out his phone and started scrolling, knowing he'd need to either kill some hours or accidentally wake her up to get out of this bed. He chose the former, opening his solitaire app and starting a game. The room was warm as the games passed by, sleep clinging to his eyes once more as the early light filtered into morning. 
His stomach protested, a testament of how long he'd been in this bed, but he ignored it. Turning his phone off, Adrian nestled back into what little room he had on his side of the bed and closed his eyes, not thinking of consequences. And with that, the young superhero fell asleep, prepared for the day to come. Chapter 57 Marinette Dupang Chang When Marinette heard there was only one room available, she knew they'd have to take it. She also, however, forgot that using the horse miraculous was still an option until after her workout, and somehow using it to go back home to sleep seemed wrong. Thankfully, she'd been able to avoid the awkward one-bed situation, for the most part, by playing it cool. But in reality, she set a record for her five-kilo run after she left. Sharing a bed? With him? Together? She should be an adult by now, but she couldn't help but be uncomfortable and embarrassed, no matter how much she trusted him. But the surprises didn't end there. When she returned to the room, sneaking a shower in before approaching the bed, Marinette realized he didn't have his mask on. Adrian, in all his beauty, laid sleeping in bed, stretched out and framed by golden curls. Her breath caught as she took him in. This could have been it. This could have been her life every day if he hadn't left. They could have filled the last few years with happiness and warmth beneath the blankets, but her bed was always cold and her pillowcases soaked. Climbing into the space beside him, Marinette turned her back to him. Sure, she'd seen him without the mask now, but he faced the wall so she couldn't get a good look without being weird or creepy. Heart pounding, she tried to relax in the small space until her back accidentally pressed against his. She fixed it straightway, of course, but suddenly this small bed felt too hot. She passed out within minutes, only to wake to a particular feeling. An arm that was not hers crossed over her side, the fingers lingering gently on her stomach. Suddenly wide awake in the near noon light, Marinette felt her breath catch as she thought about where she was, who she was with, and how to not make it awkward. Turning toward her partner ever so slowly, she found herself staring at Adrian, lit by the sun and breathing softly. It's fine. This is fine. He probably did it unconsciously while asleep. Yeah. This tugging wonder was nothing to worry about. Marinette nearly jumped out of bed when he stirred, pressed to the wall as far away from him as she could, even though it was less than a meter. Grabbing her shoes and a jacket before he could sit up, Marinette hightailed it out of the room, apologizing to him silently for making noise. Oof, okay. She should probably get her shoes on first. Ah. Huh. Tiki popped out as she sat down to wrestle on her shoes in the hallway, her eyebrows pushed together and upward. Are you okay? The Kwame asked. Just perfect. Totally fine, Marinette said, a tight smile on her face. What do you need to talk about? Besides the obvious? Tiki didn't answer right away trying to make eye contact as Marinette looked anywhere but at her. It's not just about the bed, is it? Marinette felt tears prick and bald her fists, hating herself. What about other girls? Other girls? He held me while he slept. I saw... Who else has he held to make him do that so naturally? Her words had an edge to them. Silence passed before Tiki flew up to hug her cheek and brush away a tear. I'm sorry. 
She knew better than to be angry at her, but frustration clung to her forearms and chest. She was too old for this. This was a horrible idea. She should have used the miraculous and slept at home. Actually, no. She should have taken his miraculous when he first showed up and retrieved the butterfly miraculous by herself. Marinette put her head in her hands, remembering the sunlight-lit scene she just witnessed. He was beautiful. Adrian was beautiful. So beautiful, in fact, that she couldn't bring herself to hate him. No. She was bitter, but not a drop of it was hatred for him. She loved him, after all. She loved him. She loved him, and this trip made that all the harder to bear. Marinette? Tiki hovered in front of her, her voice barely a squeak. Let's go get some food for that silly cat, she said, her words muffled between her fingers. Her Kwame didn't answer, but she didn't need to. He eats like a bear, so I'm sure he'll be hungry. Pulling herself together, Marinette made her way to the corner store and bought some lunch boxes. Not surprised, she still remembered his preferences before returning to the hotel. She had to take a breath to compose herself before knocking on the door of their shared room, as she'd left her key inside when she left in a rush, but was, for the most part, collected. Giving this day a new chance, Marinette stood in front of the door and took a fresh breath, calm and collected. Chapter 58 Adrian Graham Devanily. Adrian stretched as a knock rang from the door. Marinette? He rubbed his face, touching the area around his eye and realizing he didn't have his mask on. Had she seen him without it? Claws out, he muttered, then stood to answer the door. If it was the staff, they were in for a surprise of a cosplayer, but they wouldn't ask questions. Hey, Marinette said, the first thing he saw when he opened the door. Food. Cat took a step back as she jabbed a cloth bag into his chest. This is... A bento box from the corner. Don't ask me what's in it. I only know what I could see through the plastic. Fair enough, he chuckled, fighting back a high from her thinking of his welfare and buying him food. What was he, a teenager again? Hurry up, we're already behind in the day. Her tone didn't hold enough bite to match her choice of words. No matter what, they were still partners, even if it had been years since he acted like one. Back to the university? He pulled out the lunchbox and peeled off a wrapping to reveal a rice ball. He took a bite and nearly choked, not expecting salmon inside. It tasted just fine, but wasn't something he expected first thing in the morning. Yeah. She walked over and pulled a bottle of orange juice out of the bag now tucked under his arm. He tried to not change his breathing as she got close. Oh, Camembert. He hadn't planned on being this distracted by her. It'd been years. His feelings were over. Besides, even if he was interested, she clearly wasn't. That and any chance he had expired years ago, with their conversation yesterday morning at breakfast adding an extra layer of mold on top. Besides, she didn't have a problem being around him, and that spoke volumes about their current state of affairs. Give me a few minutes and I'll be ready to go. Have you fed Plague? The rice stuck to his throat as he tried to swallow. Uh, uh no, um, not yet. I have to touch up anyway. She set the bottle of juice on the small desk and pressed herself past him to let herself into the bathroom. She'd noticed then. Well, it's not like he did a superb job of hiding his dysphoria. 
Come on, bud, he said, letting his mask peel off as he detransformed. Looks like she thought of you, too. The last thing in the bag was a cheese ball. Ooh, this is... Plagg began scarfing down the food before attempting to finish his sentence. Come on, long day ahead. Adrian heard the water run in the bathroom and transformed back, taking a breath to compose himself. Okay, he could do this. With her luck, they'd find the miraculous today, and then she'd take herself back to Paris. Yeah, that was the easiest way this could play out, if not the most unlikely. Ready to go? Marinette asked, wiping her hands on her pants before flicking the last few droplets at him. Yeah. He grabbed the remaining bottle of juice and gestured for her to go first, not daring to squeeze past her. They hopped on the subway, Tiki and Kalki commenting as they got closer now that their mere suspicion turned reasonable. Thank the miraculous, this is the land of cosplayers, Marinette remarked when a passenger looked up at Tiki but paid her no mind. Japan is one of my favorites for that reason, Kat chuckled. Proof propaganda works. I'm sorry. It's only in recent history that they aren't colonizers straight out of nightmares. Ah, yes. Cat chuckled to himself. The kawaii rebrand went far. Paris needs that. Paris? Tourism is down even though it's been years since... She bit her lip. You can say his name, you know. Cat said, knowing her hesitation was her trying to be courteous. Even though Hawk Moth hasn't akumatized anyone in years, people still look at Paris as a cursed city. Marinette took a sharp breath. Well, hopefully that means the price of rent will go down, he joked. Yeah, that apartment you got is 300 less, just so I wouldn't leave. Not bad for downtown Paris. I think the landlord cut the price a bit too much, but I'm not worried. Have you thought about it a lot? He spared a glance down at her as the train jutted, catching her at the last moment as her body bumped into his. Uh, what? Uh, thinking about what now? Rebranding Paris. Kat took his hands off her upper arms now that she was steady again. What would you do? Marinette hesitated a moment, but he knew she'd thought this over before. Superhero extravaganza, she answered after chewing on her lip. Superhero extravaganza? Show the public that we, superheroes, are here and will be able to protect the city as needed, even in times of peace. He scrunched his lower lip and nodded. Not a bad idea. Why haven't you done it? The train slowed before she could answer, pushing her back to his chest. He didn't have enough time to react in any way other than securing her to him with an arm across her back, his hand settling on her hip. Marinette looked up, her hands pressed into him, before pushing off and turning to the opening doors. But she didn't do it fast enough. No. Before she turned, he could see how her face flushed from the accidental collision. A part of his existence... One he'd sealed away a long time ago began somersaulting against his consciousness' better judgment. He couldn't. He couldn't let himself indulge. He couldn't let himself indulge in the yearning emotions of someone he used to be. No, that Adrian, that cat, was long gone. Taking another breath to steady his mind before moving his feet, Cat Noir followed Marinette out of the train, trying to recalibrate his thoughts to the mission at hand. All they needed to do was find the Butterfly Miraculous. Then all this self-made angst could be over with and they could go back to living separate lives on separate continents. Yeah, 
that was the best option. He couldn't afford to think of Marinette as home. Not again. Never again. Chapter 59 Marinette Dupang Chang Calm yourself, Ladybug! Calm yourself! Marinette repeated the mantra inside her head until it was more of a chant, or even a spell. It was because he was cute. It was because he was cute. It was because he was cute! <sighs> Sugar and cookies, this was only because he was cute! She didn't realize how quickly her feet moved until Cat Noir called for her to slow down, grabbing her by the wrist as he caught up to her. Marinette smacked it away on instinct, not meaning to damage their already fragile relationship, but doing so anyway. Uh, sorry. Cat took a step back, his hands in front of him like he was negotiating. No. No, that was my fault. You good? Yeah. She shook her head from side to side. My mistake. He took a sharp breath and held it, as though he were hesitating. Sorry, he said again. Let's just go. She turned away, knowing his face wasn't doing her any good. She was weak to him as a teenager, and it seemed that was something she hadn't grown out of. It was best to not get reattached. He was going to leave again after they found new roof, right? This was for the better. Marinette! Her purse squeaked. Yeah? She pulled it to her chest like she was looking for something inside as Cat Noir stepped in to join the conversation, which didn't help considering how self-conscious she was of him and his existence. Nuru's here! And activated, Tiki said. Where? Cat Noir wrapped his hand around the purse, so close to touching her fingers, but not quite. I think in one of those buildings. Tiki pointed to what looked like a cafe. Come on, let's go. Marinette let the purse hang, its only slack from Cat Noir's hand before he forewent his grip to grasp her wrist. Wait, he said, his face chiseled like stone. What? That person has a miraculous. We can't just rush in there. Oh, how the tables had turned. The last time they were partners, this would be the other way around. You're right, she agreed. Whoever has it literally stole it from you, so they must know what it is. You'd better transform first. Got it. Marinette ran off, finding a building out of the concourse's eye. Tiki? It's been a while, she said, flying out. Are you ready for this? What, ready to feel normal again? She chuckled to herself. Hopefully her dynamic with Cat Noir would improve with a mask on. Tiki, spots on! She padded out to her partner, their perfect duo reunited. This here, this moment, finally felt right. Sure, she'd had a good life without him, albeit the heartbreak, but she'd gone on without him. She'd put herself through college, graduated early with plenty of job options, and was featured on Vogue as Marinette twice in the last two and a half years. But this, this felt like coming home. This felt like all of the anxieties of the last 48 hours didn't matter anymore. She'd worried over her lingering feelings for the man beside her before, but now? Well, no. Best not to get ahead of herself. He clearly had a lot to work on. Could she work on herself as well? Yes, but she's not the one who ghosted his girlfriend. Sure, back at the temple, he said he needed some time to stay behind with his family and see what happened to his father with his own eyes, but there's a difference between that and being a no-call, no-show for years. Cat looking away as she walked up didn't go unnoticed, as did the colors of his cheeks peeking out from under his mask. 
Ladybug smiled to herself, her heart light. Serves him right. Let's go, Kitty, she said, walking past him. Uh, yeah. Ladybug heard him shuffle behind her. They still had Kalki to point them in the right direction, and Ladybug held her like a stuffed toy. See anything? She asked as they entered the cafe. Turns out it was a little coffee nook for students to grab a quick bite between classes. Alex? Alex? Ladybug turned to look at him. Her eyebrows knit and her mouth scooted so far to the side, it may as well be part of a facial stretch exercise. Alex. He pointed to a pink-haired woman sitting at a rounded metal table wearing sunglasses with a newspaper in front of her face. Ladybug squinted and gasped. Alex! The woman shot a cheesy grin and set her newspaper down. Hey, team leader! She said, tossing her a wink as she slid off her sunglasses. What are you doing here? It was you! Cat gasped, and Ladybug had to take a moment to figure out what he meant. You did it? Why? Hey now, don't blame me. I'm not the estranged couple. Alex shrugged and reached for her drink. Couple? Cat repeated. Partners, you mean? Ladybug corrected. You two keep scribbling lines all over instead of using a ruler. You know that. Alex sighed, and I did it because, well, I know the future. And the future is better if you two are together. Ladybug pursed her lips, choosing to not comment. Aren't you concerned about, like, a time paradox? Cat asked, carrying the conversation for them. It was somewhat strange to not hear him crack a joke about their relationship being inevitable. You're cute, Tomcat, but I've been doing this a long time, Alex winked. Well, longer than you know, kind of. I'm actually going to teach you how to unlock Minimi's Miraculous when you get back to Paris. That caught Ladybug's attention. You want us to make a team? Trust me, Alex laughed. You'll need one. So much for a peaceful life, Cat mumbled. He sighed as Ladybug deciphered the words. What's coming? Listen, there's only so much I can tell you, okay? But I... Alex began. Ladybug? The three of them turned to see Alia, mouth open and gaping, standing in the entrance of the cafe. Alia? She answered. What are you... Alia shook her head a few times. Have you seen Marinette? Marinette? Her armpits felt sticky, and Ladybug was suddenly very aware of the texture of spandex on the back of her neck. Yeah, her phone said she was here in Japan, so I wanted to swing by and say hi. Oh! That's right! She and Alia installed trackers on the other's phone once she decided to study abroad. Wait, Alex? Alia looked between the three of them, eyes narrowing. Wait a minute. She wanted to say this isn't what it looks like, but Ladybug wasn't sure what it did look like to another miraculous holder, especially one she hadn't spoken to in years with a mask on. So much for being a good team leader. Oops. Cat stepped in to save the conversation a second time. We're talking about the future of the Miraculous. Is there a place we can meet you when we're done to fill you in? Alia narrowed her eyes but nodded. Nina will be here soon with Chris. I can meet you back here in half an hour. Sounds great, Ladybug said, wanting to chime in a positive remark before she left. As Alia excused herself, Ladybug couldn't stop thinking about what Alex said. The future was better if they were together. She balled up her fists, barely keeping her composure. She wasn't the one keeping them apart. She wasn't the one who didn't reach out, 
she... She couldn't let herself think about this here. Hot tears are easily noticeable, and if she kept this up, everyone would be hung up on her instead of actual problems. Cool, well, see you soon. Alia's smile was tight-lipped. She was holding back a lot of words, and it tore at what was left of Ladybug's heart. Turning to Alex as Alia turned her back on them, Ladybug took a breath and closed her eyes, resigning to the fate of her future wishes. While she knew the future wasn't set in stone, it was almost a relief to know their journey wouldn't end in Japan. It seemed like, if she wanted to, she could rebuild her life with him. Rather, she'd remodel a bit of her life into something they both could call home, even though she'd never be able to trust him with her heart. Their romance might be dead, but the most important thing between them, their partnership, still had kindling to use if they both blew on embers. That is, if the cat didn't mess things up first. Chapter 60 Adrian Graham Devanily as Cat Noir So, Alex said, finishing her drink, where were we? In the last ten minutes, Cat Noir learned three things. First, Alia was studying abroad here in Japan. Second, Nino and his little brother Chris were flying out to spend a week with her during her break. And third, Alex, as Bunnix, had knocked him out cold, stolen the butterfly miraculous from him even though the temple said it was his birthright to keep, and left him in a field in Hokkaido surrounded by crops and cows. Why? he asked, tightening his grip around the juice bottle she'd bought him. What do you mean, why? She raised an eyebrow, far too relaxed in her chair than she had any right to be. Those people you mentioned before. Dr. Sadness, the invaders, pain and tears, Ignoblia, the evil sister of Majestica? We've never met them. We never defeated them, so this can't be the timeline you told us about years ago. <laughs> but you've met Monsurat, have you not? Cat exchanged glances with Ladybug, then sighed. Yes, yes we have. While the future may not be set in stone, Kitty, even pebbles help chart the river's course. Besides, I haven't met those guys yet in this time. In this time? He repeated. You're saying you're from the future? Ladybug cut in. Alex laughed. You didn't put that together from the whole team leader bit? Cat noticed Ladybug tighten her grip under the table and decided to step in. So what? You want us to return to Paris together? Who are Ladybug and Cat Noir if they aren't together? She answered his question with another. Dwell on that when you go meet that teammate of yours. Well, teammates. The Miraculous. Ladybug held out her hand. It's not yours to keep, no matter what future me says. Oh, for sure, little bug. Alex reached into her vest and froze, feeling around. No. No, she didn't. Cat felt the world freeze as Alex's eyes widened, her face paling to match the milk foam of her drink. Bunnicks? Cat said, controlling his voice. Once you guys, uh, Alex began, I'll hold on to it until you guys make up. He narrowed his eyes as Ladybug stood up. That's ridiculous! It's not yours to have! His lady practically shouted at the woman across from them. His lady? No, no, Ladybug. Ladybug shouted. There's no harm in me hanging on to it a little while longer. A little bug, Alex said. Who's to say you won't zip away once I give it to you? You and Cat need to make up. He felt a stab of guilt at that last bit. She didn't need to make up with him. She hadn't done anything wrong. He was the one who needed to put in the work. We can solve our own problems. That's not yours to have. But is it yours to keep? 
Alex raised her eyebrow, and Cat Noir felt the personal attack land in exactly the wrong way. Fine. He, too, stood up from the table. I'm looking forward to seeing Nino again. Leaving so soon? I thought they were meeting you here. Ladybug grabbed his wrist, but it wasn't time to pay attention to how it affected his ribcage. Come on, Cat, she said. Let's hear her out. Someday I'm going to remind you what a cow nose feels like the hard way, he said, sitting down and crossing both arms and legs. A chill ran down Cat's spine, and he reached out to squeeze Ladybug's thigh only to see her staring at him. You feel it too? she whispered. He nodded, slowly reaching for his baton without letting go of her. All of his protective instincts were on, but he didn't know what was coming. It'd been so long since he felt anything like this, but it was surprising Ladybug could feel it too. She hadn't gone through training like he had. Alex didn't seem to pick up on the energy in the air, disturbed only by their reaction to the other. You guys good? Alex asked, turning around to look at the nothingness they scanned. Are we? Ladybug asked, turning to him. Cat adjusted his grip on his baton, not answering. This was a far more malicious use of a miraculous than his father ever attempted. This was someone who wanted to hurt for power, not a crime of passion. Despite years of dealing with fury, both at and from his father, the butterfly miraculous hadn't ever felt like this. Watch out, he yelled, pulling Ladybug to him as he flipped the table just in time for it to take a blast, disappearing in a blink of light. Cat, she yelled, pushing him away to grab her yo-yo. Alex scattered like a bunny, and rightfully so. What is- He grit his teeth blocking out her words as a silhouette stepped through a now-missing door. Hey, 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 the figure said, familiar in a way he couldn't pinpoint. It's time, Tiger, here to greet some old friends, and Hawkma says taking your ring will make amends. The young man, painted with a butterfly mask and holding a spray paint can, shot a grin so smug Cat knew he was choosing a target. He couldn't let it be Ladybug. Dashing for this time tagger, Cat Noir called out his cataclysm and stretched out his hand, reaching for. A body collided into his, and he found himself toppled over Bunnicks, his cataclysmic hand on her miraculous. No! she yelled. What have you done? The words, even if she hadn't spoken them, tore him from the inside out. Again. He'd ruined it all again. Even after all that training, Cat Noir couldn't step it up. Name change or not, Adrian Graham Devanley wasn't worthy of being a miraculous holder. Bunnix, forced into a detransformation, yelled something he couldn't discern and flipped him over. Her expression burned into his mind as she took a shot in his place and disappeared. No. No. No, not this. Not this again. Because of him. Again. This is what the monks warned him about. This is what... Cat! Ladybug pulled him away with her yo-yo, taking him into his arms. Get your head in the game! Ladybug, I... You've used your miraculous, so we don't have much time. Come on! Unable to think for himself, Cat put his trust in Ladybug, stumbling in her grasp as they ran out of what was left of the cafe and into a seemingly random building on campus. What's the plan? he asked. We can't stay here. What? This is Time Tagger, remember? We have to be in Paris. In Paris? Kalki! she began. Wait, no! He caught her wrist. I'm about to detransform anyway. Let me do it. But 
confusing is exhausting. Please. Please. Let me not be a hindrance. Not this time. Okay, she said, handing him the glasses she'd kept with her despite transforming. I'm counting on you, Adrian. He nodded, putting them on. Okay, he said, mentally preparing himself for the next sentence. Let's go to Paris. Chapter 61 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug Ladybug expected to be welcomed with gasps and flashes from sidewalk cell phones, but the Paris she stepped into, the city she thought would be bustling and full of life, was dusty and barren. He got here first. Ladybug looked up to see Adrian detransform from the horse miraculous, and although her mind knew this wasn't the right moment, her heart fluttered at seeing him without his mask, and not just lit by moonlight. Yeah, she looked away, probably tried to lure us out without realizing we were halfway across the world. Man, I hoped by now I'd be able to not detransform after using my power, but I'm just not there yet. Wait, really? She turned to see Plag and Kalki on opposite shoulders, munching away. You can? She hadn't tried it. Uh, aren't we supposed to be able to? Man, Master of Who really isn't good at explaining stuff. Ladybug noticed Plag finished his cheese. Chat later. Adrian smiled. Claws out. Her jaw dropped. Cat! She hissed. You can't just transform like that in public. What public? He gestured to the empty Eiffel Tower, and a rabbit hole appeared and Bunnix hopped out with the letter. I'm sorry, Ladybug. I didn't deliver she said, stepping out of her burrow. Not true, Punnix. Ladybug stepped forward and grabbed a piece of crumpled paper from her hand. Every problem has a solution. She snuck a glance at Cat Noir, realizing the truth in her words. Even this. It'd take a bit, but she could fix her Cat Noir problems too, after this. Anyway, Past her was smart, but they had to hurry. She'd forgotten they needed to be at the Louvre. Or maybe it was Cat who forgot. Either way, they needed to bug over there. And bug over they did. With barely enough time to touch down, a burrow opened and she slung her yo-yo through, joined by Cat Noir's baton without a word. You know, Ladybug said as she pulled her weapon back, it's been a bit. Since we fought together, Cat fastened his baton to his lower back. That too. She turned to him, her cheeks tight. But since, well, you know. His jaw slacked before pushing up a smile as she offered him a fist. Pound it, he said, echoing her murmur. They stood there as Paris washed herself over and the miraculous ladybug light filtered through the burrow, knuckles lingering on the others. And Ladybug felt a firm resolution form in her chest, the same weight as her anger, but with an energy that would match a fitness junkie's new bench max. We should talk, she said as people reappeared gasping as they saw two superheroes together. Cat raised his eyes, his lips parting to show off his trademark Cheshire grin that won him spots on magazine covers years before. I was just thinking the same thing. Looking around at her city, filled with the bustle of just another day turning to a page for a history book, Ladybug felt her heart fill with love. Love for the city, love for her role as a superheroine, and, well, 
she planned to spend some time talking about her love for... Well... Um... They would talk. She would talk. Ladybug would talk. Okay, so maybe her heart wasn't filled with love. Maybe she was just scared that all of her assumptions over the years were wrong, even though that would be a good thing. Ugh, sugar and cookies. She should just tell him she... Come on, Kat said, twisting his fist to wrap his fingers around her outstretched hand. It's time to split. He took off before she could respond, and she stumbled trying to keep up. So instead, he stopped, scooped her up, and bounded away from the crowd in their cell phones as she found herself unable to protest in his arms. This... this was a change of pace. Well, anything to do with a mask was a change of pace, really, but that wasn't what she meant. But she liked it. She liked it and had to resist the urge to lean into his chest, although it was incredibly more firm and broad than she remembered it being. Kat brought her to the alley behind her apartment, fulfilling its purpose of the perfectly out-of-public-eye detransformation spot he'd picked years ago. Come on, he said, his voice rough but not out of breath. I believe I owe you twenty questions. I'd rather you tell me your story without interruptions, she said, turning away from his face as he detransformed. Still, he held her, longer than he should have, before she coughed and he let her slip out of his arms. Yes, I owe you that much. Silly cat. Ladybug frosted her arms, a wry smile on her face, but it wasn't a happy one. I don't want you to tell me out of obligation. Seeing his expression flicker, she pressed on. I want you to tell me because I'm someone you love. Her expression froze at her word choice. No, no. Friends. She wanted him to tell her because they were once friends. Friends. Friends who cared about each other. Friends who loved each other. Yeah. Friend love. Not I'm your ex love. Adrian's expression melted, the warmth of it thawing her own, and his body relaxed. Yeah, you are. He didn't clarify what he meant, choosing instead to head toward the back entrance of the apartment building and open the door. Unsure how to respond, Ladybug chose to detransform, giving a moment to collect her expression. Marinette! Tiki hissed, flying to her ear. I know, I know! She whispered, hoping Adrian hadn't picked up on her tone. Here! She grabbed a cookie from her purse, hoping to buy Tiki's silence on the matter instead of unsolicited advice and worry. Unsure what would happen inside, Marinette stepped through the door her ex-boyfriend and questionable partner held for her. Would this be it? Would she finally get the answers and perhaps solace she needed? Or would this conversation lead to more questions and frustrations? The only way out was through even with anxiety clinging to her bones and breath. The only way out was through, and she would do it. She'd leave everything on the table. Even through the miasma of emotions, Marinette couldn't help but feel like she was forgetting something. Something important. Something time-dependent. No. No matter what it was, this was more important. Adrian, Cat, was more important. Chapter 62 Adrian Graham Devanily Adrian found himself relaxed. The muscles in his back no longer laced like a corset, unlike the last time he stood in this apartment. He wasn't brave enough to look in a mirror, 
but he could exist without a mask. At least right now, and that was an improvement from two days ago. It felt like he was forgetting something. Something important. Marinette poured tea leaves onto an infuser as he stood, lost in looping thoughts, and Plagg gouged himself on Camembert. Sure, this extended moment of pause was awkward, but a nagging detail in the back of his mind distracted him from the atmosphere. What was he missing? What was he forgetting? Cat got your tongue? Marinette caught his intention just in time for him to hear her set the teapot down on the table behind him, littered with cheese wrappers. No, cheese does, Plagg burped, a rare blip in his buffet-style concentration. Her lips parted as she smiled. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, that giggle, that Little, controversial giggle that used to revive him from death's door if needed. It might still, if he let it. Lots to think about, Adrian answered, taking a seat in the chair she gestured to as the tisane brewed, the smell of orange peels and hibiscus swirling out of the spout. He took a better look at the teapot as Marinette pulled a cup off the top of it, noticing its design for the first time. Milk? she offered. Oh, uh, no. No, thank you. He continued to stare at the teapot, shaped into a black cat. Uh, this is... A touch of blush spread across her face as she tucked a piece of hair away. Your... Uh, this was... Your birthday present. He felt his heart swell. My birthday present? Well, years ago, Marinette poured the tea into the cup, the petals and peels caught in the teapot strainer. For me? It's fitting, isn't it? Adrian stared at the black, cat-shaped tea set in front of him, trying to not let the swelling in his chest choke him up. I would have loved it, he confessed, bringing himself to meet her eyes. <laughs> yeah, she grinned. That's the point, silly. Oh, no. His heart wanted to do that little flutter thing again. This is crazy. It's been years. He shouldn't still feel this way about her. He shouldn't, but he did. This fixes nothing, he began, running a finger around the cup as steam greeted him. But the only thing I missed from Paris was you. Marinette hesitated the pour from the teapot into her cup, stopping briefly before she continued. I can't say I believe that. I'm in earnest. The only thing? She looked up at him, her lips pressed into a line. He had to look away, only to be greeted by his reflection in his tea. So Nino is dead to you. Her words burned him, but Adrian kept staring into the steam. Compared to you, then yes. How could he tell her she was his home? His hand moved to the handkerchief in his pocket without his consent, protecting it from the tone their conversation held. She sighed and set the pot down. Where have you been, cat? And I don't mean your travels. I want to know why. He took a breath, trying to drown his anxiety with the first sip of tea. This is good. He didn't mean to respond with a comment, but it took him by surprise. Get to the point, Cat Noir. 
Okay, ouch. It started with my father. Your father? Yeah, so it turns out my mom was like, well, that. He shifted in his seat because of a broken miraculous. Marinette drew back, her shoulders tight. Adrian, she began. So at first I couldn't come back because I wanted to be with my father for every step of his decided punishment. But then I had to go through training to stay at the temple. And then I had to find a way to help my mom. He inhaled sharply, still not looking at her. The traveling, Marinette whispered. Yeah, I got to research the miraculous the old-fashioned way. Did you? She cut off her sentence. Did she get better? Adrian gripped his cup. Yeah, well, kind of. He felt her gaze and, without words, listened to her debate if she should ask what that meant. Why were you in Japan? He made himself look at her. To his surprise, her face was etched with concern, not anger. I was looking for Natalie. Natalie? Her eyebrows shot up and she leaned forward. She's here in Paris! Adrian all but spilled his tea as he jolted upright, bumping the table. What? he exclaimed. She's our manager. A manager? Was Marinette a model or something? Uh, sure, she was pretty enough to be, but... Our? He echoed. Me and Chloe. Air escaped him as her one-two punch landed, carving out his chest. You work with Chloe? Like, Chloe, Chloe? Chloe Bourgeois? She raised an eyebrow and smirked leaning back as she brought her cup to her lips. What of it? He stood, slack-jawed, before composing himself enough to sit down. He hadn't expected for life to be the way he left it, but... What do you... We run a clothing line together. She said it so matter-of-factly, he had no choice but to believe her. You and Chloe do? Would you like me to record my words on a vinyl so you can keep replaying them? He narrowed his eyes. I'm just a bit taken aback, is so. We're doing quite well for ourselves. Thank you for asking. Why do you need Natalie? It was so like her to keep the conversation en route. Business before emotions. She needs to finish healing. Is there something wrong with her? She left the temple without getting treatment on the side effects of using the peacock miraculous. Marinette held his eye contact. Is the miraculous fixed, by any chance? Huh? I'm the guardian, so you should report things like that to me. Was she... Was she making a joke? He couldn't tell. Well, it's... Marinette's ringtone cut him off, her phone screen lighting up to show Alia's name. Wait, that's right! They promised to meet up with Alia! Hello? Marinette said, swiping to answer the call. Even from here, Adrian could hear Alia's greeting. I'm in the middle of something, so you're a ladybug? A voice screamed through the speaker. You! This whole time! And you never told me? Marinette's face froze, and she locked eyes with Adrian. Oh, bother. Their little chat would have to wait. For now, it seemed, it was back to Japan, before another misunderstanding happened because of his actions. <sighs> Adrian couldn't do anything right these days. Could he? Chapter 63 Marinette Dupang Chang Irritated 
Oh, sugar and cookies. Marinette listened to Alia prattle on as she stared at Adrian with empty eyes. How? he whispered. Well, half an hour ago, my GPS said I was in Japan. Now I'm in Paris. Ladybug has been to both. Marinette sighed, knowing Alia would never live this down. You convinced me! Alia yelled through the phone. Ladybug went underground because of the pandemic a few years back. I thought she was killed by the virus. Oops, Marinette said, her eyes not leaving Adrian's as they both bit back laughter. Well, I mean, the suits use the wrong kind of mask, so... He added, and she shot him a scowl. Are you with cat still? Marinette felt a headache coming on as Alia continued to yell. Is he someone I know? Like tricks and berries, you might as well tell me you're with Adrian Agrest. That would be less surprising than you being freaking Ladybug. He covered his face and she had to look away, worried her unrestrained laughter would tip Alia off. We'll be over once the Kwamis recharge, okay? If you don't, I'm spending my honeymoon fund on a flight back home. Dude, wait, Marinette heard Nino say from the other end. Sorry, dude. You hear that? She asked, hanging up the conversation to look at Adrian, pink from laughter. They're, uh, they're getting married? He asked, trying to regain his composure. Alia insisted she graduate first. I don't blame her. He's doing pretty well as well. I know. Marinette narrowed her eyes at his answer. Oh? I, uh, uh, follow his YouTube. Adrian suddenly seemed invested in whatever was at the bottom of his empty cup. Oh, he's got some bangers. Yep. The awkwardness between them was back, and she knew she wasn't helping. I guess you need a soundtrack while traveling? She tried to make a joke, but it fell flat with her smile. She could tell he debated a response and chose otherwise. How much time do you need? He asked. You know, to get ready. Honestly? She wanted to ditch Alia and keep talking to him, take in who he is and what he's become. She wanted to reach across the table and take his hand in hers and... Wait. No. <laughs> no, 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 Marinette. He's not interested. Too much time has passed. This was the guy who confessed multiple times. If he wanted to date again, he'd say something. I mean, I wouldn't mind staying here to catch up. I suppose there will be time for that afterwards. She felt her body warm, but knew it wasn't enough to flush her cheeks. They were on the same page after all, even if the chapters were different. I mean, we did just take down a time-traveling minion. <laughs> minion? He chuckled. You always insisted on the term victim. With the last Hawk Moth, sure. We don't know anything about this new one. Adrian stared at the floor, eyebrows furrowed. I guess we should go after all. What do you mean? Nino's little brother is with him, right? He might not remember being akumatized, but he might know about this new Hawk Moth. He was right. Yeah. Marinette stood up and called for the other Kwamis. Marinette stood up and called for the Kwamis. You're right. We'd better not waste time. Plag! Adrian called. Your cheese gremlin vacation is over! Bats! The Kwami called from the bathroom. If you fight me, I'll set Leon's cheese store on fire. Marin had all but choked on her last swallow of tea. If Adrian hadn't been here in years, why would he have a relationship with a cheese store? No! The Kwame yelled, appearing with a rounded belly, 
You know I've been aging cheese there since before we left the first time. Yep. Adrian poked the little belly and smirked. Claws out, dude. Oh. Marinette just realized there weren't mirrors in this room. Is that why he stayed as Adrian so long? Or was he giving Plague a break? Either way, he didn't open the bathroom door until after he transformed. Was it on purpose? He was Adrian when he walked in, so had he taken the chance, or did he notice the last time he was here? Well, hopefully there would be time for him to explain his PTSD to her. Hopefully he wouldn't leave after getting back the Butterfly Miraculous. He still had to talk to Natalie, right? It'd only been a couple of days, but Marinette couldn't imagine her life without him again. It'd only been a couple of days, but Marinette didn't want to imagine her life without him again, as emotional as the past few days had been. For the first time in years, she knew exactly what she wanted, and it wasn't a chic clothing line, or collabs with her favorite designers, or even a lover. Marinette wanted her partner, Cat Noir, back in her life. Chapter 64 Adrian Graham de Vanley as Cat Noir Cat had to wonder if other superheroes got dizzy using Kalki's powers. Traveling through space always upset his stomach, but he swallowed the feeling down each time. The last thing he wanted to do was look weak in front of Ladybug. <laughs> look weak in front of her. After all this time, she was the one whose opinion mattered the most, huh? Hey, Alia. Ladybug greeted their dumbstruck companions before he recovered from the teleportation, leaving him scrambling to deliver a friendly smile and wave before balancing the war in his stomach. Looks like the cat's out of... out of the... Cat tried, then realized he wouldn't make it. To his horror, Cat threw up on Ladybug's feet. Oops. Cat! She exclaimed giving him a once-over before twisting her face into a wicked grin. Not feline so good? Did... Did she... Just... Did Ladybug just make a pun? After he threw up on her? What universe was this? Was he dreaming? Was she akumatized? Ladybug lifted her leg and shook off the contents of his stomach, then sighed. Mind if we take this somewhere private? I don't know what I expected, Alia said, tucking her hair behind her ears. But girl, the last three hours have been more exciting than the last three years. Is that a yes? Yes. Alia grabbed a bottle from Nino and emptied it over Ladybug's feet. Let's go! Cheeks still burning, Cat followed his companions to an apartment he'd only seen in manga. There was barely enough room for a futon and a coffee table. You live here together? He asked. What? No, it's just me, Alia said, filling a kettle. Nino's just visiting. So Chris, Ladybug cut in, her look shooting to kill. Tell me about this hawk moth. The teenage boy shifted, leaning against the wall. Well, uh, is it Lila? Cat nearly snapped his neck as he twisted to look at Ladybug. What? Cat began. No! Chris exclaimed. No, I haven't seen Lila in a bit. Dude, you gotta give it up, Nino said. He exchanged glances with Alia. She's never gonna see you as anything more than a kid. 
Oh? Chris liked Lila. That's new. But Chris was like six, eight years younger than them? He shouldn't hold feelings for her. Should he? Then again, Kat knew better than anyone what it was like to like someone, despite your best efforts not to. I'm not- Where's Bunnix? Kat asked. She should be here. She was responsible for the chain of custody. Pooping, probably. Chris muttered. Christopher! Alia scolded, chucking a spoon at him. He caught it, laughing. Sorry to burst your bubble, but I'm right here. The balcony slid open, and Bunnix stepped in, the butterfly miraculous in hand. Cat narrowed his eyes. That was a smoker's balcony. How long were you out there? He asked. Bunnix raised an eyebrow. Uh, not long. You can barely stand out there when the door's closed, Alia chimed in. That doesn't matter, Bunnix huffed. Here, she offered the miraculous to Cat. Did you like it? He asked, catching her eye. Huh? Being Hawk Moth. Ladybug looked between him and Bunnix. Cat, what do you... It all made sense now. There never was a new Hawk Moth, was there? He asked, holding eye contact. Bunnix held a cool expression before sighing. Are you sure you aren't a dog? Why? Because I sniffed you out? How'd you know? You said it yourself. Ladybug and I needed to make up. <laughs> More like make out, Alia snorted. What? Ladybug squeaked. Cat Noir ignored the comment. Was it worth it? Terrorizing people, past and present, to get a team leader? You tell me. Bunnix grinned. I'm not the one who got kissed. Kissed? What was she talking about? He heard Alia yell something, but he couldn't discern it. He frowned, not sure what she was getting at. Are you crazy? Even if he had gotten kissed, it wouldn't be worth a terrorist attack on Paris, both past and present. Wait, you guys haven't made up yet? It was her turn to look confused. Did you... Cat licked his lips and furrowed his eyebrows as he turned his attention to the ceiling, crossing his arms, trying to keep himself from yelling. Did you... Steal a miraculous, akumatize Nino's little brother, and let me cataclysm your miraculous to what? Get Ladybug and I in the room together? To literally kiss and make up? His tone was barely a growl, which was surprising considering the temperature of his blood, each boiled bubble popping his last nerve. Did I get it wrong? Bunnix muttered. No, I'm never. Cat felt a hand on his shoulder before he could respond. Ladybug. Looking down, her face was just as stern as his, but her eyes told a different story. Oh. Oh, she was scary. He thought he'd seen Ladybug upset before, but he was grateful to not be on the receiving end of this stare. Bugaboo's wrath was all but traumatizing. Actually, it was best to sit this one out. Okay, Ladybug, do your worst. Rip that bunny into a rug. Chapter 65 Marinette Dupang Chang as Ladybug. Absolutely feral. Trigger warning. Physical punishment a la spanking. When people talked about seeing red, Marinette had always taken it as an exaggeration. As it turns out, 
it was not. Ladybug stepped toward Bunnix, then saw Red. She grabbed her by the collar, sat down on the coffee table, and threw her across her lap before raising her hand, using it to slap a booty cheek. The room stared, gaping, as she spanked Bunnix, whose back arched to look at her with such confusion it could supply a year's worth of laughter if she wasn't absolutely livid. And when she was done, Ladybug tossed Bunnix on the floor in front of her, then crossed her arms and legs. "'Tell me what you did wrong,' she said, her tone leaving no room for protesting. "'I... uh... uh," Bunnix began, clearly bewildered. "'What did you do wrong?' Ladybug enunciated each word. Even Cat Noir looked concerned, but Alia had her phone out as Nino tried to wrestle it out of her hands. I stole the butterfly miraculous, Bunnix whispered, looking at the floor as she put herself into a Seiza position. And? And left Cat Noir in the middle of a pasture? And? Acclimatized a teammate's brother? And pretended not to know about it? Bunnix looked up, biting her lip. And? Ah. Uh, she glanced at their audience as though they could help her. So what I'm hearing, Ladybug began, her back straight and eyebrows narrowed, is you robbed, kidnapped, and abandoned someone you consider as a teammate, abused the miraculous for personal reasons, and manipulated Chris into an incredibly risky mission that could have had long-lasting effects to civilian psyche and the world economy. Well, when you put it like that, and for what? Bunnix pursed her lips. She knew better than to respond, it seemed. Well, you and Cat Noir needed to make up. So why become Hawkmoth? Ladybug uncrossed her legs and leaned forward, elbows on her knees as she laced her fingers in front of her lips. Well, ah, uh, you'd gotten us talking by taking the miraculous. Why start a terrorist attack? You see, it's... What time are you from, Bunnix? You told me to! The room gasped, but Ladybug maintained her expression. No, I didn't. Bunnix looked away, sorting words through her head. You told me I needed to get you guys to make up. You said this is what made you a couple again. Oh? She arched an eyebrow. I even saw it, with my powers. Let me be clear. Ladybug stood up and took a step forward, causing her to flinch. Never. Interfere with my personal life, even if it involves another miraculous holder. You wanted me and Kat to talk again? Fine, as partners. But manipulating us into a position where we might be anything other than partners? She cracked her knuckles and leaned in, her mouth a centimeter away from her ear. You'll learn why Cat Noir coined the term bugaboo's wrath years ago. She growled. Bunnix went as white as her suit, and rightfully so. <sighs> Whatever. Cat Noir! Ladybug barked. Uh, yes? He straightened himself, rigid with attention. Let's go get sushi. Ooh, can I come? Alia chimed in, raising her hand like what she'd witnessed was an everyday occurrence. Ladybug sighed and looked at Chris. Excuse us for a minute. Uh, sure, Ladybug, Chris said, and all but sprinted out of the apartment. Here. She pulled out the turtle and fox miraculouses and held them out. Let's go. Alia grinned as Nino's jaw dropped, but the smile crawling onto Cat Noir's face made her heart warm. Were they supposed to have kissed? In a different timeline, had 
they gotten back together? The thought made her hot. They were adults now. Adults with jobs and a far more developed brain than their teenage years. Actually, wait, did Cat Noir have a job? Where did his money come from? After what happened to the aggressed estate, he might not have any. Let's go, Rena Rouge yelled, bringing her attention back to the room. Nino hadn't transformed instead exchanging slang with ways as they did their little superhero handshake thing. Without meaning to, Ladybug caught Cat Noir's eyes as she opened the door to leave. He wasn't looking at their partners. He was looking at her. He was looking at her, but looked away when their glances crossed. Ladybug might have seen red minutes ago, but now she felt red burning and passionate in a way that she couldn't remember. This was different. Her feelings for Cat Noir were different than their teenage years. They were more intense. How could a years-old flame burn hotter than youthful passions? Ladybug, come on! Rena Rouge called, catching her attention once more. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sushi. Talking with Cat could wait. For now, it was time to have a small reunion with the teammates in front of her. Chapter 66 Adrian Graham Devanely as Cat Noir. Don't do it. Don't do it, Cat Noir. Ah, oh, can't remember. He did it. Cat snuck another glance at Ladybug across the table from him, and he knew everyone there knew it. It wasn't a matter of being subtle. After Bunnix mentioned that, in another timeline they'd kissed and made up, Cat felt the tension between them. But it wasn't a taut string of anticipation. No, this was simply awkward. He should be enjoying this reunion with friends he'd ached in loneliness for, but he couldn't. He couldn't enjoy this reunion because all he wanted was to take Ladybug into another room, just the two of them, and talk. Why couldn't they do that? Why couldn't they just spend time just the two of them? They didn't even need to talk. Existing together would be enough. Remembering that he'd shared a bed with this woman this morning, although it felt like forever ago, Cat turned his attention back to the hot plate in front of him. If only Bunnix hadn't mentioned that kiss! And then he wouldn't be this conflicted. He wouldn't hold this hope. He thought he'd made up his mind, and that his trainings over the years would support him, but Ladybug was his weak spot. She'd always been his weak spot. So, Rena Rouge said, cutting into the atmosphere and saving him from it. Are you going to move back to Paris? Yes. What are your plans after you speak with Natalie? Ladybug asked, raising her glass of water to her lips and peering over the rim before taking a swallow. Cat sighed, moving a piece of meat from one side of his plate to the other with his chopsticks. I'm not sure, he said, not looking at anyone at the table. Carapace spoke up, his voice soft, like he was checking up on a friend. Why didn't you visit sooner? How could he explain it in a way they could understand? I... I came back as soon as I was able to. He heard Ladybug set down her glass and spared a glance up to see her staring. What do you mean? Rena Rouge asked. Cat swallowed and continued. Well, more like as soon as it was safe to. When Gabriel was stable enough and I'd completed my training. Adrian's dad? Yeah. Guardian training meant I couldn't leave the temple anyway, but I couldn't leave him or my... He took a breath to study himself, or Emily alone. 
Did Adrian ever visit? It's, uh, it's not a perfect family, but, um, yeah. Adrian got to learn more about them. Spend, spend time with them. Things like that. How's that old fart doing? Ooh, <laughs> Gabe? Cat cleared his throat with a chuckle. Or Adrian. Ladybug kicked him under the table, and he had to tighten his expression to not reveal pain. Our dear arch nemesis will live out his life peacefully with his wife in the mountains of Tibet. Do you think it's right? Rina Rouge asked. Him getting a happy ending? Cat said. The punishment he got. You know more about it than we do. Was it... <sighs> she stretched out her word as she searched for the right one. Appropriate? Cat had to bite back a smile at the thought of his high and haughty father being forced to scrub floorboards. While some of the humbling experiences were fun to look back on, he didn't envy his father's true punishment. Every day, his morning would start off with the emotions of someone he'd akumatized. Adrian had to beg to give his father a break, fearing he'd go insane. The first two years of punishment weren't easy memories to think about. It was appropriate, Cat answered, but I would never wish it on anyone. Cat held Rena's gaze, and her face softened. I won't press further. Thank you. You can live with me, Carapace piped up. The table turned to stare at him. What? Babe. Rena Rouge crossed her arms. Well, not forever, of course, but he can sleep in your office while you finish out your studies here. We spent thousands on that couch, so someone may as well use it. His chest bubbled and compressed, nearly tearing him up. Nino didn't even know he was Adrian, but still offered his home like an old friend. I... He began. Just think about it, dude. Ladybug mentioned something about Natalie anyway. Uh, thanks. I'll, uh... Cat made the mistake of looking at Ladybug and had to turn away. I'll think about it. Oh, this was embarrassing. What if she thought he was only going to stay because Bonnix mentioned a kiss that didn't even happen? Or perhaps worse, she thought he valued Nino more than her because he only stayed once his best bro made an offer. Okay, chill. Relax. Calm down, Cat. Just enjoy the food and company. Take a breath. You'll be fine. Just enjoy the food and company. Chapter 67 Marinette Dupang Chang Two weeks passed since Marinette found out Bunnix orchestrated her partner back into her life, and it was a slowly deteriorating whirlwind ever since. To her unspoken relief, Kat took Nino up on his offer and moved in, an unlikely roommate duo. Sure, it might not be strange for Adrian and Nino to move in together, but as far as she could tell, Nino didn't know his identity, and Kat kept the mask on when he was there, and Nino respected his privacy, not intruding into his room until after he had the chance to transform every time they interacted. Another gust on her unbalanced two weeks was Adrian's interactions with Natalie. She'd never seen her tear up the way she did when she saw him, pulling him into an embrace fit for a Hollywood movie. While Natalie still helped her and Chloe out, she reworked her drive into getting Adrian back on his feet, from the abandoned manor to setting him up with a therapist. Paris also held a homecoming for him. He still didn't go out as Adrian, but the streets welcomed Cat Noir, praising his return while young parents took photos of their four-year-olds with him, 
explaining how they'd met their mother during an Akuma fight or how he'd saved their spouse in some bizarre event. The past two weeks and the whirlwind it created were something to celebrate, but Marinette hadn't adapted yet. Marinette hadn't adapted to her ex and beloved partner, continuing a relationship with her instead of fading into a background character. While Cat Noir hadn't opened up about why he was uncomfortable without the mask yet, besides a comment about the man in the mirror looking like his father, he'd come to her for help with it. Rather, he kept coming back for help, and Marinette wasn't sure how much more of it her heart could take. A rap at the door meant he was here, and Marinette, false lashes already dried on and blush applied, took a breath to compose herself before opening the door. Cat, she said, opening the door to see him standing there, sheepish, with a bag behind him. What's that? she asked, peeking around him. Hello. He returned her greeting and swung the bag in front of him. They're, um, from your father. From dad? Yeah. Marinette smiled to herself. He'd been spending more time at the bakery. While she hadn't thought Adrian might take over the company his father abandoned, well, was torn from, he didn't. Instead, instead he, unexpectedly, started working at her parents' bakery. Unofficially, of course. She wasn't sure if it was an accident, a coincidence, or her father's whims, but she was sure Cat hadn't sought out the opportunity himself. So, has he made you his apprentice yet? Someone has to keep the mice at bay. Nice dodge. Well, I'm never not nervous when I come here, all things considering. That almost hurt her heart. Almost. You can't feel pain after you're numb, after all. You ready? She took the bag and set it on the table. Cat took a deep breath, then stepped inside. Yeah. Marinette tried not to let her eyes linger as Cat detransformed, Plague twirling out and heading straight for the cheese drawer in her little fridge. Okay, she said, reaching up as he kept his eyes shut. Marinette slid her hands across his cheekbones and cupped his face her fingers splitting apart around his ears as she held his jawline. They stood like that, him with his eyes closed and her with her fingers on the soft skin around his eyes and behind his ears for a few minutes, the hum of the radiator and the traffic outside their usual soundtrack. It might be awkward, but it was also peaceful somewhat. Maybe today he'd even be able to open his eyes. While he'd been able to be Adrian in front of her before, he couldn't bear it every day. They started doing this so he could be comfortable being seen without a mask on, as Adrian aggressed. But he hadn't opened his eyes for her yet, and that was the next big step in his therapy. So naturally... When his eyelids cracked open and Marinette saw green, it was only natural for her breath to catch as they stood in the filtered sunlight together, his hands on her shoulders for support. Oh, sugar and cookies. Should she look away? Or should she keep looking him in the eyes? Oh, no. If she held his gaze much longer, she might... It's a bit warm in here, don't you think? Adrian said, pulling away and turning his back to her. He took off his leather jacket, draping it on the chair. Well, at least she wasn't the only one flushed. She could see the back of his neck turn crimson. Um, yeah... Silence passed as he kept his back to her. Finally, after a sigh, he mumbled something she couldn't discern, and Plague was sucked into a transformation. 
she could see the disappointment on his face. You're getting there, she chimed in. Don't be so hard on yourself. That's the first time you've made it this far since moving back here. It shouldn't be this hard, he sighed. I should be able to be myself without a mask in front of other people without having a panic attack. It's trauma. The only way out is through, and Nino and I won't give up on you, okay? He gave her a wry smile. Thanks, Marinette. Stay for tea? He hesitated. No, I'm gonna go, I don't know. Well, be safe. Same time tomorrow? Sure. Great. She walked over and wrapped her arms around him. She hadn't done this yet, but he looked like he needed it. See you tomorrow. She felt his arms raise and hesitate, knowing he had a debate going on inside his head. She slipped her hands back, reaching up and bopping him on the nose. Thanks, Marinette. He leaned forward and rested his head on her shoulder. See you tomorrow. It wasn't until after he left that she realized he'd left his jacket behind. Whoops. Well, he'd be back tomorrow, so no worries. Unless, did he leave his phone inside? Or his wallet? Would it be wrong to check? Ugh, don't overthink it, Marinette. This is Cat. She walked over, picked it up, and reached inside. To her surprise, it wasn't a phone, a wallet, or even keys inside. It was a handkerchief. Inside Cat Noir's jacket was a handkerchief that took Marinette's breath away. Oh. This might change everything about the last five years. Chapter 68 Adrian Graham de Vanily as Cat Noir Trigger Warning Panic Attacks Today was a good day. Cat started the day off bright and early at the bakery, spent a hot minute in Marinette's apartment, and then played villain and heroes and victims at the park, which was the new playground game for elementary students, apparently. So, when he got home, greeted Nino, and returned to his office-turned-bedroom and closed the door behind him to detransform, he had an unexpected stress attack. His jacket. His jacket with the handkerchief. His jacket with the handkerchief was at Marinette's apartment apartment. Oh, no, he whispered as Plag went for the mini-fridge post-transformation. What? Did you finally realize we haven't picked up that cheese I've been aging from Leon's cheese store? Plag piped up. I left that handkerchief at Marinette's, he whispered. You humans are weird. If she sees it, you're still super in love with her, right? So what's the problem? I can't just tell her that. What if she... He cut himself off, not wanting to finish even the idea of it. You had no problems telling her your feelings when your father was her arch nemesis. Adrian sighed collapsing onto the couch serving as his bed. That's different. You humans are weird. Cheese breath. Cheese is easier than woman. He took a breath, knowing Plague wouldn't be too pleased about getting called back to the ring so soon, but he wanted to grab the jacket before Marinette could see it. Was it even possible to go out without the mask? He'd been able to make eye contact today without the mask on, so... And it was eye contact with someone he knew, not a stranger, so it should be easier to go out, right? 
Okay, let's try it. Adrian grabbed a pair of sunglasses to be on the safe side and opened the window, stepping out onto the fire escape. Okay. Yeah. He could do this. He could go out in public without a mask. He could, until someone saw him, that is. A person on their fire escape across the alley saw him and waved, and he immediately stumbled back into the apartment, tumbling onto the hardwood without grace and with bumped elbows and bruised kneecaps. Someone saw him. Someone saw him. Adrian aggressed. Someone saw him. The son of Hawkmoth. In public. Adrian tried to calm himself, telling himself it was all right. He had sunglasses on and he was too far away. But other thoughts, like his jawline and build, poisoned his mind and constricted his chest. He couldn't breathe, even though his lungs pumped air in and out. Oh, kid, he heard Plague say above him. Or maybe he was across the room. He wasn't sure. He didn't care. He wished he wasn't this weak. He begged himself to get it together. He heard a noise outside his door, but it just made things worse. Someone seeing him as Adrian was this bad. If seeing... If someone seeing him as Adrian was this bad, how could he possibly let someone see what a mess of a child he was? He needed to use his voice. He needed to transform. Two words even choked out would take him out of this. Two words out of his compressed throat, tight with his trauma and anxiety. He could do it. He could say it. He couldn't breathe. Minutes passed, or maybe hours, but eventually Adrian caught himself off the floor and onto the couch, face sore and lungs burning. Okay, perhaps today wasn't a good day after all. That, and he'd proven to himself Marinette was the exception, not the rule. Two... Almost three weeks ago, he'd stood in front of her without a mask and been just fine. But that was the only one he'd done that for, and he couldn't remember how long. Even when he met Natalie again, he'd worn the mask, which wasn't a big deal because she knew who he was after living at the temple together. His lungs still burned from the attack. How shameful. A superhero with PTSD, but not from actually being a superhero. Michael Jackson had nothing on his body dysmorphia, although his song was a bop. But his song was right. He had to start with the man in the mirror. He'd held eye contact with Marinette today. That was a win. He'd made the decision to go out without a mask today. Even if he wasn't successful... That's a win. Two wins. He'd earned two wins today. That's two wins he didn't have yesterday. That's two wins he didn't have this morning. But it didn't feel like it, especially with the physical wear of his failure weighing his body and mind. But today was still a good day. Right? Unable to pry himself from the haze of time, Adrian heard a knock from the door and realized Plague was curled up, asleep, on his shoulder. He didn't know how, but his Kwame took care of him this time, too, didn't he? Yes, he cracked out. Um, it's, uh, it's me. It's Marinette. If it weren't for his snoozing buddy... Adrian would have sat up straight. His torso held him in place, sore from his meltdown. Yeah? He called back. May I come in? Adrian looked at the blanket beside him. He'd be a fool to try this again. Right? He wasn't a glutton for punishment. Just give me a moment. 
Taking a deep breath, Adrian pulled the blanket over his head. A snuggie fort wrapped around him like he was watching a friend play a Zelda game while sitting on his floor in elementary. Okay, he croaked out. He heard the door squeak open and made a mental note to oil the hinges as she stepped in. A snuggie fort? He heard her say gently. That's what I call it too, Adrian said through the fabric. I, uh, brought your jacket back. Thanks. You doing all right? Why do you ask? Plague called me. He called her? Without breaking his phone in the process? Oh. May I touch you? He hesitated at the request. Sure. He felt a hand land on his knee through the fabric before another cupped the crown of his head, sliding down before going back for another pat. Do you need to call in for the bakery tomorrow? Are you... petting me right now? What?! Marinette squeaked and he heard her stumble back, the touch retreating. Oops. He shouldn't have said anything. It felt nice. I'm teasing. Oh! Uh. I'm still your cat, after all. Would that be enough to lighten the mood? He felt the cushion shift as she sat beside him. Even though you're technically more qualified to be the guardian? Adrian couldn't help but smile at the challenge in her voice. I'm never gonna live that one down, am I? Never. <laughs> A shame. He felt her arm wrap around him and, for a moment, thought she was going to put her head on his shoulder. To his surprise, she pulled him to what was probably her shoulder, or perhaps her collarbone. Regardless, this blanket was getting a little too warm. But he let her. He let her hold him and closed his eyes, masked in the safety of a blue fleece blanket. She rubbed from his shoulder to his elbow and back, and if he were masked, he probably would have purred. He was home. Oh, how he missed this. But it was a dangerous, scandalous feeling. How could he possibly let go when she wanted to leave? Can you breathe? She asked, her voice carrying through him like a friend. It was a good thing she couldn't see his face. He was crying. Yeah, he choked out. Just, just fine. Okay. She wrapped both arms around him and squeezed, an embrace he hadn't braced himself for. I don't share your experiences, but I know how hard it was for me and my troubles. He couldn't bear to ask her what she'd gone through these past few years. He couldn't bear to learn if he was a part of it. Thanks for coming. Well, I couldn't just hang on to your jacket, now could I? Adrian laughed, but it came out as more of a cough. Right. Her hands traveled up his shoulders and settled themselves on the crown of his head, feeling her abs contract before feeling pressure atop his head. Oh. This was a kiss. Want to watch something? He heard her say above him. Uh... He looked down at Plague, who had fallen into the crevice of his elbow, still fast asleep. Um, tell you what, she pushed him off of her. I'll see you at the bakery tomorrow, okay? Uh, okay. He looked up at her, which was silly because there was a blanket over his face and he couldn't see through fabric. See you then. Adrian all but flinched when she put her hands on his shoulder, but the anxiety of the touch slipped away when he felt her press her lips to his forehead. Oh, it was a good thing she couldn't see his face right now. 
He was sure his expression would give away his feelings for her. She was his home. She always had been, even if his family was in Tibet. She was the love and the center of his life, a gravity for his sanity as he dragged himself through the past few years, doing what he had to do to keep his blood flying afloat while a black hole carved a chasm into his chest with her absence. This obsession wasn't healthy. How would she react if she knew he wanted to be anything other than friends? He'd be the new villain if it meant keeping her by his side. But no. He wasn't his father. He wouldn't be his father. No matter what, Adrian wouldn't let himself become an aggressed. He saw what taking that name did to his mother, and he didn't want to take after his father. No matter what... Adrian wouldn't be an aggressed. Chapter 69 Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette felt her head spin as her lips burned and her posture wobbled. The dizziness overtook her and she sat down on her bed, overwhelmed with what she learned. She'd known it was hard for him to be seen by others without his mask, she knew it was hard for him to be viewed as Adrian aggressed by other people. He must have felt so alone since developing this mental barrier that prevented him from living his life, regardless of who surrounded him. If it was like this, she couldn't ask him about the handkerchief. Home is where Marinette is. Did he carry that with him all these years? Oh... The gravity of her emotions slipped her from the mattress edge to the floor, her sighs echoing across the studio apartment until she heard what her body wanted her to listen to. Her heart, drumming loud and hurting her chest with vibrations, wanted to be with him. It wanted to take away all his pain and make it her own despite the loneliness that man put her through over the last few years. Despite the headaches and tears, there were I love yous and tickle fights, grocery trips and post ice cream cones. Despite the time and distance, she'd held him in her arms post-breakdown. Despite the time and distance, he held her heart. Looks like she wouldn't sleep tonight. Marinette came up with a terrible idea, and if she let herself sleep, she'd realize how insane it was. But no, instead of sleeping like a neurotypical, Marinette climbed the fire escape of her ex's temporary apartment with a scrapbook she spent the last five hours on and knocked on his window. Noises echoed from within, and soon enough... Cat Noir brushed back the curtain, eyebrows raised as he stared at her through the panes of glass. Marinette. She saw his lips shape her name as she rubbed his eyes. She gave him a bonjour paired with a wave, then pointed at the window for him to lift it for her. He did, then caught her as she stumbled inside. Thanks, she said her stomach flipping as she realized just how bad of an idea this was. But her sanity hadn't recovered entirely, so it was now or never, right? What's going on? He looked outside before noticing the book in her arms. I was... Ah... Goodness, maybe her sanity had returned... She was a bumbling teenager again. Memory lane! Oh. It should be illegal to be this cute when you're sleepy. His dazed look was a personal attack on her heart. You know how girls sometimes have, um, ex-boyfriend boxes? Sure. Well, yours is, uh, okay. This was a bad idea. 100% a bad idea. Why didn't she realize it hours ago? 
I made a scrapbook. Oh. She felt her ears burn as he studied her, most likely trying to figure out just what she's up to. Joke's on him. Marinette didn't know what she was doing either. So, if you're up for it, there are pictures in here of... She swallowed. You. Oh. The defeat in his voice told her he knew what she was going for now. But it's, um, it's more than that. It's more than that. What is it, Marinette? The weariness took her off guard. Right. Who knows how long he'd dealt with his body dysmorphia. There are some, some designs. Designs? For you. For me? For Adrian. Oh. His posture stiffened. I want to... Mm. She swallowed. I want to show you them. You made them for me? Yeah. Okay. He took a seat on the couch, his pillow and blanket tossed aside into a crumple and patted the seat next to him as he looked up. Okay. Deep breath, but don't let the sound of it reach his ears. So this... She began, sitting next to him and peeling pages as she opened it toward the back. Wait, wait. His voice fell into her ear, and he caught her wrist as she tried to turn a page. What's that? The page facing them was him, as Cat Noir, in her parents' kitchen the day of the River of Butter incident. Oh, um, she'd never told him. I took some photos on my phone, but was worried about losing them when I backed up my phone, so... You printed them out? They sat in a box for a couple of years. He turned the page and took a sharp breath. It was a picture of him, on her parents' couch, working on a cross-stitch, his face twisted with concentration. Is that really the face I'd make? He asked, moving his eyes from the page to look in hers, and her heart skipped a beat. You always made silly faces when you concentrated. No. Really? As Cat? Yeah, totally. Remember that viral TikTok of you sticking out your tongue when you were trying to jump from the museum to the alley next door with your baton? Excuse you? Cat's lips cracked into a smile. I yeeted myself off the museum, thank you very much. Yeah, and couldn't stick the landing. He chuckled holding his smile as he looked back at her scrapbook. Are these magazine inserts? He asked, turning the page. Then his expression darkened. Oops. It was, um, in the box. He sighed, rubbing his face. I'm sorry, Marinette. Really, I am. The magazine insert was that of Adrian Agrest and the fake girlfriend. You keep saying that, but I haven't asked you to. She put her hand on his shoulder. You deserved... <sighs> Cat cleared his throat. You deserve so much more. So much better than I gave you. Uh, yeah. She set the book down on the coffee table and crossed her arms, smirking. I built a brand by myself, live alone in downtown Paris, have no debt, and was shopping for a condo to buy when you showed up. He looked guilty as she spoke, but she wasn't finished. So hurry up and be better, silly cat. He looked up in surprise. Huh? My identity is solid. 
Who do you want to become, Cat? His eyes softened, understanding what she meant. I'd like to have a home. He spoke the line so easily, but that's not what shocked her. After seeing that handkerchief he carried, she couldn't help but wonder. If one of the hardest parts of returning to Paris was seeing her, then what if she was the reason he couldn't leave? What if she was his reason to stay? If she was wrong, she's conceited, but if his feelings were like hers, then... Then get a job, silly! She brushed her fingers against his bell, turning her attention back to the book. They still hadn't spoken about what Bunnick said. They hadn't spoken of their relationship since she couldn't keep track. Neither of them addressed their interactions post-relationship, but this wasn't normal. The space between them, this atmosphere, it wasn't normal, but then again, he was the only superhero cat boy she knew, so... Cat scoffed, shaking his head. Well, what if I become a baker? Would that be something Miss CEO deserves? A sparkle shone in his eyes. Oh, I guess I'm too good to have a superhero as my partner, she teased. Oh, is that what's happening? I can see the headlines now. Marinette Dupeng Chang. Boss lady takes on her father's apprentice, flower not included. He's seen how you use salt. He'd be more than happy to offload you onto me. Wow. Cat had to look away as he shook his head, and she knew she got him good. That was years ago. Oh, don't try me. He told me about the mishap with the shortening last week. He seemed speechless with embarrassment, judging by him looking away and running his tongue between pursed lips before sighing. Listen. Or the cola? Okay, yeah, fair. Got me on that one. So let's make a challenge, Cat Noir. A challenge? He raised an eyebrow. Get Adrian to model for me, and we'll be business partners. His grin froze, shoulders stiff. Marinette, he sighed, his face falling as he slumped into the cushions. I'm not asking for next week. She put her hand on his thigh, her thumb tracing back and forth. A goal. You're not fair. There are no rules. Doesn't mean you aren't playing dirty. Or not. Fine. She reached over and closed the scrapbook. No, no. I want to see them. You've got work in a couple of hours. I'll sleep at the bakery, so just get me up when you're done, okay? His nostrils flared as he sighed. Okay. Good night, Cat Noir, she said, stepping through the window. Good night, Marinette, he said, and his eyes translated her suspicions. He didn't want her to go. Even if they had a little spat, he wanted her to stay. Cat? Heat brushed over her face as she took a roll call of the little touches and whispered words they'd used over the night. It's too late for a woman to be on the streets. I'm a superhero, remember? It's cold outside. Marinette felt the breeze caress her. It wasn't that bad. And? What? Are you going to offer me your jacket? He looked pressed, but stood up and took his leather jacket off the chair. I trust you'll give this back to me? Of course. He narrowed his eyes. I'll make sure of it. He stepped through the frame, shutting the window behind him. Personally.
huh? Let's go. He started down the stairs, leaving her open-mouthed before she composed herself enough to follow him, chest burning with affection. Silly cat. If you walk her home like this, she'll keep wondering if it's because they're partners, or if it's something more. He used to be so good at confessing. Should she take the risk? What if she's wrong? She, su she stumbled on the steps, falling into his chest as he yelled her name. Are you all right? Kat asked, looking down with wide eyes as her arms pressed into him. Are you hurt? I'm, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Kat sighed and grabbed the jacket hanging from her arm and wrapping it around her, waiting with crossed arms until she put her hands through the two long sleeves. It was warm, or perhaps that was her, but it smelled like him. It's still a klutz, I see, he said, and he took her hand in his own and started leading her down. Some things never change. He was her suave crush, and she was just... Marinette to Pang Chang. Except, well, she wasn't just Marinette anymore. Unlike when they were dating, her identity didn't rely on him. Her dreams didn't revolve around the Persians she liked, and if he left again, she knew she'd be able to keep breathing. So, while the feelings and scenery were the same, it was all so different. He was her home, but not her only shelter. So if she took up hospice and hotels for the rest of her life, she'd still weather the storm. They were on the same page, but reading different editions. Cat Noir was her home. He didn't let go of her hand even when they reached the concrete, but she didn't say anything. They walked in silence, listening to their footsteps and the stumbles of human-shaped clothes in the streets and alleys between Nino's apartments and her parents' bakery. But as they approached her destination, Marinette couldn't help her goofy-loop thoughts. Was he doing this as her partner? Or ex-lover? When they got there, would he just drop her off? Or... She bit her lip careful not to sigh and catch his attention. Instead, she lifted the hand that held his and tucked them, palms together, in a jacket pocket. He looked down at her, surprised, but his steps didn't falter. Hot with unknown anticipation, Marinette let go of his hand and fumbled in her purse for her keys when they got to the door, Grateful the streetlights weren't enough to illuminate her flushed face. Well then, she said, her keys in hand but not turning toward the lock. Good night, Marinette, he said, taking a step back and placing a hand over his heart. Oh, yeah, okay. What a respectable man he'd become. Good night, Cat Noir, she said, pushing herself onto her toes and kissing one cheek, then the other. When she leaned back onto her heels, she looked up for a last smile. He didn't return the gesture, but there wasn't enough light to make out his darkened expression. But when Cat took a step forward, closing the distance between them, Marinette's heart did a pitter-patter that could power a treadmill, and it stopped entirely when his hands cupped her face. Oh. Oh. She squeezed her eyes shut, feeling her body go stiff and regretting it, but that wasn't the most disappointing part. Marinette felt Cat press a kiss to her forehead, then step back. See you tomorrow, he said, pulling out his baton. 
see you today, she corrected. Yeah, see you today. Marinette watched, standing in his jacket that smelled like a memory as he walked away, turning his back to cross the street. Oh, it's the same as before. Cat Noir was her home, but instead of taking her there, he dropped her off at her parents' house. Chapter 70 Adrian Graham Devanely as Cat Noir Of course Cat didn't get a wink of sleep before showing up to the bakery. How could he when he couldn't get the love of his life out of his head? She'd left the scrapbook behind and, well, curiosity killed the cat, right? How could he not go through something that had his face plastered on and across it? The boy in the photos, seen through Marinette's eyes, was beautiful. Sure, Adrian Agrest had his own set of problems, but he'd never doubt that no one loved him like Marinette had. It's a shame he didn't exist anymore. At least, not the version of him captured by motion pictures and front-facing cameras. But she knew that. Marinette knew that, and she still ran her thumb over his thigh and held him back after an attack. She came, knowing after he had an attack. No one stays after an attack. Marinette was the complete package, but he was just a baker's not-apprentice and a superhero with family trauma who couldn't even face his face in the mirror. <sighs> Shake it off, Cat Noir. Smile on. The last thing you want is Tom asking questions. Smile plastered and dimples on, he walked into the bakery, making sure his visual sweep for Marinette wouldn't be obvious. It only been a few hours. She'd still be asleep. At least, that's what he told himself to quiet his heart. She's in the back. A gentle voice greeted him. Sabine. Is she? Cat echoed, making eye contact and trying to play it cool. I'm afraid there's not much for you to do today, Sabine said, filling a display. Marinette didn't seem to sleep last night. Is she in bed now? He asked, trying to casually carry the conversation, as if she didn't know she came back early with him. As I said, she's in back. Oh, yeah, right. And Kitty? Yes? He stopped walking to hear her request. Good morning. Welcome back. His heart glowed at their tradition. Good morning. He returned with a nod. I'm glad to be back. Their wordless exchange of smiles made him forget all about the girl on his mind as he walked into the back until he, literally, ran into her, a cloud of flour dusting between them on impact. Sorry, Marinette began, her face twisting from concern to recognition as she narrowed her eyes. Oh, hi, Cat. Uh, hi, Marinette. After last night, he didn't know how to approach her. Well, there's something to say for head first, which is what he literally just did. She looked down at the bag of flour in her arms, then up at him eyes lingering on the flower on his chest before her grin twisted into something wicked. Before he had the chance to buff her, her hand was in the bag, a fist of flower with one target. Him. You're late, kitty, she yelled with a grin, flinging the handful at him. He coughed as some entered his mouth, but it was game on. I was taking a pretty girl home, he yelled back, reaching out to hit the bag from the bottom so it spewed up and onto her face before running to the island for concealment and ammunition. Yeah? 
What, she thought you were cute or something? Wait, oh, wait, wait. Was she flirting with him? If she wanted cute, she could look in a mirror. I only know she came to catch a glimpse of my booty. He grabbed a bag and chucked it over without checking for a target. Ah! Looks like it landed. You're saying she doesn't have a peach? Let's just say I'm the ones whose buns look like they belong in a bakery. Perfect proportions and all that. He twisted his head around the corner, but couldn't see her. Where? Flower hit his head before weight slammed him to the ground, and he found himself face to face with his partner. She had him pinned with a smile on her face. Gotcha. Well, at least I'll earn my keep cleaning this up. He knew he had a twinkle in his eye that matched hers. Her expression softened, and she rolled off, laying herself beside him as they stared at the ceiling lights. Can I ask something? It was nearly a whisper. Yeah? Flower dust sifted through the air, and he had to swallow the cough beating at his lungs. Why not a crest? Cat held the silence his lungs overtaken by the question. He knew what she meant, and he wished he kept the cough instead. I want nothing to do with my father. So you changed your name? Yeah. He swallowed, still looking at the ceiling. Cat wasn't sure he could make eye contact. Graham Devanily, she said, and he heard her shift beside him. I don't like that one much better, but what choice do I have? She twisted herself onto an elbow, propping herself up enough to dust him with flour as her hair fell across her face and over him. Of course you do. You can be whoever you want. Pick a new one. It's not real. Names are meant to be given, not chosen. Then I'll... <sighs> She bit her lip. I'll give you mine! He blinked twice, her expression matching his as they stared at each other in disbelief. He hadn't expected that. Not in any timeline. And from the looks of it, she didn't either. Huh? Cat wanted to slap himself for his sloppy one-word response, but either she was proposing to him or she was proposing he became her brother. The latter, for obvious reasons, was less than ideal, even if Tom was an excellent father figure. Her face hardened, the momentary slip of expression gone. Yeah, yeah, become a Dupang Chang. Marinette, I... She rolled under her hip, propped centimeters above his chest with her hand next to his ear to hold her up as she towered over him. We're your home, right? Come on, cat. There's a reason you haven't gone back to that crusty mansion. Become a Dupang Cheng. She all but yelled at him, and instead of tearing up, although he wanted to, cat burst out laughing, covering his mouth as quickly as he could so he wouldn't spit on her. <laughs> he gasped, unable to breathe efficiently enough to make it through a sentence. What? Don't make fun of me. You're far better as a Dupang Chang than in a grass. She wasn't wrong. <laughs> Please. Did you did you just call a multi-million year old mansion crusty? You're dodging the question. Marinette smacked his chest, and he laughed harder. Crusty. <laughs> he repeated, mostly to himself. Oh, Plague is gonna love that one. Crusty. <laughs> okay, we get it. Marinette sighed. Tiki floated out during the commotion, and even she looked unimpressed at his sense of humor. But... Maybe it was because of the state of the kitchen. Isn't that what you liked about me? I'm a clown? 
Please don't make me declaw you, kitty. And ruin this manicure? My lady, that is a crime against Paris herself. Nay, the entire world. And just like that, everything was right again, if only for a moment. It was him and her and nothing else. Nothing else. Except when his eyes met hers again, he found words stuck in his throat that his tongue dared not say. Just like that, when the laughter cleared, the weight of silence between their lips crushed the centimeter by centimeter difference. Just like that, when the laughter cleared, the weight of silence between their lips crushed the centimeter by centimeter distance. Just like that, every ounce of his self-control and better judgment had to beat back his heart, pounding rigid in his ears. And just like that, Cat Noir realized Marinette hadn't moved her eyes away yet either. Oh, how he yearned to kiss her. He reached up, the flower on his suit a stark contrast to the black leather wrapped around his hand, and he touched her face, smearing the residue on her cheek as the straw that broke the cat's back cracked and whistled away, leaving him to succumb to this moment and his feelings. His throat, begging to release his words, cracked open his lips as his eyes noticed Marinette trailing her line of sight down his jawline before touching her hand to his on his cheek, the other against his chest to keep herself upright. What are we doing? He choked out an accusation against his feelings, an accusation against himself. He knew better. He's the one who left. He had no right to be here, to feel this with her. You should know better, Marinette. Her face, so soft moments before, hardened as her eyebrows knit and her lips thinned. I trusted you, Cat. I know. The weight of her hand on his chest couldn't compare to the guilt. Her laugh, bitter like catnip, cut into him sharper than any word his father threw at him over the past half decade. You didn't just betray my trust, Cat. You... She balled her fist her fingernails scratching through the suit even though it wouldn't leave a mark. You destroyed my heart. There's no way to respond to that. I know. He choked out. What do you see when you look at your face in the mirror? Marinette turned her face, expression unreadable. Huh? What do you see when you look at yourself? She repeated. As expected of his partner, she knew exactly where to hurt him. But he'd answer her. He'd do anything she asked. He owed her that much and, although he had no right to, he loved her. He loved the person he'd hurt the most with his inability to escape trauma both then and now. My father. Cat took his hand off her face to cover his eyes. And the person I could never be. Silence ticked by, marked and echoed through the clock on the wall. What? She whispered. Adrian aggressed. He had a future, and I messed it all up. He could feel her stare and managed to peek through his fingers. You, she began, her face twisting into a scowl. Absolute buffoon! Before he had time to react, she'd reached for his triangle ears, 
taking them and tugging them upward as she rolled herself back into crisscross applesauce. A marinette? He couldn't come up with a better response. What do you mean you messed up your future? You're, what, 22? 23? I, the only thing you're supposed to be by 23 is yourself. Her hands had moved from the cat ears to cup his face, squishing his cheeks in enough to make his lips pout. But no, you don't know who that is either. Uh, you need therapy. She lifted her palms a centimeter to give both sides of his face a small slap. And love! Accept it, Cat Noir. You're loved. Why do you think I brought over that scrapbook, huh? I don't care what you did or didn't do over the last few years. You're my partner, silly cat! He stared at her as she huffed, not sure how to respond. This was certainly not what he expected for the day, and... As usual, clown brain overtook him. Yeah? His cheeks pressed against her flower-crested fingers as a smile crept up his face. You love me? You- She inhaled sharply, her knuckles bending against his face. I'm just a homeless street cat, my lady. Then marry me. Her fingers relaxed as his smile dropped, jaw slacking as he stared. She knew better than to joke about that. In all their years, together and separate, Marinette, Ladybug, would never joke about that. I, uh, don't have a comeback for that, princess. I believe you're supposed to say yes, kitty. Yes? He stared up at her, then realized his reaction could double as a response. He didn't mean yes, like, okay. He meant yes, like, huh? Welcome to the family, kitty. Marinette stood, then offered him her hand. Dumbfounded and unsure if this was real, he took it and she pulled him up, hand lingering before a wicked grin split across her face. Oh, no. He knew that grin. He'd seen it not more than ten minutes ago. Cat saw it coming, but he couldn't dodge this time either. With one fluid motion, Marinette grabbed the bag of flour from the island and chucked it at him. Marinette! He shouted, looking at himself, then her. You've made me Cat Blanc! Her smile twitched at the comment but she just rolled her eyes. Call your best man to help you clean this up, silly. She turned to walk out, zipping off her sweater and sliding off her shoes before walking out as to not track flour. And so, Cat Noir, covered in flour, found his heart beating a rhythm he couldn't recognize as he tried to put his scrambled brain back together. Too many emotions happened just now on the bakery floor, for him to process in real time. What just happened? Also, did he... Was he engaged? Cat Noir looked around one more time, trying to get a bearing on his surroundings, when he saw a little red blur hide around the corner. Tiki. Like Plaid. Tiki was the only one who truly knew what happened to her master over the past few years. Okay. Cool. He could do this. Time to catch a Kwame. Chapter 71 Marinette Dupang Chang Sleep Deprived and Blushing What? What? What was that? What just... What just happened? What did she just do? Oh, sugar and cookies, why hadn't Tiki stepped in? Did she just propose to Cat? To Adrian not aggressed aggressed? Oh, sure, become a Dupang Chang. What? 
What? Also, was she engaged now? Oh, what a mess. This is why you don't bake without sleep. Silly men with their silly dimples and silly flower fights that can and will make silly women's heart go silly for them. Oh, what a silly morning. Marinette slumped to the floor, her back pressed against the wall and smearing flour down the door frame. So much for holding herself together. She'd been the one to say it, but the next time they talked, would she own up to it? Proposing to him? Him changing himself to Dupang Chang is one thing, because we'd always be family, no matter what happened, but marrying him? Did she want that? Oh, this is one of those heart versus brain battles. It's not even about trust at this point. Cat was here, now, and he wasn't about to leave. No, he wouldn't disappear again. Not this time. She could trust him if she wanted to, because she'd seen the remorse in his eyes. But a part of her wanted to trap him. To keep him with her, by her side, and never let him leave to a place where her eyes wouldn't follow. And a marriage would do that, wouldn't it? Oh, goodness. Now her thoughts were that of a narcissist. Squeaks she'd never heard before echoed from the kitchen behind her. What was... No! Was that... Was that Tiki? Her Kwame! Her Kwame was in trouble! She had to save her! Barreling through the door, shoulders first, Marinette slipped on the flower-covered floor and slammed her chin onto the stone tile, tasting blood as she felt the disappointment of her ancestors ripple through her skull. Ouch. For one disorienting moment, Marinette forgot why she'd rushed into the room in the first place, but by the time she'd gathered her thoughts, Cat Noir had pulled her into his arms, a hand caressing the side of her face as his diction smeared across her ears. Tiki? She croaked. What? What was? Marinette! She heard her squeak. Marinette, he crushed the macaroons! Her eyes traced the world until they settled on the red blob, far too loud despite her throbbing head and chin. What? One by one! He held them hostage over the trash! He didn't even eat them! He's... he's... She heard her Kwame choke up. Marinette tilted her head up to see Cat, his face laced with concern for her instead of guilt over whatever it was Tiki was going on about. Marinette, he said. Did she have a concussion? He had her scooped in his arms and her heart raced, thoughts blurry. No, that's not it. She's just a klutz. I'm... I'm fine, she said, clearing her throat as she grasped what was going on. Stop torturing my Kwame, please. I wasn't, Cat shook his head. Uh, Marinette, let's get you checked out. I fell and hit my chin. I'll be fine. But what's going on with you and Tiki? She might be in his arms, but she could give a mean glare upward. Cat's ears twitched as he shriveled his lips together, chin wrinkling. Bad man, Tiki yelled. Marinette? Sabine walked in, probably from the noise, and gasped. Whether it was for the state of the kitchen or Cat Noir holding her daughter like a damsel in distress, she couldn't tell. Oh. Mom, no, wait! She reached for her as her mother backed out of the room, a smile pressed on her face. Oh, great. Another misunderstanding. Then again, she'd literally just proposed to the guy holding her, so perhaps her mother hadn't misunderstood anything at all. Oh, Macroon, silly girl. None of this was right. Let me up. 
Marinette groaned and felt Kat's arms shift behind her shoulders. You okay? His voice dripped with concern. After what? Falling on my chin in front of my not fiance? She ran a hand through her hair as he helped her stand, sighing through her nose. So that's what I am now? A not fiance? He arched an eyebrow like a joke but she could see the question in his eyes. Well, that yes you gave certainly cast doubt. Oh, so I'm the one who turned this into a questionable relationship. He grinned, and all she wanted was to smack his chest. Silly cat. You're the one who tried to extort information from my Kwame with a macaroon. Excuse you? He crossed his arms. Seven. Macaroons? Yep. Wasteful. His lips flattened, making him more of a frog than a cat. Oh, make more, he muttered. You could have just eaten them in front of her. Oh, Marinette. He reached up to toss a clump of flower-crusted hair. I'm all about dramatic flair. I know, I know. It was hard to allow, but Marinette let her heart go soft for a moment. I both love and hate that about you. His hand dropped, a blush spreading across his cheeks. Oh? You, um, you do? That That's cool. Come on. She swiped a finger across the bell at his collar. I'll get the broom, but you're in charge of the counters. Oh, okay. Marinette knew turning away would do nothing to hide the flush on the back of her neck, but she couldn't help it. (sighs) Silly woman. She got this all wrong and backwards. Proposing to a man without telling him how she feels? Then teasing him about it? Oh, this dynamic was wrong. This was all wrong. Sigh. Well, even grain needs time to germinate. This new, silly dynamic with her lover would be the same. Wait. Her lover? Since when had she started thinking of him as... She risked a glance, and it was a silly mistake, because as soon as her eyes landed on his, all sense of rationality was lost. Oh, how she yearned to kiss him. Maybe proposing wasn't such an unforeseen action after all. Chapter 72 Sabine Chang Amused Oh, these silly children. Did they think she wouldn't know what was going on? Besides knowing her daughter was the long-lost superheroine Ladybug, Sabine and her husband also knew a truth that the tabloids questioned less and less frequently. What happened to Adrian Agrest? Not only did the Dupang Chang household, every member of it, know Adrian Agrest gallivanted around as Cat Noir, but Sabine had a special secret to protect, one that even her daughter who had songs, poetry, and statues dedicated to around the city, knew. No, Sabine's secret was that once, two years ago, a letter came for her, not her daughter, from a triangle-eared superhero. It was a letter of apology and remorse, as though the boy who was no longer a boy bore the burden of sin, not his own. Sabine never replied. But now, looking at her daughter and that same boy, who crumpled her heart into wet pillowcases until her frenemy pulled her up and out, she knew there was a sort of fate interwoven between the two of them. They're going to get married, Tom. Her husband looked up from his phone, eyebrows raised. 
Hmm? Marinette proposed to him. He dropped his phone onto his chest. She proposed? Are you really that surprised? Tom mulled it over as she closed the door on the intruded scene. That aggressed boy, he sighed. Tupang Chang. Hmm? She asked him to take our name. Her husband's face lit up, eyes so wide they might explode as his grin stretched the limits of his mustache. A son! He bellowed. We're gonna have a... Shh, my love. Sabine walked over and took his hand in hers, holding a finger to her lips. Let them come to us this time. Tom ran a hand through his hair and sighed, holding the pose for a moment before all but jumping up and down, dancing with a pair of happy feet. I suppose we should let her pick a theme before we decide, Sabine began, stopping when she saw a binder her husband fished out from behind the register. Are we free this Sunday? Tom asked, flipping open to a page of coral-tinted lettering. Oh, Tom. Sabine couldn't help but chuckle at her husband's enthusiasm. While she knew he'd always wanted someone to ask for his daughter's hand, he could adapt. Her husband was excellent at making sure their house stayed like a home. Chapter 73 Adrian as, well, himself. Adrian wasn't quite sure how they got in this position, but he wasn't complaining. Marinette went to clean up, and, when she invited him for breakfast, she told him he couldn't come in unless he detransformed, else he'd track and flower. It was a ludicrous idea, at first, considering that he couldn't even leave the house without his mask, but he tried it anyway. And there was strength in that. The trying. Except, well... It wasn't entirely successful. Sure, he didn't track in flower now that he didn't have the suit on, but he couldn't share breakfast with her. He'd barely taken two bites with the zero eye contact and fell prey to vertigo. So here he was, lying on the living room couch with his head in Marinette's lap, faced away from her as she ran her fingers through his hair. If they were an actual engaged couple, this would be cute. But between the dizziness and the shame that burned his face whenever he thought about it, it was something out of a fevered nightmare. At least he wasn't trembling. Still woozy? His hand, strung over the side of the couch and clutching a bucket on the floor, tightened its grip at the question. Had he actually eaten something in the last 12 hours, he'd likely have shown another side of himself he didn't want someone to witness. The kind that should be part of drinks with friends and a college experience, not trauma and a boy who can't face genetics. Yeah. I've read that when you feel depression kicking in, you should start moving. A crazy dance, or a walk, or jumping jacks. Stuff like that. Uh, uh, thanks, Marinette. Her giggle, like a bell, rang above him. Yeah, I suppose you're right. If only it were depression. Well, no. He shouldn't wish for that. Oh, kitty. Her fingers stopped exploring his hair. How are we going to fix you? His throat tightened. He didn't know. It looks like I'll be a baker's apprentice and work for my father-in-law, he tried. Father-in-law. 
He wasn't even sure if they were engaged, but it felt good to say. Tom Dupang's son. There was a time that it was all he wanted. To be Marinette's family, even if Marinette wasn't part of it. I suppose this means we should probably let them know we're superheroes, huh? He knew she meant it playfully, but the thought froze him. Tom knowing that he was that aggressed boy. Adrian jerked forward, rolling himself off her lap and catching his hand on the coffee table, stretched between it and the couch as he dry heaved into the bucket. Oh, thank the Kwame's creators he hadn't eaten anything. Although, he could feel the blood vessels in his eyes fight against the rest of his body, seeking a way out. Marinette rubbed his back as he retched, the sounds he made echoing across the room so loud he worried the bakery could hear it below. Why was he like this? Still hanging above the bucket after he'd finished, Adrian willed himself not to cry. You okay? He couldn't see her face. I... I hate myself, Marinette. Well, that's silly. Her answer, so straightforward, so clear, caught him by surprise and he looked up, making eye contact as he forgot, briefly. The face he wore was his own. Marinette, he began not wanting a pep talk after so many embarrassing moments at his lowest points. I wouldn't marry a man worthy of hate. She leaned forward, cupping his face in her hands, and he remembered his mask. His hand slipped off the coffee table as he reached to cover, sending both of them toppling to the floor. He hit his head, and the empty puke bucket clattered as it rolled a meter away. She was on his chest now, curled in a way that only came from a fall. Oh, well, he said, not sure how to salvage the situation. At least buy me dinner first. She laughed into his collarbone, lifting herself to tower above him. Your face is my favorite, dummy. Didn't my scrapbook teach you that? He blinked a few times, fighting back tears. Sure, the rigid tightness came from her looking at him, but her words touched a part of his heart that froze over the years as he tended to his father and his sins. Morning after morning until he hated every part of the curled soul in front of him. If he'd had Marinette beside him all along, would it still be like this? If he hadn't asked her to leave him there, at the monastery, in that room years ago, would things be different? Well, sure, things would be different. That would be obvious. They'd asked one of them to stay, but he didn't volunteer just because he was his son. He knew the coming months that rolled into years would take a toll on the one in charge of his punishments. He loved her. He loved her so much, he tried to shelter her from the punishment of Gabriel Agrest, and it all but destroyed him. Come here, he said, and reached behind her scalp to pull her back to his chest, heart pounding as his wet eyes stung. I love you. He didn't want a response. He didn't need a response. He just needed her. And now that he was here with her, he wouldn't leave her. Not again. He'd never sacrifice like that again. Her fingers reached up his face, splitting around his ear, and for an involuntary moment, 
He held his breath like she held her head on his collarbone as she whispered. I love you, Adriana Crest. Chapter 74 Marinette Dupang Chang When Marinette awoke, Adrian wasn't with her. They'd curled up with the other on the floor, crying until he fell asleep first, then her. Stiff from the floor and chilled with the only throw blanket she'd laid over them, she stretched, groaning so the room would know she's awake. But the room, empty only with furniture and decorations, responded with silence. Strange. Where was Adrian? Where were her parents? The events of the morning hit her cheeks, stinging them red as each detail stitched together. She'd proposed. He said he loved her. She did too. Oh, the kitchen! They'd left the kitchen an absolute mess! And she inadvertently helped Cat Noir play hooky from work. Marinette, what were you thinking? Fixing her ponytail, Marinette slipped downstairs without checking the time. From the sound leaking through the window as the sunlight filtered down, it was mid-afternoon. Why hadn't anyone woken her? Sure, she had basically pulled an all-nighter, but still, she made a mess, so the least she could do is clean it up. No. No amount of sleep could have prepared her to walk into the bakery's kitchen, the flour from hours before scrubbed clean and replaced with brochures and color palettes scattered around. No. In the Dupang Chang bakery's kitchen stood her mother, father, Cat Noir, and Alia. They hunched over a giant binder, talking about color palettes and venues until they noticed her, every one of them flashing a grin except for Cat Noir, who looked like he needed therapy for a different reason than previously talked about. Um, she looked around the room. Hi? The sudden stillness broke as she was swept off her feet, Hugged by her father as Alia circled around to squeeze from back. Girl! She exclaimed. Girl, you're getting married? Oh, sugar and cookies. What on earth happened while she was a sleeping beauty? Well, um, and Cat Noir is Adrian Agrest? Marinette deadpan stared at her questionable fiancé. You told her, she mouthed. He shrugged, looking guilty. Oh, don't scold him. I walked in when he was asking for your hand in marriage, Alia said, letting go and circling around specifically so Marinette could see her wicked grin. Her father was blubbering something, but she couldn't discern it through his tears. Her mom, of course, gave her a wink and a smile as she patted Kat's back. What a mess. She'd rather clean up flour. Marinette's eyes darted back to her now official fiancé, and she shook off the grips holding her back to approach him and grab his hand. He looked guilty, not meeting her eyes as she grabbed his hand, but she tugged him off the stool anyway. Come on, she said. Let's get out of here. You'd better not elope. Alia called as she shuffled him out of the bakery. I'll never forgive you for ruining my love story like that. I'd, uh, I'd forgotten, Cat began, as soon as they cleared the storefront's glass. It was a surprise. She expected him to hold his tongue until she broke the silence. That dad knows I'm Adrian Agrest. The boxer reveal? Shh. He grinned at the ground in the thought. A grin. It looked good on him. Not the way I was hoping to come out to a parent, much less my girlfriend's, but it worked out for the better, didn't it? 
are we actually doing this? He squeezed her hand. Getting married? Yeah. Kat looked both ways before leading her across the street. Are you getting cold feet, my lady? I'm serious, Kat. It's been years, and... She didn't know how to finish the sentence. What if it's not the right decision for us? He studied the sidewalk before answering slowly. Love of my life, he said, so low she could barely hear it as cars rumbled by. Marrying you has always been my pipe dream, so even if it's a mistake, I'd rather regret doing it than not. This is marriage, she emphasized, and not just some... I don't know, buy a ticket to anywhere adventure? Should we do that? His smile, as warm as his suit was dark, glowed into her. Do what? Buy a ticket. Go anywhere. Cat! Her jaw dropped. How could she even process that? We can't just run off somewhere? Why not? He shrugged. Okay, um, not only would Alia never forgive me if we eloped, but Dad would be heartbroken. I'm not talking about eloping. He shook his head. An adventure. You and me. And if it works out, if we make it through together, then we get married. That's not a bad idea. Chloe will kill me, she said looking down the block as she tried to visualize the plan. What do you guys even do together? Where would we go? Marinette turned back to him. Cat Noir grinned, ruggish and boy-like as the wind ruffled his hair. Anywhere. Nowhere. It doesn't matter, does it? Money isn't an object if you're with me, and I'm nothing without you. What a tempting irresponsible answer. She had a business, friends, a ten-year plan. But she had a partner, maybe even a fiancé, in front of her, offering an escape from the responsibilities she tied herself into, knot by knot, over the years. An offer that might end with a happy ending. An offer that might break both of them, a final time. But who was she, if not brave? Okay, she nodded, slow and deliberate. I'm Min. Great. Cat drew her knuckles to his lips. Let's go. Now? Leave it all behind, Marinette. But the light's green. Swallowing the protests in her throat, Marinette Dupang Chang crossed the street, following her partner to the next chapter in their story. Oh, what an unexpected journey they'd gone through together over the decade. Stepping over the same stones with new paint she'd met her partner on nearly a decade prior, Marinette held Cat Noir's hand. Not ready for their next adventure, but going nonetheless. For who was Marinette Dubang Chang, if not brave? She'd take this adventure. She'd follow her home wherever he took her, whether it was to love, be loved, or to protect him. Chapter 75 Adrian, as Cat Noir. A Homecoming. Cat Noir had never truly gotten used to a homecoming party, even after each night of their trip ending with Marinette. So here, at the airport with signs decorated with paw prints and Mr. Dupang Chang with hearts doodled around it, made his heart swell as he looked at his soon-to-be in-laws and best friends. Mom! Dad! 
Marinette raced past him, tackling her parents at the baggage claim. He lingered back, taking in the scene until Tom waved his hand for him to join them. There were curious stares, of course, but Alia already crafted a story for propaganda. Cats were natural bakers, so of course a retired superhero would end up working at a bakery, right? Nino and Alia were there too. It was the first time he'd seen Nino in person since calling him up and telling him that he was Adrian Agrest. His friend accepted it wholeheartedly, even teasing him about some very specific details from their shared teenage years. It'd been about a month of traveling around Europe, and another month between the Eastern Asian coasts and the United States since he'd seen him last. Nice to have you back, dude, Nino said reaching out for a handshake, but pulling him into a hug. You too, man, Kat said into his shoulder. You too. You realize your wedding's already planned for you, right? He chuckled, not letting go. As expected. You're gonna love the dress. He stepped back, shaking his head, but trailing his hands to Nino's elbows. No. No? Marinette spent nearly the entire trip lugging around fabric and stitching at night. She's gonna wear that one. What? Alia spun, eyes shooting daggers before turning to Marinette. I got one of your designs custom made! Oops, Marinette said, grinning as she looked at him. His heart wobbled at the exchange, but he couldn't expect any less from it. He was marrying this woman, after all. But also, Alia continued, who comes back the day before their wedding? That's what honeymoons are for. Please, please tell me you at least wash your face every night. Did you get the whitening strips I sent? Did you wear sunscreen? Did you get any new freckles? You're skinny as ever, but Alia. Marinette laughed, letting go of her friend's hand to walk over to Kat, pulling him away from Nino as she wrapped an arm around his hip. Alia, take a breath. She stuck out her lower lip, her nose and chin crinkling. This is our day. The OTP of Paris is getting married. Come on, you two. Time to separate and time to part. (laughs) Nino said, securing a grip on Kat's shoulder and pulling him back. See you tomorrow, babe, Marinette said, lifting herself to the top of her toes for a kiss. See you tomorrow, he smiled back, returning the gesture by bending just a touch. Another hand grabbed his other shoulder, and Kat looked up to see Tom Dupang staring down at him. Regardless of teenage growth spurts, Tom would always be a bigger man. A hovering, threatening gingerbread man of kindness, so long as you didn't push his gumdrop buttons. Let's go, son. And so, for the first time, Cat Noir spent a night out on the town with his father. Nino was there too, of course, and a few others whom he loved, truly loved. But at the end of it all, it was him and Tom staggering into the bakery, closed for the weekend to celebrate their daughter's wedding. Even despite the great night out, Kat had to wonder what Marinette was up to right now. Was she asleep? Did she eat enough? Had the shoes Alia put her in give her blisters? Did she think about him? Weary, he let his transformation go and collapsed into the couch. Tom passed out on the floor and, superhero or not, Adrian couldn't budge him. Nino made sure there would be a hefty supply of camembert for the immortal black hole, and Plague rushed to it, singing love songs as soon as he was released from the ring. This felt good. This felt right. Adrian still wasn't comfortable without his mask. Two months couldn't heal his dysmorphia, but it did heal his worry about never overcoming it. He would, with Marinette's support, together.
Someday, they could publicly introduce him as Adrian Dupang Chang, but it wouldn't be tomorrow, even if that's what the government would call him from now on. It wasn't her place to heal him, but her support meant everything to him, especially on days he couldn't even show her his face. Adrian certainly felt bad for robbing his fiancée and her parents of a grand wedding because of his mental problems. But them adjusting meant the world to him. He hadn't thought of it that way at first. He found it shameful to have the accommodations at someone else's expense. Marinette helped him see it in a different light. The accommodations were a badge of honor, proof that he was loved, proof that people valued him enough, even just on a human-to-human -human level, to help him on his journey through life. Making and taking accommodations for mental health and recovery isn't shameful. Closing his eyes, Adrian did his best to sleep, a strange calmness washing over him as he thought about tomorrow. The small ceremony. Someday, someday, he'd throw a huge party to renew their vows. Something worthy of the woman he'd always idolized and used her luck to hold in his heart and his arms. He woke up to his Kwame alarm clock, groaning for more cheese. Rubbing his eyes, Adrian sat up, his face as stiff as the couch cushions. Pounding rang from the door, and Tom, still on the floor, groaned. I'll get it, Adrian said his pulse quickening as Tom's eyes fluttered open. There's nothing like dysphoria to wake you up in the morning. Claws out. When Kat opened the door, Nino stumbled in, looking panicked. The rings, he said. The rings? Kat repeated. Where are the rings? Oh, no. Where were the rings? Did you check with Tiki? Tiki? Or any of the other Kwamis? Uh, go check with the Kwamis. They might have taken them so they could be part of the wedding. He'd gotten to know all of them very well over the past two months, as Marinette refused to leave them behind when they went back to tell her parents about the adventure he hadn't planned for. Got it, thanks. Nino left, thumping down the staircase. How was the best man more stressed out than the groom? Well, perhaps he was the strange one for being so calm on such a life-changing day. A day he'd dreamed about since he basically met his fiance. Well, in a few hours, she wouldn't be his fiance anymore. She would be his wife. Helping his soon-to-be father-in-law up and getting him a glass of water... Kat took a final look at the living room, making sure he hadn't forgotten anything. It was about time for him to go to the venue, and if there was anything he wasn't going to be late to, it would be his wedding. Well, it's not like the venue was all of 54 steps away or anything. Fixing up his hair, Kat gave himself a wink in the mirror and headed downstairs, his heart beating louder with every stair nose. Oh, now he had the pitter-patters. The bakery, at some point, had been rearranged, with the register now decorated as an altar not to capitalism, but to love. A tribute to love. Their love. His love. For a flicker of a moment, his heart felt exactly the same way it did when he first fell in love with Ladybug. Sunshine and hopeful and high on a new lifestyle he'd been given. In a way, it was about to happen all over again. Ugh, finally! Cat Noir, I'm the one who's supposed to be fashionably late. Cat turned, grinning to the voice. Hello, Chloe. Don't get me wrong, I don't like either of you, Chloe said dressed in a black cocktail dress with yellow accessories to accent and waving her hand in the air. If it weren't for you marrying my literal business partner, I wouldn't be here. Since when did you know? 
She snorted. You remember when we used to pretend we were spies as kids? Cat nodded, laughing at the memory. Yeah, you put those skills to work. <laughs> we both know I'm smart when it's worth the effort to learn something. She tucked a piece of hair behind her ear as she placed a hand on her hip. The short bob hairstyle she adorned suited her, and it was clear she used purple conditioner. So keeping Hawkmoth in the apartment that Marinette Dupang Chang moved into after Adrian went AWOL? And how even Cat Noir, the guy with the stupidest jokes in the world, didn't crack any while Nino and Alia played a board game with the country's nemesis? I'm blonde, but I'm not that kind of dumb. You got all that from a game? Cat smiled, impressed and even somewhat relieved. Who do you think took care of your inheritance when you were away? And took care of that creepy shrine? Oh, he thought it was Natalie, or even Marinette, who cleared out the mansion. But now that he thought about it, the only things left in that building were things important to him. But terrible memories like the long dining room table and chairs with cushions still stiff, were gone. Yet another person looked out for him, all this time, and he hadn't realized it. Thank you, Chloe. Ugh, I can't believe you are Cat Noir. I hoped I was wrong, but sometimes I'm too smart for my own good. She fanned herself with a bakery brochure. I should have shot my shot while you were being nice to Queen Bee. Please, you hate a man in all black leather. Oh, don't even get me started on those ears, she said, pointing at his head with a scowl. Even on your wedding day? Shouldn't you have changed up the suit a little bit? He couldn't help but grin back. She was different, but she was still Chloe, his childhood friend. I can't believe you're the pastor. Yeah, well, there are benefits to the business if I am. Cat scrunched his nose, wondering just what loophole his childhood friend and high school thorn found. Whatever. She was one of the few, if only, who could do this for them unless Marinette put her mask on as well. Thank you, Chloe. Ugh, don't do that. Save your sap for the Dupang Changs. You have the house ready, right? Who do you think I am? Chloe flipped her hair. Fully decorated on your coin. I'm very excited to move in my things. Chloe? She rolled her eyes. She's gonna love it. And if you two break up, I'm taking her side. As you should. Places! Alia rushed in, holding a vlog camera. Places! She yelled. You know that footage can't ever see the light of day, right? Chloe snapped, crossing her arms but not furrowing her eyebrows. That's right. She didn't believe in wrinkles or whatever. Get behind the register, you walking tax evasion. If you can't afford a lawyer, just say so. Chloe rolled her eyes, but did as she was told as Nino came out of nowhere to pull him to the proper side. You ready for this, dude? He asked. Always and never, Cat replied, watching Alia press play and letting the piano guy's cover of Home sing out, a song they'd stumbled upon in America and Marinette knew would be their song in an instant. He'd never heard of Philip Phillips before they slow danced, or rather swayed to it on a rooftop in Miami, but it was magic nonetheless a magic no miraculous would ever be able to compete with. Sabine joined Alia across from them, gracing him with a smile and a thumbs up. Phew. This certainly wasn't what she expected for her only daughter's wedding, but until he could make it out in public as not Cat Noir, he wouldn't be able to declare his love for her publicly. One day, but not today. One day they'd get married, again, however she wanted it to be. The Kwamis shuffled in, each holding a petal in one hand so the camera would see their proof of existence and throwing others to the ground with giggles. Some ended up throwing petals at each other, but that's to be expected. 
Surprisingly, however, Trix whizzed to Alia, who transformed in a light that took everyone off guard. And then, with a smile, she used her flute to turn the bakery into a forest that would make the fair folk jealous. A cottage core aesthetic with the homecoming smell of the bakery wafting through it. Cat nodded, smiling his approval. It explained the sparse decorations that were so unlike her. And then he heard the click of high heels. Despite the pseudo-moss woven trail they stood on, and he turned his head, his heart fluttering up his throat and catching his breath when he saw her. Marinette, with tear-streaked cheeks, walked arm in arm with Tom as he sobbed, snot dripping, with smiles on both of their faces. It was almost hard to tell who was escorting who. Cat felt his tear ducts betray him, too, and found it hard to swallow as he held eye contact with his lover. Tom held onto her arm for an extra moment, making everyone chuckle until Sabine and Nino pried him off, letting him blow through tissue after tissue as the music cadenced and came to a close. You good? Chloe said, staring Tom down with arms crossed. He'll be okay, Sabine nodded, watching Nino rub her husband's back. Good. I have a nail appointment at noon. Chloe cleared her throat and picked up a stapled packet. Congratulations, you're here with friends and family. Is there anything you want to say before becoming legally bound? Cat barely had time to take Marinette's hands in his before laughing at the absurdity of it all. Chloe was just the cherry on top of this ridiculous scene. I do, yes, he began, turning from Marinette's questioning eyes to Nino behind him. You have it? he asked. You g- Hey, dude, you got it, dude. Nino pulled out a small frame from his suit jacket, handing it to him. I hate men's pockets, Rina Rouge muttered. Marinette Dupang Chang, Cat Noir began, one of his hands holding her as he held the frame, looking at the embroidered handkerchief inside. You taught me that an artist should sign what they create. So I would like you, he felt Nino tap his shoulder with a sharpie. Catching it as he dropped it meant letting go of Marinette's hand, but so be it. To sign this with me, as a promise. What are... She gasped as he turned the frame around, showing her the cross stitch he'd made all those years ago, with a message scribbled across the glass. Oh, it's like the sticky note from Grey's Anatomy, Rena Rouge gasped. Oh, will you shut that mouth of yours? Chloe snapped. Stop ruining the moment. The ladies probably scowled at each other, but Kat didn't look. Kat didn't care. He watched his fiancée's eyes turn glassy as she read the words he'd written out for her, nodding. Give me the marker, she whispered her voice heavy with emotion. He did. She signed. And then so did he. Any objections to these two being husband and wife? Chloe asked, looking almost bored. Kat was too focused on Marinette beaming, looking from the frame to him and back to see what the others were doing. Great, I pronounce you husband and wife. You can kiss, not that you haven't before. Cat's eyes stung as Marinette's grin widened, even though that shouldn't be possible. And he leaned in, wrapping his arms around her with their framed wedding vows in hand, when a flash of light put them on guard as their lips touched. Twisting her behind him and alert, Cat looked around to see the bakery as it should be. Sorry, Alia said, raising her hand like they were in class. I only have five minutes after using it, remember? 
The room laughed, and Cat felt his wife press her forehead to his back, her turn to wrap her arms around him. Shall we? She said. We shall. He placed a hand over hers on his stomach, holding it for a moment before turning, grinning, and picking her up. Princess. He took her up the stairs, to her room, and then to the roof, the bridal party hollering as he carried her. Well, Ollie and Nino hollered. Chloe took a selfie with him in the background, and Tom sobbed. Sabine had somehow gotten a hold of the camera, filming with a smile, as the Kwamis chucked leftover petals at each other. It was loud and chaotic, and just what he'd expect from this group gathered together. Shall we? He asked, looking down at his wife as he secured a foot on the balcony railing. Marinette laughed, changing her grip. Yes, she said. We shall. And with that, Cat Noir leapt, taking his bride to their home. He could see the confusion on Marinette's face as they landed in front of the aggressed mansion. Adrian! She began, gasping as he set her down. He told her he would take care of living arrangements once they got married. This is... You were talking about buying your own place earlier. Kat secured her palm in hers and led her to the front door. I figured you wouldn't want to commute too far to go to work. What do you mean? The door opened, revealing the staircase and foyer that was an obvious glam appeal, built into the building's design. On your left, Adam, he began, pointing with their framed bows in hand, is the business suite, prepared by the one and only Chloe Bourgeois. And on the right, her eyes followed his finger as he pointed is our living quarters. But do you... Marinette swallowed, squeezing his hand. Here? You want to live here? With everything that happened to you? He looked down at his wife, his smile not matching her concern. You are the happy memories I've always wanted here, Marinette. Besides... Do you remember what you said about having children? Her face paled. Kids? Well, long ago, the first time we made Lumpia together, I asked you about kids, and you said you'd want kids first and a career second. Her face went pale as he spoke. But you already have the latter, and I don't want you to give that up. But I also don't want you to feel separate from them when they come. This building is big enough for everything you've wanted, Marinette. You don't have to choose. She looked around once more. I thought you and Natalie were going to sell this place. Kat laughed. For a while, I did too. But you know what my dream is now, Marinette. His wife narrowed her eyes. What? being the stay-at-home dad I always wanted to have when the time comes for us. Marinette, stunned, blinked her face into a smile, understanding what he meant. Well, she began, tugging at him to lead him up the stairs. I don't plan on having kids yet, you know. I want to date you a bit more first. Oh, Chloe would kill both of us, he laughed. Alia would celebrate, though. I wouldn't be surprised if Alia's doing fertility witchcraft for us right now. Marinette laughed so hard she snorted. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Here, he said, stopping at a door. Our bedroom. Oh, it's not... She looked down the hall. You want to live together in my teenage bedroom? Cat Noir raised an eyebrow teasing. That's a little weird to me, Marinette. She scowled, face going red. That's not... Here. 
He turned the doorknob, opening to their room. He hadn't seen it yet either, so he nearly gasped when she did. He wasn't sure if Chloe and Alia would have cooperated well enough to make it stunning, but they did. And above the headboard was a single nail, not holding anything. Cat, is this... Marinette began, her hand slipping out of his as she went to explore the walk-in closet with dresses already in her size. Having money was great, wasn't it? Here, he said, walking onto the bed with his knees to the headboard and straightening himself in front of the nail. Here should be good, right? Marinette turned from the other side of the room, looking at him holding the framed handkerchief he'd stitched years ago with their wedding vows signed on the glass. Yes, she said, expression melting. Yes, that's perfect. Marinette slid in next to him, the two of them staring at it as it hung in the center above their bed. Happy wedding day, my love, Cat Noir said pulling her in by the shoulder and kissing her hair. Happy wedding day, she returned, sliding her arm around his hip. They sat like that, taking in the start of their new life for a few moments. Not to break the mood, Kat said, pulling away. But do you want to go make food? She laughed. Oh, absolutely. I wasn't allowed to eat so I could have the stomach of a bride. I promise I can cut an onion without instruction. Well, as long as you don't throw the pot out of the kitchen, I'll trust you. (laughs) The cat placed a hand on his chest. My lady, our kitchen doesn't have windows. It's perfect for a cat like me. But you know what? What? We should go shopping for ingredients first. He hesitated, wondering if she was thinking of the same recipe he was. I did have the fridge stocked already. With egg roll wrappers? Cat grinned, taking her hand in his. No. Then we'll have to go get them. Together? Together. And then? Marinette smiled leaning in to kiss her husband. And then we'll cook together. Here. At home. Home. Cat Noir whispered, smiling at his wife, the warm, familiar fire flickering in his heart. Home. This feeling of home wasn't temporary. It wasn't going anywhere. And now, They had lumpia to make. Together. Thank you so much for listening. That concludes the series Home, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose. For those of you still listening, don't forget to give a thumbs up and leave the comment Home to help support the author, the YouTube algorithm, you can support this channel by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash MiraWrites. A super duper big awesome thank you to Toph, also known as Nothing Special on Instagram, for this fan art that I'm using as this ending image. Like, <laughs> like that's so cool. I'll have her linked. And also a second thank you to Alicia Jane also known as Alicia underscore D on Instagram, also linked in the description box, for going out of her way and actually physically making the home is where Marinette is cross-stitch. That is so super awesome. For those of us less crafty, if you would like a home is where Marinette is item, apparel, pillowcase, sticker, or something to go on your water bottle, you can get that in my Redbubble store linked in the description box. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!
Home. Epilogue. A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction, written and narrated by Mira Rose. Adrian Dupang Chang, on his 32nd birthday. Wait, you're telling me Dad's last name isn't Dupang? Oh, the joys of having a six-year-old. It wasn't. Adrian began, passing his daughter a napkin. I took it when I married your mom. I thought mom's name was Chang and yours was Dupang, Emma continued, ignoring the gesture. Sometimes that's how marriages work, like with your grandparents. Adrian set down his fork, picking back up the napkin to rub it on her face, but not with your parents. So, what's your name, Dad? Louis asked. How the five-year-old's face stayed free of red sauce while his sister's didn't was beyond him. Aggressed, Adrian said, looking his son in the eye. I grew up as Adrian Aggressed. Don't use your real name. It's weird. It's not weird, Emma argued. All parents have real names. Otherwise, the government would have a million moms and dads, or even more. Adrian chuckled. Aunt Alia bought them a spy kit a few weeks ago, and they were obsessed with the government now. Hopefully they grow out of it. So when I married Mom, he continued, I took her family's names. Why? Emma scrunched her nose. Feminism? Where did you learn that word? Aunt Alia. Of course. Sheesh. Oh, yeah, she was literally six. Once you turn eight, I'll explain to you what trauma and PTSD is. Why eight? Remember what mom taught you about your brain developing in stages? Adrian caught a grape Louis tried to throw at his sister and shot him a look. Brains are squishy! Louis chirped in. Um, yes. And we have two eyeballs! He held his eyes open with his fingers and looked around the table. Yes. Yes, you do. Some people have one eye. Emma raised her hand, chiming in. Yes. Yes, they do. Adrian sighed, defeated as his question was lost on the little circus. His phone buzzed, his watch lighting with a message. Marinette. She was still stuck at her event. Hey, want to surprise Mom? He asked, pressing a smile on. Mom! Louis said. Ugh, chores again? Emma whined. You know how we're going to the bakery for my birthday? Adrian said, passing his daughter another napkin. Yes! yes! They answered at the same time. How about we meet her there? Okay. okay! Okay, who can clean up the fastest? Adrian kept an eye on them as they raced to clean up, mostly for stray spaghetti sauce and Emma's path. She was messier than Marinette during a launch. Meet you there, he texted, then put his phone in his back pocket and picked up his plate. A ring came from the front door as he helped Emma with her shoes, with Louis already standing and ready to go. I got it, Emma said, raising her hand and dashing, tugging Adrian's fingers off the half-tied shoelaces. Grandma! Grandpa! Mom! Dad! Adrian echoed, wide-eyed. Weren't we supposed to go over there? Oh, we're the distraction, Sabine winked as Tom picked up a child in each arm. She feels bad about being late on a day like today, you know? I know. Adrian smiled at the ground. Is Uncle Superhero going to come again now that Grandpa's here? Emma asked, weaving her fingers into her grandpa's mustache. Never trust a child with a secret identity. Someday, when they were older, they'd learn that Aunt Ladybug and Uncle Cat were actually Mom and Dad. But not for a while. Not yet. Still... They had memories, 
especially Emma, growing up on a masked man's lap at the bakery. While he might not need the mask anymore, sometimes it was nice to take the easy path. There's no bragging rights in living life on hard, is there? No, Adrian said, licking his thumb and wiping a bit of sauce off of Emma's cheek. Not today. But I like Uncle Cat. So does your mother, Sabine said. Mom, he hissed. The adults laughed, and so did the children, although they weren't quite sure why. The door opened a second time, leaving them to turn to Marinette, out of breath, in the threshold. Sorry, she began. Tiki won't let me transform now that I'm five months along. Mom! Emma squealed, pushing herself out of Tom's arms and tugging his mustache in the process to run to her. Hi, babies. She looked up, locking eyes with Adrian. I'm home. Welcome home, he said, the anxiety of the afternoon melting. She'd made it. He knew she would. And even if she hadn't, it wouldn't have been on purpose. Or to, well, be an active terrorist or something. We've got the kids, Tom boomed. Run along. I've had plenty of running. Thank you, Marinette said, waving her hand then dragging Emma as she hugged her thigh over to her father for a hug. And thank you for watching them. So I heard it's a boy? Sabine mused. Yes, Hugo. Her hands retreated to her abdomen. Last one? She raised an eyebrow. Come on, Adrian said, taking her by the waist. Let's go. He led her upstairs to the playroom his old bedroom, and Marinette sighed. I think it's ridiculous that Tiki's fine with you carrying me, but not letting me transform myself. Shh, claws out. He transformed, echoed with a napping plague's protest, then picked up his pregnant wife. Do as the Kwame asks, okay? She rolled her eyes, wrapping her arms around his neck. At least I have a reliable escort. Cat laughed, opening the window. And here I thought I'd at least be your partner. You want to demote yourself from husband? When we're going on three kids? Oh, don't pick apart my sentences. He scrunched his nose at her, and she returned to the gesture before laughing. Where's the food? She asked as he stepped out. Already there. How did you slip out with the kids? Nap time. Adrian! The Kwamis were watching. It's fine. The last time you left them with the Kwamis, they taught Emma that sliced cheese can stick to the wall, and she decided to make an art piece. I said it was fine, not ideal. She laughed as they touched down on the balcony of the bakery. Well, thank you for the escort. Thank you for the date, he said, setting her down bracing his weight against her until she had her balance. After all these years, she said, looking at the lit decorations and table settings as she rubbed her abdomen. I know. I'm surprised you weren't tired of sushi, too. She spotted at his chest. Tradition, she barked. Marinette was right. They always had sushi for their birthdays, starting with hers, Years ago, when they were teenagers, when he learned of her identity. You really thought I was going to get a kumdaz back then, didn't you? Um, yeah! She walked to the table. You literally saw the akuma and stared! Smack, smack, he grinned. You're ridiculous! You know, I've thought about it a lot. The akuma? Yeah. You know, if we hadn't been dating, I think I would have let it get to me. Learning your identity like that. A crease dug between her eyebrows. What do you mean? What stopped it? You. He pulled out her chair and helped her in before taking his spot across from her. And this. This? Marinette looked around. 
home. She flattened her lips, skeptical. Home? You made me feel whole, Marinette. You know this. Even back then, you were... This was... Well... He cleared his throat. I love you, Marinette. She smiled, reaching for, then raising, her glass. To teenage love and adult reunions. They clinked glasses, starting off their dinner the right way. He'd only had food on his plate earlier, so the kids would eat, after all. Did you get spicy food? I genuinely don't understand how cravings can change so much during pregnancy. But did you get spicy food? Yes, my love. He sighed with a smile. Yes, I did. Good. Which ones? Smiling to himself, Cat Noir pointed out the entrees to his wife. His heart bright as light bulbs glowed around them. This woman had given him far more than the list of birthday presents she'd planned that he liked teasing her about. Far more important than a birthday. Adrian Dupang Chang knew what he had with his partner was every 1111 wish and blown out candles. Marinette Dupang Chang had built, with and for her cat noir, a family and a place to belong. He'd gotten his happy ending by working through his demons with this stunning woman by his side. Cat Noir enjoyed every mundane day, no longer wondering what it would be like to feel like he was home. Because he knew. He knew, and he taught it to Emma and Louis, and soon, he'd teach Hugo, too. Home is where Marinette is. Thank you so much for listening. That was Home, the Complete Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction series, written and narrated by Mira Rose. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it and subscribe for more miraculous themed content. If you liked fan fiction in particular, you might want to check out my fan fiction themed line on Redbubble, stickers, t-shirts, all that good stuff. Or you can just peruse this channel for more miraculous ladybug content and fan fiction. If you're still listening, please comment home and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!